and a welcome to a beautiful sunny Monday morning here at the biggest sevens tournament on the planet. It's the same venue, it's a new year and a new sponsor as well as we welcome Howden to the family for the first time. It's not just them we're welcoming, welcoming some oracles as well. Angus Savage, Jack Zorup and tournament director Andy Higgins are joining us. Uh, Angus, we'll come to you first because you're stood the closest. Higgy wasn't expecting to be on the show but he's in now so he's got to stick around. Um, in fact, let's bring you in because I know you know you're a busy guy. Um, new year, new start, Howden, new partner. Uh, what are you most looking forward to this year and what are a few changes that you can tell the global audience about? Working with Howden is a dream. We've got a four year deal. We're going we're gonna, to uh, do so many cool initiatives and uh, can't wait to get stuck into this. Well, today, it starts today. So such a great build up. It's been sun is shining, as you say. Let's go. You sound more like Eddie Hearn every time I speak to you. Have a great tournament, mate. Very, very busy week. Um, Angus, load of positivity uh, around that from that man, and there's a lot to be excited about. There's so much to be excited about. I, I, a, a word on Howden, because it is tremendously exciting. It just breathes a bit of new life into the competition. You can see all the branding everywhere. It's massive, isn't it? But also, the competition starting. We've been waiting for this for months, it feels like, just waiting and waiting. The build-up through the sevens tournaments, through the year, and now it's here. I just can't wait to get going. We've got so many teams buzzing around already. I've been chatting to some coaches. The sun is shining. Who would have thought? It's just amazing. Also, we're about to hear some uh, global music for a global competition. I've no idea we're going to strike up, but the piping band from Gordon's School uh, are just there to our right-hand side. So it's not just the rugby, it's the full cultural experience. But we are transitioning into sevens from 15. So let's bring you in here, Jack, because you were, uh, were at Twickenham uh, earlier in, no, last week now, Monday, Wednesday, they're all just days of the week, aren't they? Uh, for an incredible under-18s final, a great day of rugby that sets this tournament up beautifully yeah that's uh it's a great point and, and you know some people as angus says um wait a whole year for, for the Rosen park like 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 people wait for cheltenham <laughs> that was last week we've been waiting for this week a little bit later uh but thursday it was yeah harrow school against kirkham grammar school in the under 18 boys cup final and there was some great uh girls finals as well that day and also uh the vars final as well with felstead one but but the big one was what people in the media yourself were, were getting really excited about because it was effectively uh, a heavyweight unification bout because <laughs> Kirkham Grammar School had won, had won everything that they'd been entered in St Joe's uh, they'd won Seba 10s the last couple of years and then Harrow School had won this tournament under 16s and under 18 so that group was coming together and they'd also been undefeated in a couple of seasons so that was that was the big billing and it lived up to it didn't it? I think those of you that that watched it um, that have rewatched it since then um, would have agreed 29 27 final score final play of the game to win it Reggie Hammock the number eight and of course there, there, you know there were England under 18 players that couldn't even play Kepu Tui Polotu the captain of Harrow injured so Reggie Hammock is is playing in his position he wins the match um, but Kirkham Grammar School did everything that you needed to do to win a final and more against a school like Harrow and they uh, and they still somehow inexplicably still didn't win it and you know I've seen Kirkham here today uh, I just uh, I'm just so excited to see what they can bring to the sevens this year because uh, they, it felt like they should have had something out of that final well they've got another opportunity here uh, and you talk about heavyweight unification bouts what I think a lot of people don't realize until they experience this tournament whether it's on the live stream or whether it's as a player a coach a parent a fan um, watching in person are the legacies that are built and the memories that are built over five days here at this great tournament? Well, how good is that? I mean, I was just thinking, I played here 20 years ago for Cranley School. We were on Blundell's pitch. We played Blundell's there. We got hammered. This was before Cranley were any good. And uh, that was 20 years ago. And I, that's why I enjoy coming back every year so much, because you put yourself in the boys' shoes and the girls' shoes, and it's the best day off school ever. And if you win today, then you get a second day off school as well. So it doesn't, it doesn't get better than that, frankly. If that's not an initiative, to win I don't know what it is just looking at the time here, I've got you for a few more minutes don't go anywhere you're not getting off the hook but we're gonna bring this man in um, let's talk about these these legacies then because there probably isn't somebody who's watched more Roslyn Park National School sevens over the years than you um, who are the teams today let's go with today who you're particularly looking forward to maybe coming off the back of some of the things that Jack alluded to there yeah well today is really interesting because obviously it's boys under 18 vars and the girls under 16 cup uh, we're gonna get the two finals on RE1 in the girls under 16 cup at the end of the day on the boys under 18 vars there's some changes that make today really interesting so about 10 teams have been moved from the vars to the cup which is the sort of senior competition including last year's champions rugby school and the runners-up Kings Macclesfield what that's done 
is it's made the VARs wide open. I was going through this the other night. I think there's about 25 teams that could win it in the VARs, which is extraordinary. It just makes you a know, commentary for guys like Jack and, and yourself so exciting because you just think at any point you could be commentating on the champion. Um, and for viewers at home as well, you know, look at them. Cheltenham College, Haleybury, I think, are first up on RE1 today. Bedford Modern School, I think, are first up on, on RE2. We've got so many teams that, you know, wouldn't necessarily in the past have had a, ch a chance of winning it, but probably are thinking, hey, do you know what? Get, get a good day one in, and suddenly things have opened up for day two. So it is wide open. And the Girls Under 16 Cup, I just think, is one of the most exciting tournaments. It was new last year. It hadn't existed before. There'd be an under 15s competition. They wanted to align things with the boys. I know it's a big part of what Howden want to bring to the tournament is to try and expand that girls offering and last year 32 teams in the girls under 16 cup this year 48 teams in it it's growing and growing it's just a much bigger competition this year all in one day as well it's one of the few that's packed into one day so that's just going to be hugely exciting look out for ivy bridge i think in that got to the final last year they've got a bit of a thing building there particularly below sick form level ivy bridge may be the ones to look out for in the under 16 girls but hey it's wide open in both that's what's so great about this tournament certainly is uh, just we seem to be spending a lot of time talking about howden which is fine uh, and there's a reason for that it is the first year but they're also the headline sponsor for the british and irish lions tour and i know a massive thing for them is earning the right to be that sponsor and this is certainly the place where they're able to do that the vastness of the competition the continual growth of the competition and in fact some oh goodness me i thought they'd kicked off and we talked for too long no 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 it's just the teams warming up behind us uh, Hey, Jack, are you commentating the first game on RE2? Yeah. Uh, in which case, uh, I am going to uh, let you give a message to the people who are watching because you want some co-commentators uh, over the next few days, don't you? Yeah. If you're on RE2 then, and you've got spare time, we're in the big white block that's at the side of the pitch. Please just knock on the door uh, and send perhaps a, a player who's travelling with the team who can't play this week up with us and we'll love, we'd love to have him uh, or her and, and we'll just borrow them for 14 minutes and, and then we'll give them back to you but yeah we'd love to have uh, co-commentators on RE2 um, at any point across the five days and also RE1 uh, bring snacks and biscuits uh, godspeed mate have a good one uh, oh he nearly left him hanging there that would have been fantastic um, but the point I was going to make about earning the right is the constant expansion of this tournament it's huge it's vast it seems like it can't grow but it's like the infinite universe isn't it they still find ways to get bigger get better and to allow more opportunities for young people to play rugby Massively so. I was I was writing a piece over the weekend. This is my tenth tournament covering uh, covering the Howden Ross and Park National School Sevens. Uh, we lost a couple to COVID. Hence, hence it started in 2013, but it's only ten now. <laughs> but. Um, over that time it's grown massively i think in 2013 there were six different competitions we now have 11 and a huge amount of that almost all of that is this building up of the girls side of the competition we now have for every boys tournament there's a girls tournament that matches it all the way down to the under 14s there's then two boys under 13s and the mixed under 11s so the the expansion of the tournament has been massive i think it's something like 14,000 people over the weekend i mean it's just uh, an unbelievable number of players and teams and and, and spectators as well uh, so that expansion has been hugely important and you will have seen it as well you know we've gone from having a sort of re1 hub to now we have an re2 hub and over on the asda pitches which we're going to be doing some bits from later on today there's huge hubs over there as well over on the wimbledon pitches behind us there's, it's just growing and growing and that sense of everyone being a part of it is really coming together i mean long gone are the days where we could just hop over to rosslyn park for finals on the friday there's simply too many teams too many competitions for that it's all here and it's just fantastic and that sense of the bigger picture as well so i haven't been involved for as long as you I think my involvement goes back as far as 2016 but players who we've seen perform incredibly well here tear it up here be crowned champions get to finals then go on to play premiership rugby or championship rugby or URC rugby or international rugby but their achievements here their their moments in the spotlight here their their chance to play with their mates here sticks with them forever it really does and the the example I always cite is Cameron Redpath yeah, we've seen him through the Six Nations with Scotland. We've seen what he's been doing with Bath, that lovely link up with Finn Russell and Ollie, Ollie Lawrence. I could start going into that in great <laughs> detail. But here is one of the abiding memories of him. He was on one leg for Sedba. He could barely move, and yet somehow, and I mean this in no way as a disrespect to his teammates, he dragged them in the final single-handedly to victory. It's incredible. A try-saving length of the field tackle one end, and then he scores a length of the field try the other. He can barely move afterwards, and two months later, Eddie Jones calls him up and says, can I get you in my England squad? That's what this is. You are so close, 
as, a, as an under 14 to some of these under 18s. But those under 18s are so close to the international game. We really are talking about tiny little steps that everyone can make and suddenly they're absolute heroes. And it's a big thing, I think. It's one of the bits I'm really looking forward to later in the week when you get those under 18 cup in the boys and the girls and you also have the under 11s and the under 13s running around. And what those under 18s don't realize is that they are heroes to those guys. I've seen it in the past with like Bromsgrove, I remember, had a school's cup final, but they came down when they were warming up for it to come and watch their prep school side play. It's just so great. And it, it's a real part of the school game is that you are heroes to the young guys. And that's such an important part of this tournament because you do see spectacular play. Marcus Smith's been here. Lawrence Delalio has been here. Gareth Edwards has been here. Everyone's been here. Well, those icons of the game have been here. And thanks to the ones of modern technology, you can too. We are live streaming every game from RE1 and RE2 throughout the week. In fact, the teams for the opening game are lining up just behind us. They are going to be played onto the pitch by the Pipers of the Gordon School Band, who are just striking up. So it's time to hand you over to our commentators on RE2. It is Jack Zorab, and on RE1, it's Joe Burns. Great. What a way to set the scene. Good morning or bienvenue if you're tuning in from Belgium because we have our first taste of international flavour and the Howden Rossen Park National Schools Sevens. It is the best week of the year. It is the greatest schools sevens competition on the planet and Boisfort Sevens Academy all the way from Brussels are here to take on Halebury School in the opening fixture of the under 18s Vars. We're bringing you under 18s Vars action wall to wall all the way up until 4.20 this afternoon, this evening. And then we're climaxing things here on pitch RE1 with the girls under 16 plates and cup finals. The Boisfort Sevens Academy are kicking off in white to Halebury School in Maroon, who are one of the fancy sides in this under-18s Vars. But this team from Brussels, founded in 1970, have the honour of kicking off the 2024 Howden Rossin Park National School Sevens. But Halebury will get their chance to strike first as they feel the long kickoff and but to skate around into the five meter channel. Good tackle and precise on the jackal from Boitfort. And off go the Belgians. Trunching shot. Carries through the tackle and it's a nice setup and then a bit of a carry around the fringe. Look at that jackal intent from both sides already. Great exhibition to the referee that he was free. That's a lovely offload and then a glint of light, but the offload doesn't go to hand. Chance to recycle on this left edge as the Belgians continue this strain in possession. Halebury scrapping. Off to the right we go. There are numbers here for the Belgians. They give it to their flyer in the head guard. He fends off the attentions of the would-be defender and that is the opening try of the Howden Rossin Park National School 7s 2024. It was patient build up play. Did well to conserve the possession and bided their time, freed up the spare man and just a little too much room power and pace. And Boisfort in with the opening try. No conversion to add and, well, as you can hear from our referee, it's a tiring work out there. Just two minutes on the clock, but already the lungs under a bit of duress and so too Halebury who've coughed up possession from that kickoff. The team from Watermai Boisfort really starting with a bit of zip in their heels. <laughs> but a penalty much needed for Halebury, who are yet to escape their 22. 
but they will do now with a bit of flight of foot and an acceleration through the white jersey just a bit of a stumble gave the belgians a chance but it's a wonderful offload on the floor that can't be pouch we'll come back for the scrum I just be six, I still want stability. Meow. Crouch. Bind. Set. Halebury take it against the head. First foray into the Belgian half. And they give it to the man who made the break to get them there. Just a spill, but it goes backwards before the touchline comes into play. And you can already see who one of Halebury's danger men are. Wonderful break to carry play up in to the Bois for half. Just lacking a bit of accuracy. Well, it's a Halebury throw here. Must have clicked a white jersey at some stage. And well, it's well competed. It is messy, and Halebury has spun on their heels. Try scorer release, release. wraps up his opposite in the man. A oh, bit of room left unattended round the fringe, and Halebury almost in, but for the handful of a jersey. Good offload. Halebury, it's not completely fluid at the moment, but they're holding on to the ball. They're creating room, and. Well, there's that inaccuracy again that's just sort of stuttering the way that they can play. They do still retain possession. They do still see gaps fighting for the extra metre. Looked like a clear out from a side entry. The Halebury retain the ball. That's wonderfully smuggled free. <laughs> Knock forward in the tackle. Not forward yet. Penalty here. Okay, so penalty. Halebury. Looking composed. Need a bit more precision on the ball. They go into that 15 metre channel, looking for the switch again, but the tackle really good. Dislodges the ball. Hey! We're going, we're going. The Boisford boys, unhappy with the call, but they're going to have to play and they're going to have to be smart because Halebury are weaving through their tackles. One pass is what's needed, but it's not precise enough again. Skidding along the floor, an offload out of the tackle. One more might just do it. And finally, Halebury unlock this stubborn Belgian defence. And it's an equalising score with a minute and a bit of change on the clock for the first half. No extras to add. Halebury have laboured back to a level position. Again, the passing not quite precise enough, but the instinctive offloading is certainly there. Halebury find a bit of green grass and a bit of touch. So pressure on this line out for the Belgians. 15 seconds. Last play, last play. Last play confirmed from the referee. Long way to go for the Belgians. They've already come a fair few miles to be here. What a boon it would be for them to open proceedings with a win against this Halebury side that there isn't a bit of chatter about no how deep can they go. No the well, they're in a real battle at the moment. 
One more ball. Back the pace. Scampering free, but swung touch almost goal. into touch. touch. Does really well to get the ball away. Great intensity in the rucks as well. It's opened up here. The bounce of the ball, unlocking Hale Rees defence. So often the most difficult one to defend, the bouncing ball. And the boys from Belgium take the lead on the stroke of half time. Time. Wafo leading Halebury 12 5 in the opening fixture of day one of the Howden Rossen Park National School Sevens. Good morning from RE Control and announcement for the 10 20 round of fixtures. On RE1, Victoria College versus the Herodian. On RE2, Rhinestone School versus St. Peter's School. On RE3, King Alfred's Academy versus Different Amman. On RE4, Ashford School versus Dollar Academy. On RE5, Dane Allen School versus Sir Benfro. And on RE6, HKC Dragons versus Church's College. Uh, those matches due to get underway at 10.20. Half time here on our E1. Wafo Sevens Academy leading Halebury School, 12 points to five. Halebury in red with the thin white hoops kicking off into the touring side from Belgium's arms and they put themselves under pressure in a perilous position here. Oh, that was risky and one hand to it from Halebury. Nicely worked though, it's good close range move, passing move. from Boisfort. Looking comfortable, very, very tight to their own try line. They get okay, no, no, no. set upon by a couple of Halebury school players and there's penalty advantage. Okay, six clearly offside here. Red. The penalty to Boisfort and just for people tuning into the stream throughout the week we're going to be up here we uh, we yet to know who all these fine players are I'm sure they're going to make their make names for themselves across the week but one thing with the help us is if we get team sheets team sheets from the schools from the parents from the boys so, if you know that your school is on RE1 or RE2, make sure you get a team sheet to us in the commentary positions. Then we can say the names of the players. We can give a bit of background on them as well. For when the inevitable worldie gets scored, we can give you the right and proper shout out. Halebury ship it away, looking to strike, looking to equalise, inviting defenders onto them, but it's really watchful stuff 
from Boisford. And again, the jackling jaws clamp down. Off they go. Through one of their strike players, he sells a dummy and almost goes through. Halebury, first to the bounce of the ball. They need that hunger. Nearly 10 minutes played, trailing by seven. Looking down the right edge, finding an offload on the inside, but again, Belgian resistance is there. Lot of numbers, but it doesn't go. Popped off the floor, though, to the try scorer for Halebury in that first half. And there's more advantage for the Belgians to work with. Tap. Feet. Too much feet. But a great pop off the floor. This is Halebury's to score if they can find the right route. Have they been held up? First one, then the second one he bounced. A good try, thank you. Well, there you go. There's the call from the referee. Happy with the grounding. They made hard work of it. They had numbers outside, but could prove to be a shrewd decision to step back inside because this is an eminently convertible kick. And it's one that Halebury needs. And they don't get it. They trail by two in the opening fixture of Group A in the 18s Vars. Plenty of time. Two and a half minutes worth. An Eon in sevens. Oh, and Boisford have put themselves under pressure with some sloppy handling. And Halebury now looking for that try that'll take them into the lead. Lovely feet. Bit of power. Plenty of desire. Oh, that is outrageous off the floor. Just needs the finish. And it arrives. Ridiculous offload off the floor. And Halebury take the lead. Two minutes to go. <laughs> and the extras added to boot. Let's take a look at this. Well, there's the finish but it was all about the offload off the floor. Showed a bit of patience. This is the footwork. Then he thought we were going to go all the way to the line. Oh, ridiculous. Wafford. The judge to have knocked the ball forward there. And Boisfort, again, feeling wronged by the call. Good morning. As the referee rightly said, it's the decision he's the made. It's to be respected. On RE1, Victoria College and Halebury, on RE2, with this five-point lead that they've had to 84. battle towards, on are going to look to close the game out. The oh, that's filth in the feet. On RE4. That's how you close out a match. Bit of individual brilliance. Maximizes his own effort. Just skirts around the outside here. Then the jump step. Oh, hairpin turn. Lovely stuff. Well, Boisfort played so well in that first half. Defended resolutely as well, but they've just been starved of any quality ball in this second half. And Halebury have feasted on the errors. One final handling error brings the game to a close, but tell you what, Watermai Boisfort, Sevens Academy are here to play. They're going to be a tough test for anyone 
who comes across them in the latter rounds, but it's Halebury School who prevailed here on RE1. 24-12, final score. Well, here we are back on RE1 and still in the Vars. It's Group D and we have Herodian in purple and black hoops. They haven't had to travel too far from neighbouring barns against Victoria College, who've got on a boat and they've got here from St. Helier in Jersey. So all the Jersey Beans will be tuning in and very excited to see their boys in this shock of yellow taken to the field against one of the locals. Find Early error. Set. Hands possession to Herodian. They get clattered as they look to pick up the ball. Good strength in the tackle as well. More Herodians pile in, but it's a one-man muscle show from the Victoria College lads. Back feet. Gritty start, close quarter. <laughs> But offside from Victoria College. A Rodian. Just struggling for a bit of fluency at the moment. And look at that number 15 piling through the ruck again, causing a nuisance. Great line speed pressure. A Rodian caught flat and. Well, that's brilliant offloading play before the ball gets coughed up. Victoria College. Okay, we'll come back here, guys. 
looked to drive forward, but there's already been an earlier infringement. And uh, well, Victoria College, they should be in reasonably fine fettle. They've been busy on the seven circuits. Good morning from RE Control. Uh, this is a call, please, for any representative from Milton Abbey School. Uh, and I have a midfield scrub. Again, Abbey great pressure School. on the halfback. Uh, if you are here Good on battle side, please emerging between the these two. A little bit lateral from Victoria. You remain lateral and then in reverse. But they have managed to fashion a bit of room out here on the right. Stutter and a dish. And out to the edges. Nice, patient continuity. One more ball to get to the width. Lovely hands. And just as it was opening up, his bulging eyes got in the way of his hands. So a knock on. Either side, yet to breach the other's 22. Huge week here at the Howard and Rosson Park National School Sevens. Nearly 15,000 young players will be taking to the 27 pitches across this enormous footprint this day one. There's so much more to come and all coming live on the stream. Lovely bit of vision is the execution there. Well, it was as far as the kick was concerned, but it was a tricky pick up at pace. And another knock on. Alden, the new title sponsor of the School Sevens, Crouch. bringing their passion for rugby Five. and one that's going to go to the very Second. top of the game. And they're emblazoned across the jersey of the greatest touring side on the planet, the British and Irish Lions. But it all starts here at the grassroots. Victoria stripped Herodian in the tackle. Nice delay on the ball, invites a bit of pace, and this will be the opening score. It's hard fought, but it's one that goes to the Jersey boys. Well, as tough a conversion as you'll get here on RE1, it's an incredibly wide pitch. Great defence, stripping the ball, it was targeted, and then he was there to provide the try scoring pass. And then the speed to finish the job. Yeah, play. Nice hands. This lads look dangerous. That's fine, go down. That's fine. Let it come, it's fine. Play on. No need for any more scrums just yet this half. Two minutes to go. Victoria leading by a score. Yeah, fine, well won. Well won on the floor. Herodian just searching for any room. A pile driving tackle ends any ambition of a strike. Wow, textbook hit. Last play, guys. Everyone good? Crouch. Bind. Set. Stay on, stay on. The last play. A little bit of a uh, disparity between uh, the clocks. The last play and a last chance for Herodian to get themselves on the score sheet. 5 0, they trail. Just a bit of a knock for the ball carrier. You've got a penalty here for not rolling away. You all right? Winded. 
in through your nose, out through your mouth. The advice doesn't change from back in my day. As he can hear. Just the winding. We hope he'll be back on his feet and back in later on in the competition. But for now. Okay, guys. Okay, penalty last play, guys, all right? Just here. Now he may be done. Penalty is taken on a tap and Herodian to attack the side of the field where their coaching staff and the injured player are slowly making their way to the touchline. Not forward from a uh, low pass and that is the half. It's one, the Victoria College lead five points to nil. Good morning from RE Control. Uh, this is a call, please, for Torquay Boys Grammar School. Uh, if you could make your way, please, to pitch RE8. We're going to play your fixture with Milton Abbey School now. That's a call, please, for Torquay Boys Grammar School. Uh, Milton Abbey are making their way to pitch RE8 now with the referee. If we could get that game off the way. That's Torquay Boys Grammar School, please. Your fixture now on pitch RE8 or in program is marked as the reserve. Thank you. Back underway on RE1, and it's a perfect kickoff that bounces kindly for Herodian, who are chasing this game. But the offload is loose. And across the touchline, but only momentarily, because Victoria are a team in a hurry. They're a team with wheels on the left and a step in the middle. Back they come. Support comes flooding through. The yellow jerseys pour forward. Bit of a burst of pace, and just when you thought he might get reeled in, the physical number 15 for Victoria College races away and strikes within seconds of the restart. And Victoria, with a sweetly struck conversion, stretched their lead to 12. Lovely work from the school from Jersey. Herodian, they need a response here. They've shown glimpses that they can break tackles and there's another it's shot fine. of it. Offload off the floor, well picked up. Off he goes galloping, steps back inside and it takes two yellow jerseys to halt his progress. Lovely pop off the floor. Oh, the ball squirms free over the back and, oh, sir, let the boys play. Let the boys play. Well, he is a lot closer to the action than I am. And he's the one with the whistle. That's the main thing. Guys, let's go. Three, Fabulous 
crew of referees that we have here across the week Mind. who bring, Second. I can assure you, just as much passion to the Howden Rossin Park National School Six. sevens Six. as the next. And well, there's no TMOs in this game, no ARs. And as the ref said, didn't see it, so play on. And Victoria muscle their way through the close clinches. And then hit the afterburners. And that could be a decisive third try to just take this game out of Herodian's reach. <laughs> just shy of 10 minutes played. And Victoria College looking good, leading 19 points to nil. for another break. They're under yeah, real yeah, pressure from Victoria here. And here, some of the panting out there. It is, it is tiring work out on RE1. It's tiring work, whatever pitch you are, all the 27. That's Impington College, number 40 in the draw. Uh, if you are here on side, and the ball uh, spurts out, Victoria unable to collect it cleanly. Maybe an element of fatigue creeping into the latter stages of this match. It's been a real tussle. Too early. Let's go back the Herodian scrum it. half set upon. It's got to be back on the mark. You're on there. Let's go. Here come Herodian. Couple minutes and a bit of change on the clock. Still looking to play this offloading backwards. game out of the tackles. Feet on feet. The Victoria College are getting hungrier by the tackle. Nice hands. Room out wide. Foot race to the corner, and it's won by the man in yellow with 10 on his back. A four score for Victoria College. And if the deed wasn't already done, the game put beyond any doubt. So 90 seconds on the clock. And while Victoria may be taking the W, Herodian will certainly be looking to end on a positive, a positive to take into their next group game. One loss in the sevens isn't terminal can bounce back and that is really one of the tenets of a successful week here at the Howden Rossin Park National School Sevens. It's that bounce back ability. Find set. Victoria. Getting a little sloppy in the closing stages. Last play. The last play will be Herodians. Crouch. Bind. Set. Stay on, please, yellow. Just play it, play it. Herodian 
boot to ball. They Stay mix up the there. attack. Bounces awkwardly for everybody. And there'll be no more opportunities. But there will be victory for Victoria College. They've travelled here and they've opened their Howden Rossin Park National Schools sevens with a victory. 26-0 over Herodian. Good morning from RE Control. An announcement now for the 1040 round of fixtures. On pitch RE1, Gresham School will play Pollock Cigar. On RE2, Bishop Wordsworth School will play Catrum School. On RE3, Clare's Court will play Ampleport College. On RE4, Comet will play Dartford Grammar School. On RE5, Durham School will play Pangbourne College. On RE6, Christ College will play rival Penrose School. And on RE7, uh, which is running 10 minutes or so late, Here we go. Match number three of day one of the Howden Rosson Park National School Sevens to Pauls in black, who again have not travelled too far from Barnes against another group from the islands. Elizabeth from Guernsey, say hello to all those tuning in from across the seas. And the pressure from St Paul's in black, who were pretty handy last year in the competition. Unlucky not to go further. Apply significant pressure and they force an error early. Five, six. <laughs> 
So St Paul's put a bit of whip on it. They look to exploit this big 15-metre channel. Lovely offload out of the tackle. The intention was always there as he carried it into contact. And St Paul's race under the sticks for the opening score. No. So no extras added. Yep, on you. Oh, high hanging kick and <laughs> greeted by a crunching shoulder, but. No. Obstruction. There was Obstruction. there was an escort in there, which went beyond an escort and into obstruction. So penalty. St Paul's attacking again, using the footwork just to manoeuvre themselves in between the two defenders. Great tactic, sucks them in, and if you can get the hands free like they did first time, then it's try time. That's a little bit more direct, right. and he gets forklifted and. Dumped on his uh, derriere. St. Paul's, oh, just for the first time, have an errant Line pass up. in their armory. To the touchline and a first chance of seeing Elizabeth with the ball in hand. St Paul's are the ones who emerge. The men in black looking in the mood, driving to the touchline out wide, really exploring the edges, but caught isolated out there. And Elizabeth go. Brilliant pick up right on the shins. And then a lovely offering of a secondary layer. Backwards. And Elizabeth finding a bit of rhythm. That's fine. St Paul's. They've got a great appetite for defence, though, don't they? A bit of hassling and harrying forces the knock on. Easy, boys. Crouch! Watch early engagement. Let's go. Boys, Let's go. Second. Who would have thought? Crouch. Who would have thought? Five. Set. Yep. Three. Off goes St Paul's, travelling from the base and bringing the pace in the back line. They've really looked to use the whip, but this time they dance inside and get tripped by the bootstraps. Overload here. A lot of pace. Too much pace, in fact. And it's try number three for St Paul's. Well, it's their ball. They got to retrieve it. They got to kick off it. It's up to you if you want to be kind. No. So again, the conversion unsuccessful. The three tries put St. Paul's in a commanding position here. Against Elizabeth College, who have got a royal and military background. Over 450 years ago, it was founded. That's another memorable occasion here on Pitch RE1 at the greatest schools rugby competition in the world. The Howden Rossin Park National School Sevens, but they're up against a well drilled outfit here. St Paul's searching for a fourth try. Find their ball spoil illegally. Oh, oh yeah! Lo love the footballing skills. 
and love that pace again raw speed always so deadly on the sevens field and with the clock approaching six minutes st paul's have try number four It's not St Paul's day with the boot, but yeah, we're going to get to see it now. That's how you deal with a poor pass from your teammate. Skills to pay the bills. And we got ourselves a few team sheets as well. So we can shout out the relevant people. Off goes Ned Bowman in pursuit, thunders into the Elizabeth player, that's lovely hands, really inviting the running onto the ball, but look at the work rate from Jacob Bethel. Lost. Good contest on the floor. St Paul's in transition. Shaping for a kick momentarily, but instead backing the skills, backing the fen. And off goes Nathan Bottomley. <laughs> He's in the Irish IQ setup. And showing us exactly why. No. <whistles> St Paul's reluctance to convert any of their tries continues. But try number five. Means that St Paul's go into the half-time huddles with a healthy lead. And Nathan Bottomley with an individual moment to savour here on RE1 in their opening match. Half-time here, Elizabeth College nil, St Paul's 25. All right, back for the second half of game number three of day one of the Howden Rossin Park National School Sevens. I'm Joe Burns, and well, my wingman for the week is Dave Rogers, who delivered a wonderful pre show just to set the scene for the tournament ahead. And I'm delighted to say that he's now joining me on the mic for what may be another St. Paul score as they surge across the halfway line. But muscular defense coming in there from Elizabeth. Oh, great tackle right round the bootstraps. I'm, I'm going to bring you in now, Dave. We're going to bring you in now. I thought there was going to be a try. Yeah, it's uh, scary to uh, start a conversation, isn't it, with this St. Paul's team because they look like they can score from anywhere. I mean, in the middle there. That's uh, Neil Bowman, isn't it? St. Paul's wearing a uh, Ned Bowman, sorry. Looks like he can do a bit. But yeah, that preview show was great, wasn't it? Great to hear from Jack Zorab. He's commentating over on RE2 throughout the week. And Angus Savage is going to be gathering content, whatever that means. But he tells me that he's got some pretty serious interviews lined up for, for today for the live show we're going to be doing when all of the action finishes. So we're going to be busy. But it is great to have your company wherever you're watching around the world. 
to the vice captain Ollie Graham. Dispossessed there before Will Kreber. Captain takes them forward, playing for Guernsey St. Jack's Vikings. Callum Simmons now looking to link up with Fergus McGull. Twin brother Logan in the ranks. A knock on there and just a bit of disappointment from Dylan Kidd. As you can tell, we've got some team sheets. <laughs> so just a bit of colour on Elizabeth College Guernsey. Second time entering the tournament. First time was back in 2016. And they beat their big island rivals, Victoria College, last weekend for the first time in eight years. We saw them in action earlier today as they put away the opposition in their opening match. But St Paul's are made of stern stuff, and off they go. It is pinned back, and brilliant last-ditch defence. Oh, deserved to drag him down, but great desire on display from the boys in black. And eventually... They're on the wrong end of one here, Elizabeth College, but can you imagine how exciting it is to build up to this, to get on a plane, to effectively come on tour to the biggest sevens tournament in the world? And of course, they'll be got on planes before, of course, because they have to for a lot of fixtures, but to get here and be a part of this, they must be absolutely buzzing to be here. And it's so good to have them on pitch RE1. Tournament director Andrew Higgins has just walked past. What's he got? Bacon and egg. There is fantastic yes. food here. Bacon and egg back at the brioche. Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens. I could get into that, you know. If you're not playing, it's certainly worth coming down to watch and, and tuck in. Here we go. Elizabeth College. Putting it through the hands, looking more fluid. They look to have found their groove here in this second half. and. Cantering on comes Callum Simmons. Really messy breakdown proposition St. Paul's at the moment. Lovely width on that ball from Kreber. Good delay on the ball. This is better from Elizabeth. And the captain. Captain. Looking to just blast off those heels. Really challenges the hands of Henry Watkin. He does well to hold on to it. Still, Fergus McGull in the middle. Miss pass, here we go. Callum Simmons was accelerating onto it, but a bit too much asked on the pass. That's good intent though, isn't it? Edge to edge to edge. Good defensive discipline from St. Paul's though. Not letting themselves get found out around the outside. Taking Elizabeth College play. St Paul's have found they're going a bit tougher this half. Tell you what, our referee is he is in charge. There ain't no doubt about it. The way he makes these calls, I love it. He's doing an old boy, isn't he? Oh, the Gordon School Pipers have piped up again. Did you get much of a view of those as they piped the teams out for the first game to begin with? No, you guys were too busy hogging the airwaves. <laughs> Oh, they sounded fantastic. It's a wonderful scene over there on the far side, and it's just a taste of you know, what is everywhere here in Wimbledon and Merton. Really thundering hit going in on Ollie Graham there. Penalty. Penalty to Elizabeth. They want their score. They deserve one the way they've carried themselves in this second half. And unfortunately, there's a faint knock on as we move to the final minute of the match.
Everton pulls. Looking to go from deep. Siding inside, then freeing up the hands. They've been really good at this today. Lovely feed on offer from Nicholas Tredra. Brilliant handling. Once again, edge to edge. Oh, the inside, outside. Leaves him for dead. Liam Nadze sails across for a second. Wow, what a finish. Oh, that was quality, wasn't it? Lovely delay of the pass. Great awareness of where your teammates are, where the defenders are. And when you've got a flying machine on the outside. There is always the try threat. Big win that for St. Paul's. Take another look at this final try. There was that little step inside there, then they knew it was on immediately, didn't they? Get the ball to where the space is. This last pass here, fix the last defender. Cut him loose and watch him fly that stop and go, the inside out. Great try, great win. Final score here, Elizabeth College nil, St. Paul's School 32. And so we continue. For those just tuning in, welcome. It's day one of the Howden Roslyn Park National School 7s. Gresham School in the Barbarian Hoops taking on Colleg Sirga. One of the teams who've travelled over the Seven Bridge to be with us at the largest Sevens tournament in the world. Colleg Sirga receiving in the red and blue quarters. And we are away. First touch of the ball for the Welsh team and a first tackle. Crunching hit on the right shoulder. An immediate pressure being applied, but the tackle's a little bit too high and the team's no better than that, and they will be punished accordingly. Oh, what a shot, but the offload good too. Gresham's dishing it in defence and forcing the knock on. So unable to take full advantage of that tap penalty. The referee very clear on what he wants from the scrum there, and he got it solid. Ball out quickly. Gresham's with this little wraparound play to create some space on the left-hand side. The space was there, but the handling was not. wasn't a sympathetic pass as they were trying to move that ball there quickly. But good attacking intent.
Coach. Spine. Set. Colleague Sirgar put in then. And the pressure coming on from Gresham. Ah, but they've got to do it legally. They've got to drive straight. And the referee, a real stickler for the scrum, as he should be. Safety paramount. And colleague Sergar, get us going. Still nil-nil. Two minutes into this. Most of the ball has been with the team from Wales, but defensively, the boys in black and white have been rock solid. No gaps, maybe until now. Oh, cover tackles, a good one. First bit of territory for the Welsh. And into the 22 they go, options both ways, but the counter, absolutely superb. There is a big size differential, and Gresham's the bigger of the two teams. Are they able to make that physicality count here? They're certainly able to make the pace count. Great finish up the right-hand side from the turnover. Physicality into fast-flowing rugby. And Gresham's get the game's first try. Well, 5 0, they've done a lot of defending and just evidence that when you do get your opportunities, you have to take them. And that is an opportunity entirely of their own making. So, a couple of updates from the games you've already had today as we take a look at that smoking hot finish at the right hand side. First game of the day, Haley Bree defeated Boitsford Academy. That was in Group A. That was followed by Herodian beating Victoria College 26-0. And St. Paul's beating Elizabeth College, the Guernsey boys. Good. So this game number four of the day in the under-18 boys' fast. This is a massive competition. Great quality. Colleague Sirgar just struggling a little bit to get out of their own 22. Now, Kolik Sirgar looking for a way out. Or oh, the hitch kick and the footwork, very nice. Always time for a goosey in sevens, no matter where you are on the pitch. Oh, this time the turnover's good. This is great hustle. Rom Gresham really impressed with the way they've defended. And now let's see how they attack. Good position inside the Sirgar half. Oh, there's a massive gap that's opened up. And the offload is good. That is top play. Lovely midfield composure. Not scared to take it to the line. Then when the line disappears, pedal to the metal. And it's the second try. Conversion from under the poles is good. Gresham 14, Sirgar nil. Have a look at this. Takes it to the line, has a look, no defender there. As soon as they were turned, they knew. And then the wherewithal, once tackled, to just stay alert. Get that offload away. And we go, 14 nil. It's gone backwards. Another real physical shot, and again, just winning all of these collisions at the moment. Some more hot stepping. They need to find some gain line. And that's an area of the game they're struggling with now. Still 90 seconds of the first half to go. Well, great to have the referee's mic the first time that we've had a referee's mic on pitch RE1 in the Roslyn Park National School 7. It's a lovely addition, I hope we'll all agree. Another good scrum from Gresham's, good pressure on the scrum half, but the kick ahead breaks. Now it's down to the football in skills. Oh, the referee says knock on. That is a tough beat. That was a lovely touch there, in behind, just needed a bit of composure. Oh, 
Still hear that piping, band piping. Let's go, James, let's go. Well, miscued restart causes a knock on. That is fortuitous to say the least. A colleague, Sirga. And they'll have one last chance to attack before half time. That's fair. That's fair, James. Last scrum of the half. That's the second scrum penalty for the same thing. Just a bit of a power mismatch and power imbalance in that front row progression. It's costing them the ball. That's a better physical bump, but straight away they're over the ball. Gresham called off it. Really impressed with their defensive organization and bigger boys, but not being run around by this smaller, quicker Sirgar team instead. They're just standing, forming this black and white wall, and it's a black and white wall that will not have been breached in the opening half. The whistle goes, and Gresham, good for their lead. Most of the ball has been with colleague Sirgar, but all of the scoring has been with Gresham's school. They lead by 14 points to nil. Second half incoming, colleague Sirgar hoping that a change of end will lead to a change of fortune. They have been outplayed in the opening half here on pitch RE1. First game of the tournament for both teams. As Joe Burns said earlier, one defeat is not terminal. However, two certainly can be. They've gone for green, green grass on that restart. Is it overcooked? Oh, no, it's... Sat up ideally, but the chase needs to be good. And if you overcommit to the chase, then the gaps can appear. And that always oh, what but Gresham's were just trying to exploit there. But the pass doesn't go to hand. And Sirgar have got an attacking platform inside the Gresham's half. But they have defended astutely once again. And now are on an attack themselves. Oh, perhaps that could have gone, but again, the offload's good. And this is fluid handling, a two-on-one. Now a race for the corner. Yes, yes. Really yes, impressive handling. Another penalty for a high tackle. Sternum rules apply. Oh, here we go, for the corner. Happy it's this side, guys, we're going to say. I'm happy it's this side. Well, this is the first line-out I've seen today. How exciting. Oh, are we going to see a mall? My kingdom for a mall in the sevens. Just step off the line, guys. Good. Half 
The sevens purists will hate it. Sirgar making a substitution. Tough time to come on when defending the five meter line. Coming up to two minutes of the second half gone. No more, use it, use it! Told not to maul. Instead, they come away, try and bully tackle. their way over. It's a good tackle, good first ditch defence, but one more phase will do it. And it's a third try for Greshams. From close range, bullying and battering their way over. Just casting my eyes across the vista here on RE1. Seeing who's where, as that is a lovely strike into the Edwin Doran tent. Next to that, a new bar, and then time not quite, not quite lunch time, brunch time, quarter past eleven. So people buzzing around, sandwiches, coffees. And then, of course, all of the people who are here to make friends this week including all of the universities. We've got Loughborough here, I've seen Cardiff Met already. There'll be plenty more as the week goes on. Welsh Exiles, Irish Qualified are all here too, looking for talent. Plenty of success stories too. About players who've played at this level, played schools rugby, schoolboy and schoolgirl rugby, and then gone on to play Professionally, semi-professionally, internationally. This is an exciting week for the future of the game that we all love. Ten and a half minutes gone. Colleagues here gone nil. Gresham's 21. Also, the footwear choices as well. It's pretty dry here at the moment, but it does get pretty muddy pretty quickly, and I have seen far too many crocs. Far too many crocs, but such is life. Here come Gresham's looking for try number four. Some lovely pace up the right-hand side. The timing of the pass is perfect, and the result, of course, is another five points for the men in black and white. Really impressed with their composure when they've been in the red zone. They've made good decisions, and it's led to four tries. Four converted tries. Oh, the referee says no. I thought that one had snuck in. Three converted tries. Again, this is a lovely ball. Just this little inside one to create the space and then draw the man, draw the man. Time the pass. It is a simple game when it's played this well. And Gresham's doing an excellent job. Ball control with the foot, it's a gamble. Oh, that looks a little high. Might be further action. Yes, it is. Yellow card. So Greshams will be down to six temporarily. They've conceded another 10 metres there for not retreating for the penalty too. So colleague Sergar. Oh, shot of the day. A little bit too high, but that's a big physical mismatch. And we can hear that crunch from up here. Now there could be some space, needs to be a good ball, that's a good start, but again it goes to the foot, not to the hand. Oh, lovely work, and then just losing it, looking for the kick. No advantage, this man's rolled twice, we're coming back to the scrum. Not done, no advantage. There's a heroic bit of footwork. Then just lost his footing, trying to nudge it into space. Last minute of the match incoming. Gresham's down to six, but the game beyond any doubt. 26 nil. Approach. Find. Set. All is out. This time it's Sirgar who put some pressure on at scrum time, but what it does do is leave them a little bit short in the backs. 
And now a race around the outside. It's a long way round and a good cover Not tackle. Held, hey. Not held, though. And they can continue to play. Is there a fifth try in the dying embers of this game? Another good ball and another oh, good offload, but knocked on. So a last play, last chance to dance for Kolek Sergar to get something positive out of this one. They move on to their second game. Long day for these players, long two days if they make it to the latter part of the competition. This one is in Group K, Caterham and Bishop Wandsworth School. Stay behind the ball. Good. Backwards. Oh, that one hacked on. I don't think anyone quick enough from Sirgar is going to get there. Last play now to Gresham's. Kick the ball off. Yes, they do. They've had enough. It's a long day. They want to keep some energy in the tank, and they have got. An excellent victory to kick off their campaign here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Full time on pitch RE1. Colic Sirgar nil. Gresham's 26. Non-stop action continues here on pitch RE1, day one of the Howden Roslyn Park and National please. School Sevens. We are in the boys under 18 Vars competition already. Seen some sensational tries. And it's Tiffin School <laughs> kicking us off against Leighton Park. Leighton Park in those navy jerseys with the golden sleeves. And no advantage there from the knock on. Knocking on from the first let's go, kickoff. Let's go. Let's go break my hip, please. Okay, break my hip, please. Okay. Bring it forward, bring your break forward. Six shoulders. Oh my call. Crouch! Spine set. Tiffin okay. with a put in at the scrum then. Oh, nice little move off the training park. We like this because it makes space on the right-hand side. First phase attack. Beautiful try in the corner. And what a statement of intent that is from the scrum. Great communication, great execution. And an opening score. Very nice indeed. Well, 
Well, that conversion, the drop kick, not going to make it. I always think it's a clean. tough ask Red to try and uh, drop kick from there. But we will have a few, particularly as the competition goes on, and they could be very important ones as well. The excellent news is as well, I've just seen a handwritten Tiffin team sheet. So mums, dads, friends, Tackle's you good. might have your son or pal shouted out here, unfortunately. Tackle! Haven't got one for the opponents. Additional rolls, not necessary. Additional rolls. Make the ball available. Back ten. Here, here. Well, the referee's certainly in charge, isn't he? We're in 25 there, Tommy Gregg. Playing advantage, high tackle. Offloads that to Max Simmons. And now they've got the right-hand side, the right-hand side that yielded the first try. Here's the gas merchant. Tackle away! Michael Reinecke. To rock. Stay. Kai Smith at 10. Goes on his own. Darts through on the diagonal. And Kai Smith. Yeah, a penalty advantage for the offside there. Manage your lines. Gets the second try for Tiffin. He's going to try and convert his own work. Does so. 12 0 in the glorious sunshine. A beautiful day here. Just take a look We've at this angle. Back. Just drifts and drifts and drifts. Backs himself round the outside. It's a long way round, but once you're there, you're clear. OK, clock's off. Have we had the ball back, please? Thank you. Just waiting for the ball to be returned because of course naturally what's happened is we need one ball we end up getting two okay clock's back on let's go and there are a good few hundred i haven't got the exact number of balls in the competition however you can imagine that when they do disappear over the tent sometimes they take a little while to come back because they would be quite the souvenir, wouldn't they, if you uh, managed to sneak one of those? Well, this has been turned over. Tiffin going in search of try number three. There are two visits to the 22 and two tries so far. And now Max Simmons. Tackle! Halfway through the first half. Offside, number 10. Another penalty advantage, another opportunity, another sidestep, and another try. He never came back on side 10. <laughs> this time, Leo Fernandez dots down. And this is ruthless execution from Tiffin. Up to 22. <laughs> three visits to the 22, three tries. Three different scorers. Yeah, the two on one there. That is too much space for one defender to cover. Whenever you're ready. On a good restart as well, that they're going to claim. But then it gets turned over. Oh. Just scrappy and they can't keep their hands on the ball and it's back with Tiffin again. Some lovely dancing feet. And the passing to match. Oh, the last one doesn't go to hand. Go quick. Orange, your ball. And that is the first opportunity. First man here, please. First man here. That hasn't yielded a can. try. First man here. Yes, yeah, stay there, please. Hold back, keep going. Thank you. And Leighton Park. Well, they've just been starved of everything in this game so far. No contest, not straight. What do you want, red and white? Scrum, please. What a contest for the ball in the line out, please. Let's go. This one in Group O, Worth School and Uskol Guffing Guir. To a 90 second, gentlemen. Break right here, please. Shoulders, thank you. Crouch. Set. Are the other two teams that make up this? It's a big blind side, but instead, 
They decide to go the open side, crash ball, gorgeous line. And it's another first phase try. They've been working on those moves direct from the scrum. And they have yielded two behind. excellent scores. Guys, get back up to 22 or the 10, it's up to you. Well, Kai Smith is on conversions from behind the poles this time to make sure that we can get the game back underway. Still plenty of time in this first half, 60 seconds. A lot can happen in 60 seconds of sevens rugby. 45 seconds, let's go, we're going oh, to restart. 45 seconds, it's close enough. Do you know what, the smell of the bacon sandwiches is starting to permeate. In front of the kicker. I warned you! Tackle away. Lead now, you pile the rock. Last attack of the half then. Leighton Park, oh, they've gone straight to the boot, which we so often see when patience runs out. They want to make something happen. They want to make it happen quickly. They're going to find themselves under the pump here as Tiffin working out to the right-hand side. Now it's a foot race. Serious gas. Oh, the last-ditch tackle comes in, but it's not quite good enough. Leighton Park run out of patience. Tiffin step on the gas. Half time. And that'll take us through to half time. A dominant half. 31 points with a potential of 33. It's half time, gents. But it is nigh on perfect. What's that? Five tries from six attacks. Outstanding conversion rate. Guys, stay there. Or then do the conversion attempt. The conversion drifts across the face. That takes us to half time. As we take a look at the pick of the tries, a lot of work to do here. This is a lung busting sprint. Not just for the try scorer, but for the three that gave chase. There was a glimmer of hope here. Just that reach. If they'd have got the left hand there, then perhaps. But burning lungs, always worth it when you get the meat pie at the end. And at half time, it is Tiffin leading Leighton Park by 31 points to nil. Red, you ready? <laughs> Away we go in the second half. Been all tiffin in the first, and that is a good cover tackle. To touch that. Line out, please. Orange ball. Orange ball. Let's have a contest, please, with the ball. Yep, Le Leighton Park. Yep. Stay there, please. Hold on the 22. Not really had any opportunity okay. inside the half. And Tackle away. Doing well to get Leave a knee there, down there. Up. The last thing you want is to be held up in the mall. So Leighton Park. You have oh, it. getting turned over. Excellent jackal. And rewarded for it despite the knock on. Tackle! Coming forward again. Referee, very vocal, isn't he? Pretty obvious who's in charge out there. That is up off the feet and 
into the bread basket and everything sticking for Tiffin at the moment, which is the sign of a confident team. Oh, that's a lovely pickup. Back off yellow. And the pass in behind, requiring some patience from Tiffin, but it is a virtue. Now one on one. Oh, the step, the fend and a handful of shirt is all that can stop this Tiffin school from pouring forward. 90 seconds into this second half and oh, you can't jump into the tackle. Touch there. Orange ball. And twice they have been ushered into touch. Once on the right, once on the left. Let's go first on me. There are some tired bodies out there. They are being run around. Here. Here. The first match on day one, boys. <laughs> you could have to dig in a lot deeper than this Stay. to punch a hole in this tournament. Open play. Line out, overthrown. Tiffin on the ball. Tiffin, Tiffin round the outside. That is serious gas off the mark. And then he can ease off the afterburners once the damage is done. And that is another try on the board for Tiffin School. 36 points to nil now. And they're probably the most patient team we've seen today. Take another look at this one. Yeah, the last pass was excellent, wasn't it? Took two defenders out of play to create the speed, create the space for the speed. Hold on, hold on, got it into chain. Yeah? Okay. I can't hear what you're saying. Play the ball. Tackle. No hand. Apologies for the radio silence. Jack Zorab over on pitch RE2 came to interrupt, and we've come back just in time to see a brilliant solo try. Well, he's checking left and right, and he can't believe the space that he has found himself in. Unbelievable score. Solo effort, searing pace. And the drop goal to match, because tries like that deserve seven points. Here we go, worked from inside their own 22. Right, I'm going to try the, around the outside here. I'm going to get around the outside here. And then the check outside, the check inside. He's like, oh, yeah, no one else. I've done it. Serious score. And Tiffin. Tackle away. Showing that they have got the chops here on pitch RE1. Tackle. You have it. Another turnover. <laughs> you had to make it about you off your feet. Oh, but then played off the floor. So Park escape. But they've got another two minutes to either make something happen or defend. Otherwise, they're going to be shipping 50 here. Tackle. It's a better start. I think the difference is speed of ball. Someone just needs to pick and go there and find a way to stress this Tiffin defence. Pass back in. Because at the moment... Tackle away! They're just going backwards. Lead now, too late. It's a Tackle. bit better. Lost it forward, playing advantage. Advantage over. Kicked away. Oh. Away! Still defending the well. Ball. They want to keep this egg, don't they? They want to keep this nil. And they want to hit 50, turned over inside the 22. That's the half century. A dominant performance, an excellent performance. Eight tries in total. Gentlemen, that's it, game up.
We've got 50 points now. And the referee... Minutes, no restart. Showing mercy. <laughs> and blowing the full-time whistle. 52-0. This is the final try. Sorry, boys. 50 point gap. Sums up the game. Look, excellent turnover. I'll take that. Hard work, that one. And under the posts for 50 points, a dominant 50 points as well. And the full-time score here as the sun comes from behind the clouds again is Tiffin School 52 at Leighton Park nil. Next game is underway here then on pitch RE1. The pictures, this is becoming a radio commentary until we get pictures back here. But this is in the boys under 18's Vars. It's Kings Ely against Latima Upper School in Group V. Uh, sorry, Group R, should I say. Nil-nil in the... And it is... Nil-nil to start with. Ball is in the middle of the pitch. Uh, Latimer Upper School in the black and blue hoops. And Kings Ely in the navy and green. They're on the ball now, working it out to the right-hand side. A fabulous mullet. I do hope the pictures come back so we can see it. Oh, yes, there it is. Number 13. He looks like he's borrowed his lid from Carlos Valderrama, the Colombian goalkeeper from the 90s. Absolutely stunning. Fingers crossed he'll do a scorpion kick if they manage to score. So Latimer's defending. Still waiting for the first score of the game. Great to have your company for this one. A fantastic day so far. Most importantly, it's been dry.
First scrum of the game. We've got a team sheet for Latimer, so that is incredibly Six. exciting. Five. Six. But they're the ones defending here. First proper attack of the game. We've seen some great strike moves from scrums, but some good old fashioned width attempting to be used here. But then the step back inside. Oh, the final pass could have done it. But instead, more phases, more defending for Latimer's. There has to be wit somewhere, is there crossing? Referee says no, there's a lovely dummy, a shimmy, a shake, and a try. <laughs> First one of the game. Yeah, conversation with the referee as to where the conversion needs to be taken from. Kings Ely. Get the seven-pointer. So Group R, the four teams in the Group R, Hill House and Grammar School Leeds. They've made the journey down the M1 to be with us today. Real mix of footwear. Joe Burns stood next to me. He's got a great pair of wellies that have got a sealable top. I don't know if he's expecting to go paddling a little bit later on. Oh, and we've got a King's Ely team sheet. Here we go. Game on. To Latimer, they're on the ball now, in the blue and black, feeding that speed, but he's not really got a chance to stretch the legs. A good tackle by Ben Ray for Kings, guarding that flank. Peter Timpson knocks that one on, and Ben Ray, after making that tackle, finds himself inside, but then too high. But a few high tackles today. Tough old game to technically stay low, isn't it? Now, Dan Rushby, oh, he is clattered. That is a brilliant tackle. Heath Williams, the King's number nine, punching above his weight. And Latimer's a bit static. Need to find an injection of pace from somewhere. Handling's good, but there's no penetration. Oh, this is brilliant speed. Up over halfway. Last-ditch tackle attempt coming in, Rory Breach, can he get there? No, he cannot, and Charlie McCavick scores a brilliant individual try. Over 70 metres, probably 80 on the angle. Tough conversion to come, but Latimer right back in the game. Charlie McCavick with a scintillating score. Jody Bardell. We're yet to have a conversion from the touchline today. Take another look at this. Where did it come from? McCavick. Well, he got around Sam McDonald. And then just backed himself all the way. It's a brave chase. We don't often see that in the sevens, but that could be really important, that chase to the corner. Saves them two points. Kings straight back on the front foot. This looking very, very fluid indeed. Now slowing it down to keep the ball alive. Hands will do it here. The offload's good, and it had to be because after Sam Lott backed himself there, if they hadn't have scored, then there would have been problems. However, Rory Brett goes over. And Kings immediately respond. 12-5. Good game, Had some good individual scores, but not a huge amount of great contests so far. <laughs> yeah, hands would have done it there. Sought contact and got the offload away in the end, but had they not scored, that would have been a bad one. The restart, fielded by Latimer, chasing the game for the second time. Two scores behind that. 
Oh, lovely balance off the touchline, but eventually the cover tackle comes in. It was Heath Williams again. He's been excellent defensively, but there was a good show of pace by Jody Bardell. And the half-time whistle goes. King Zini 14, Latimer 5. Back in the way in the second half then. Decent game so far, 14 points to five. King Zeely with the first attack of the second half. Calling an attack, they're in their own half, but they can score from anywhere. George Mendham with the flowing locks. Oh, the cross field. Not sure there was a whole lot of planning behind that kick, just to try and relieve some pressure, but very often... You end up inviting it, and that is exactly what they've done here. Latimer picking up the penalty in midfield. And tapping and going and getting things moving. Like the look of this, couple of changes. Straight away, King Zeely winning the penalty at the breakdown, winning it well. Big whipping so pass off that right hand. At midday. And a completely unnecessary backdoor offload. I love it and I want to see more of it. And now they build, looking for the cracks. It's a dog leg defence. And there are numbers. Oh, that's a loose ball, but it's off the toes so they can keep on playing. Really good defence. Really good cover. Jakub Holder for Latimers, keeping the score as it is. Tested at the line out. A little slither of a knock on. A couple of minutes of the second half gone. Still time, but still a two score game. 14 5. As it was at half time. Is there space now for a great offload? Oh, and a sit down. It's much better from King Zeely. Up over halfway for the first time in the half. Little nudge in behind. There's no sweeper for Latimers, but they can get a man back. They're all offside. Oh, yeah. 
Lovely switch inside. Opens up the gap. The offload's good. Needs to go. And eventually, <laughs> strength tells. They were queuing up on the left-hand side, but in a game this tight, you've got to make it easy for the kickers. The conversion will be as easy as it can be from under the poles. And the first seven points of the half. Just getting busier and busier and busier around here. Just about all the schools playing today will have arrived now. Spectators around all of the boards here. There's just constantly a buzz. It will be the Burnsy buzz around the burrito stand later as well. It will be the first of five this week for that man shortly. Other equally as delicious options are available. So now Kings spinning out of tackles, looking for another score, a score that would surely put this one to bed. There's some lovely footwork and balance, and then a fizzing pass. Oh, and he's put that on the toe, surely just had to back himself, but it's going to work out. What a try! What a try! Hindsight is a wonderful thing, and all of a sudden that kick looks like a great decision. Outrageous score. <laughs> and the conversion's good. That's a great take from the restart, and they need a score now. 28 points to five. Kings Ely. They have looked the part, but Latimer have shown they've got something. Oh, what they've got there, there was a forward pass. Well, they're still playing on, though, Latimer. Into the final minute of this one, then. So Kings looking for a fifth try. They've already scored one from the kick. Can they get another? Where's this going to bounce? Oh, it's pinballing around. And Latimer's. Well, it's a bit of a late shot there, but they're going to have to go the length to get no more than a consolation try. Good strength here, though, inside the 22. Well driven on. And then a little snipe. Heath Williams for Kings has been absolutely exceptional in the number nine jersey. Made a lot of minutes, made a lot of tackles, and locked a few doors as well. So 14 minutes gone. Well, the time's up. This will be the last play. And what will it lead to? And this little offer there, Latimer, it's gone backwards. Oh, that's been knocked on. The referee says, play on. So Kings looking to finish with a flourish now. Oh, and they will do, dancing through. Here we go then, Latimer's perhaps went the wrong way. See, that was the right tackling the legs. That was just too well, Kings Ely. 
but he's going to get away. That is brilliant. Heath Williams needs to work on the diary. Uh, the, the diary, the dive either way. He scored a great try. It's 33-5. It's full time. And this Kings Ely team. Look at the business. They made the National Bowl final. Losing to Richard Hale. You can certainly see they have got the potential to do some damage in this vast competition. Heath Williams, back closer to the 22 than the posts, but he's had an excellent game. His team have had an excellent game. And another look at the final try. And the full-time score. Kings Ely, 33. Latimer Upper School, 5. Uh, here we go, Newcastle Underline receiving the kickoff from Queggs Wakefield. Newcastle Underline deciding to play it. Didn't travel 10, but if the side receiving decide to play it, then it is game on. And we're in the 22 of the Newcastle outfit up against Queggs Wakefield, the iconic. Newcastle Yellow hoops jerseys. A bit of boots of ball, a bit of room spotted. Uh, bounce on the floor and into Craig's hands. Clap of the hands, he wants it, doesn't he? And Quake's carry. A little bit more direct. Bit of pulling around from Will Heath in there. He burrows it out and gets it along to Jack Lawrence. Another clap of the hands from Heath. He goes wide. Off to the edge. To Dan Kakane. Back inside. And this is good continuity. Good pressure from Queggs. Who bring in Lawrence again. It's a busy team for Newcastle. Defending stoutly. No chinks in the armour just yet, but a tricky kick through. Oh, wow. Vision, execution, waiting, and then the pace to pounce. Brilliant try from Quake to open the match. All right, well, it's not just me up on, uh, up on commentary. I'm joined by Loughborough University head coach Martin Webdale, who is, well, not just along for the ride for this game, but here during the week 
exhibiting the uh, the side who had a big old surge at the end of the Buck Super Rugby season. Yeah, we did. Shout um, out guys really good after Christmas. Our game and ended up second in the league. So the quarterfinals next week against Leeds Beckett. Yeah, very much the next step on the rugby educational journey of a lot of these young men and women, it should be said, because Loughborough also competing in the highest tier of women's university rugby in the Women's National League. They've had a good season, and for many, stand a good chance of going deep into the playoffs. As we see Newcastle underline looking to just manipulate that Quakes defence, nice offload over the right shoulder and then a weave inside and the handling is really instinctive from Newcastle but here's a bit of brawn and some pretty handy footwork but leaves the precious cargo behind and Jack Lawrence fly hacks through but there was a knock on in there um Martin so tell me why uh, why are you here why why do we see the universities here at the Howdens Rossin Park National School sevens. Oh, from my point of view, it's great to watch some real high quality sevens. Um, school boys, as we were just saying, probably playing their last game for school and really enjoying that, playing with their mates for the last Fred. time. Um, for right. us, from our point of view, it's great to watch Six. hopefully the next generation of talent coming through for us into the university game as well, both today and tomorrow, and then with the under 18 cup Thursday, Friday as well. Really purposeful carry to take Newcastle under Lyme across the halfway threshold and now putting a bit of width on it. I like the way that they're going about their business, Newcastle under Lyme. And this kid is an elusive one. Eventually gets wrapped up in the midfield. But it's quickly recycled. And Newcastle are playing with a real bit of verve. Yet to break into the Quegs 22. This man looks like he's got a good chance. Stead, a bit of fizz, goes out. To the 15 meter channel pop off the floor but it's not sympathetic enough and the advantage played very quickly i like that from the referee jamie nichols dragged to the floor lawrence on the ball uh, maybe a little bit isolated out there but smuggled the ball free just in the nick of time and lawrence adds a bit of danger <laughs> collision in the midfield looks a little high Scrum half not hanging around, uh, but finding himself isolated. Brilliant jackal. End-to-end -end stuff, breathless stuff, Martin. It's great, isn't it? Like, Quake to Wakefield, always a really well-drilled side, very well coached. Um, play at the top tier of English schoolboy rugby, but this Newcastle under Lyme side are really matching them in that physicality battle as well at the moment. Look like he could be in here. I did check his wing mirrors because uh, one came out of the blind spot there just as he was looking to jink his way through. Speaking of jinx, oh, not tackled, not held, and it's brilliant desire. Great footwork, wonderful score. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a real game on our hands here. Newcastle underline with the levelling score. Oh, but they shave the upright. So no conversion to add five apiece. Could be a big kick there just before half time. So what are the qualities you're looking for in players when you're here? Because you're I know that you're sort of promoting the uni, but also you're keeping an eye out on players who you might be able to lure up to the Midlands, right? Yeah, of course. Like I think from our point of view, um, a lot of these schools have really excellent coaching we out, so guys come with a great skill level um, Buck Super Rugby is a big step up in terms of physicality in terms of the ball in play is really really high so it's those guys who are able to execute those skills under fatigue and under pressure and sevens is a great example of that that under pressure under fatigue particularly when it comes to the end of day one those day two games as well when the pressure comes on in the knockouts <laughs> doesn't get much more pressurized at school level as when you hear at really the big dance of school sevens and speaking of dancing a little bit of a fox trot through the first line of defense and brilliant counter ruck and then lawrence hitch kicks his way through offload off the floor keeping the ball alive ed hunter on the ball ed hunter gone in a flash well he's known for his exploits in the other code he plays rugby league 
for Wakefield Trinity and seeing just the kind of skills that the Super League love. Nice conversion to Quakes Wakefield. Close the first half in the lead, leading 12 points to five. What about this? Yeah, there'll be a fair few rugby league guys in this Quake side. Really good skill levels. That catch pass will be absolutely outstanding. Like that offload off the floor and that ability to go again, get that second touch with their work rate will be outstanding. Oh, there you go, half-time huddles. What are, the, what are the sort of the sort of bits of information? What are the gems that you give your players in these moments? Because you know, lads are getting to an age here where they sort of know what they're doing. The same would be said for for Buck Super Rugby. So, what sort of information do you look to impart? I think uh, Mr. Wolfenden there at Quags will be imparting his powers of wisdom. Certainly, I think the key bits at half-time are just to keep things as simple as possible. Just with these situations here, there's a lot of fatigue. So one, maximum two key messages um, that the guys are going to be able to take on board around how you might control the start of the second half, because that's probably the only thing you can control the very kick off at the start of the second half. And in terms of uh, the skills of sevens as well, how transferable are those to 15s? Because it's kind of like the age old battle for some reason that you always seem forced to love one and hate the other. but. I mean, they could definitely coexist, can't they? You've got some wonderful sevens players playing in your 15s programme. Yeah, they certainly can. And I think with the rise of the Buck Super Rugby sevens and the sevens uh, within Bucks as well, we, we see that on the university scale getting even bigger year on year with guys transitioning from our programme into GB sevens um, in their World Series stuff, as long as the European sevens as well in the summer. I think sevens is a great breeding ground. It really puts pressure on your skills and um, it's really great to see. Pressure on skills and a bit of pressure on the scoreboard exerted by Queggs at the close of that first half. But stripped in the tackle as Ethan Evans went to ground. And an early chance for Newcastle who are banging on the door of the 22. Looked like real good. Thieving work on the floor there. But a busy breakdown means it's a penalty to Newcastle. Newcastle taking it to the line. Oh, lovely Goosey! You'll love to see it! And Newcastle profit from the flight of feet. And they're in for their second and a chance to equalise with the conversion. Yeah, they're just staying in the game, aren't they? Just working hard off the ball. That's a fantastic finish. The man there going around the outside. Got closer to the post as well. I'd hope to make the conversion a little bit easier to level it up. Oh, strike through the middle. That's how you do it. And as you said, Newcastle staying in this fight, but really bringing the pace to the line here. Quick tap. Fantastic. This pass here just draws a man, goes on the outside, doesn't even need the fend. Quakes receive, looking to retake the lead. Shot coming in on a big menacing runner there. Hands again looking for the edges. Beautiful timing on the offload. Then one out the back door. Quakes opening up a little here. Oh, that clear out arrived just in the nick of time. But Newcastle, they are nuisances. Good turnover. No advantage. Working really hard at the breakdown in Newcastle, I think. That last passage of play saw the value of that ball back inside. The guys on the inside from Quays getting the second touch and working hard. A really good work rate from Newcastle at the breakdown. Do you remember your days playing here? I, I never had back the in the day. Never had the opportunity to play here. Really? Um, first coached here Five. way back in 2008 uh, when I was working at Framlingham College. Played Wellington College in our first game, and I don't think we touched the ball once. Yeah, your, your heart sinks when you see a team like that in your, <laughs> in your pool, doesn't it? It certainly does. I can imagine there's probably a few names that went further in the game in that group from Wellington College in uh, 2008. But uh, it was a sobering experience, first time out here. But no, never had the opportunity to play here. Yeah, I think the, the likes of Haskell and now um, managing director of Ross and Park, Dom Shabu, were in, uh, in my year, unfortunately. And you can imagine the kind of damage that those guys were doing. 
yeah, of course, like that's the quality, isn't it? The, the beauty of the school game, those guys that come through it and shine at the very top level. But great kick here through. Nicely work, good variety, just challenging that fast press from Newcastle. Speaking of fast, oh, great delay on the pass, but it does give time for the cover to come across. Popped off the floor, just enough time. That's a brilliant turnover, the jackling jaws clamping down. And off go Queggs, they're not hanging around. Oh, loose pass just robs them of a bit of momentum. Ethan Evans does well. He gets set upon as he spins to retrieve that pass. Tired bodies out there. That's a gorgeous line. And a gallop to boot. Pins his ears back. He's a long way from home. The chase is good, but it's not quite there. Jack Bailey. Finds an extra gear when he needed it most. A long bursting break, but maybe a match winning score. That long strike from Jack Bailey certainly came in handy there. There's some tired bodies on this edge from Newcastle under Lyme, and Quake just picked them off. Came out of nowhere, didn't he? What a line. Absolutely outstanding line. Maybe second row in 15s. But long stride in. Works all the way through to the try line. Outstanding work. I bet he's. I bet he's a back row. I bet he's a back row, and he's going to be livid that you put him into the row. Transferable skills, always good to have. That's the uh, kind of thing that keeps number eights up at night. Is the that day when someone says, "Have you thought about playing in the row?" It certainly happens, <laughs> especially at our level. Uh, we got a number of them. Our uh, Spanish international captain, Mario Pichardi, at number eight. He's done a lot of games for us in the second row these past two seasons. So that happens even at that highest level. Well, look at that for leg drive. Knocked backwards by Newcastle, who again are as dogged as they've been through all these many minutes. This has been a battle. Could the battle end here? A try for Queggs would make it really difficult for Newcastle to come back a pick just a drop of the shoulder but still the scramble defense lovely glide off the ball just as it was arriving then the back door boogie Queggs knocking on the door oh the dummy not ball still it's alive miss ball out to the edge and does that seal it for Queggs it may just do Danka Kane in for try number four with a minute left on the clock. Now that ability to keep the ball alive from Quake's absolutely brilliant there. Um, definitely some tired bodies from Newcastle under Lyme and Quake's just being able to keep the ball alive, keep it out of the contact, um, even though a couple of slightly iffy decisions there. Some guys spotting the whitewash, but a really good finish from Danka Kane on the edge. <laughs> we'll still get a bit more time. But that conversion really hammers home that score. I mean, it's, it's been an enthralling game. I've been right into this one. It's been great. Two really evenly matched sides. Be interested to see what they go like for 80 minutes in a 15 a side game. But I think the work rate from both sides has got to be commended. You know, one loss doesn't characterize your trip here to the school sevens you can come back and there's quality throughout all of these groups that can give you a drink at second chance saloon but that is one of the best tries of the match fractured field precise hands and quake's putting an exclamation mark at the end of this victory right at the death yeah, and as you were saying, that points difference bit could come into account at the end of the group as well. So really important to get every try on the board you possibly can, both sides of it. This will be the final action. A match that really could have gone either way. But ultimately, with another successful kick, it goes the way of Queggs by quite a handsome margin.
Final score, Newcastle under Lyme 12, Quegg's Wakefield 33. We're going to take a break now, but uh, myself and Martin, will you be back? Will you be back for the next game? Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? We'll be back in just a moment. The action coming thick and fast here, and we've got Dame Allen School from not too far away from Newcastle Underline, who we've just enjoyed on the stream in the black, red, and yellow hoops of well, a very famous club from round near these parts, very similar to Richmond, and they're up against. Hong Kong Sports hey, mind, 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 mind. Institute. So a bit of international flavour back on RE1, having enjoyed the skills of schools from Belgium already here, as well as those from Jersey and Guernsey and the Hong Kong Institute boys look like they are here to play. Weaving through the Dame Allen's defence, but getting a bit, a little bit confused and crossing for a penalty. Nice footwork, beautiful footwork, in fact. The Dame Allen's captain there, Tom Cattery. Jack Bowden in at first receiver. Just inviting the defence to come on there. And, well, big crunching hit comes from behind, having been dismissed initially. Holding on on the floor. And, but if you're playing rugby in Hong Kong, you got sevens in the DNA, haven't you? One of the greatest, if not the greatest, sevens competition in the world. And both their men and women trying to make it to the HSBC sevens at the moment internationally. Good footwork, nice composure. This guy's obviously a key ball player. But Dame Allens, yes, bringing the biff. Ollie Foster. It's a contrast of styles, isn't it? The Hong Kong side has certainly come to move the ball and Dame Allens have come to bring the physicality. It'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. Yeah, Dame Allens looking to finish the season on a high for the, the upper sixth levers. Very promising season they've had. Crouch! Just got pipped by Durham. And the school's vars. Balls out. Hong Kong sevens in a couple of weeks as well. Yep, if if anyone's uh, listening, I've still yet to have a gig at the Hong Kong sevens and I'll take it. But at the moment, it's Harry Ryder. He's taking the first try of the match. He's being pursued, but he'll get there safe and sound. Opening score for Dame Allen's a strike down the left edge. Surely be a few viewers in Hong Kong at the moment. Always, always, they absolutely love their sevens. Big year as well. The last, the last sevens at the famous old stadium before they moved to a brand new glitzy shiny one. 
colleagues have entered. Is that right? There's a, Church, certainly got a huge the history of sevens there, isn't it, in terms of Victoria quality on, on and certainly off the pitch as well in that South Stand. The Herodian versus St Peter's School on RE4. King Alfred's Academy versus Astrid School on RE5. Iskall at Diffrin Ammon versus Dollar Academy on RE6. I think Dame Allen's, who's saying, being tipped by Durham. Durham, one of the fin uh, semi-finalists in the under-18 Vars competition as well. And 15 aside, so they've had a decent season, Dame Allen's. Just a little bit of an over-chase and an opportunity to sort of flex the muscles through the first tackles across the 10-metre line. And it's the Hong Kong. Been a bit of wit, then using the feet. Blast of pace and really nice support play. The freshness to keep the ball off the ground. Switch being offered, not taken, but stripped in the tackle. Outstanding work. Some good work in defence from the Hong Kong side as well after the turnover, winning that penalty back. Take a step. Take a step. Luke Bannon gets himself on the ball. Here's Matthew Henderson. Bit of a skip from David McMurtry. Oh, my goodness. Filthy feet. Oh, the fist ball as well. If only it could have been held. Still, Hong Kong come. Hong Kong China Dragons. The Dame Allens have scampered free again. They've got to watch out here. The travelling side. Back into the breakdown, back winning ball. And back looking for room on the edge. Dropped on the toe. Just a bit of a, a change up from Fritz Mann. He slides in a little bit recklessly. Probably like something you see on a Sunday League football game on that. You. Changing angles in the channel. Interference. You changed angles, you stepped into it. Dame Allen called back. Eagle eyed referee. Hong Kong China Dragons still looking to break through the line, but Dame Allen's resolute. Epic defence. They give away a penalty. And they get called back because there's a bit of collateral damage down there. A couple of penalties in a row in defence there. The ref might be having a look at a yellow card in a second. But some really good continuity from the Hong Kong China Dragons in terms of their ball movements being really good. Water on! Well, our apologies for, for not having any names. We've only just got the team sheet, so good to be able to give the Dragons a bit of a shout out now. And that man in the middle, number seven, David McMurtry, junior Olympic silver medalist in judo. So. Not someone to be trifled with in the breakdown either. There's some skills on the ball as well. So uh, complete all-round player so far. One to watch, certainly. It was actually, it wasn't your hands, it was the whole forearm. Yeah, the whole forearm on the ground. So, a <laughs> bit, bit of clarity about the rules of jackaling as well. Can't put your hands beyond the ball. When you go for it, you have to be precise. You have to land on the ball. You have to support your body weight, you can't have your hands, or in this case, your forearms, go beyond the ball. All about that accuracy, especially in sevens, when those skills are exposed in that one-on-one -on -one situation as well, so probably slightly easy for the referee to see as well. Do you know what I really like about sevens? And like, well, as, as you know, I'm a sevens man commentating on the HSBC sevens, but it's the speed of the decision-making with the whistle. I find it so refreshing because I think you know everyone could agree that there is an awful lot of TMO action these days in the 15 a side game, whereas in sevens, blast of the whistle, and there's no time to complain because the team the team are off, and I think it's a real like, sort of refreshing zip to them at the game. It's brilliant. It keeps the speed of the game really high, doesn't it? And fair play to these referees, refereeing multiple games across the week. They do an absolutely outstanding job. Luke Bannon, the captain, looking to carry his team across the line, and he does so. Good, fi good physicality to get across the line there from Luke. Well, the physicality, plain to see there. A breeze block of a boy. And the conversion added. And still time in this first half. Pretty simple. Back the big man. And he'll score your tries. Hey, Allen, they'll be disappointed with that, having defended so well to that point. 
Certainly will be. Just a minute to go before half time. This kickoff here is vital. Who can get the last score before half time? Liam Jordan drops one in, and it's returned by Dame Allen. Here comes Ollie Foster. Sort of really got the match going with a big shot early. Shot out of the line. A dog leg exploited. Dame Allen siding through the Hong Kong Dragons. And in for a score right on the cusp of half time. Jack Bowden outside centre in 15s. And a devastating try scorer here in sevens today in game one. Now his teachers put these great defensively. We see both sides of the ball there. Great in attack as well. Very detailed team sheet from Dame Allens. Absolutely outstanding. I can imagine probably that's what you want from all the teams coming through. Correct, correct. Nice little plug there. Last play. And you can see just why Dame Allens had such a successful 15 season. Fabulous match this. Still in the first half. Still time to play. Still time to enjoy the footwork. Of that man in the middle who's really caught the eye, McMurtry. Backwards. Captain spills, but he spills backwards. Tackle there. Off the floor, of course it is. Really looking to avoid contact. Bannon, though, <laughs> when he goes into contact, he usually comes off the winner. Oh, ankle breakers now being brought in from Tanner Holland. How good is that breakdown work, though? That is full time, guys. Up. Up. Well, <laughs> I think everyone's lungs appreciating the decision there from Tom Catterick just to pump it out after that penalty. It brings a breathless first half to a conclusion. Dame Allen's have the edge, leading 14 points to seven. Yeah, I think this uh, Hong Kong side has certainly come to play. Conditions slightly underfoot might be against them today, but to be fair, the pitches are in a really, really good shape compared for the week we've had of rain and over this, probably this last month or so, really. So fair play to the ground staff to get this in an absolutely brilliant condition. How how good? I'm blown away. I don't know. I don't know what sort of pack they made with the devil to to keep this pitch pristine, but it's actually kind of the, almost the best I've ever seen it on day one. It's great, isn't it? And all the outside pitches as well. Um, fair play to the guys at Roslyn Park in terms of the amount of work, the dedication they've done to set the site up brilliantly like this, ready for day one. Now, I'm here every year, so I'm obviously going to be a bit of a cheerleader for it. But how impressive is the, the event as a whole? Obviously, our focus is here on RE1 throughout the week, and you get some of the, well, you get the biggest games, you get all the finals here. But as an entirety, 27 pitches pumping all week with multiple age groups, more female representation than ever before, more international sides, Hong Kong, China, a case in point. It's just, it's like nothing else. Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. It's one of those weeks in the calendar that you highlight every year. And it's just great to go around seeing all the games. It brings the beauty of rugby alive, just the, the love, the enjoyment these guys show um, and the dedication as well to their school, to their mates, game in, game out, even on those back as the pitches. Um, it's so impressive in terms of this as a whole tournament. We've brought some new staff this year, seeing this for the first time, and they've been blown away. Captain. Yeah, we've got we've got one of your youngsters helping us out here as well on the media front as well. So nice of the tournament to offer opportunities to to young people in the game off the pitch as well. So that tackle in the air, penalty to Dame Allen, who are looking to use it, looking to strike. Nice ball inside, supporting line, and just by a handful of jersey and the final pass couldn't be pouched. Finley Forrest, a little bit too much asked of his handling skills there from the offload from Bowden. That yeah, probably shows the importance of just keeping on working as well from that Hong Kong China side, just forcing that final mistake as well from Dame Allen's that work rate to get back onto the ball as well. Really, really impressive. And the other bit around that, like you were saying, just the whole bit around the media, the marketing, multiple opportunities for, for staff, for, for players, for people to get involved as well. It's brilliant. Set.
lot of pressure on the half back there and the pass really has to be flung out testament Good to afternoon. dame mm -hmm. allen's well, harrying and hassling well, there dragons well, well they're on the try line give it to the captain though he makes the meters very very clear comes from the referee he's been really good so far hasn't he his communication has been spot on really impressive uh, Dave Allen's probably had an opportunity to pin the Hong Kong side back then but they've managed to get themselves out with this penalty and a really impressive kick to touch as well on halfway yeah for those who aren't watching a huge amount of sevens at the moment you might think kick to touch you know, isn't that against the the laws, the morality of sevens, but if you watch the top level increasingly, sides using set piece as a launch pad, you obviously suck in a big group of players, so it gives more freedom, more room out there for the backline division, and it's a real examination of your skills defensively. Yeah, managed to secure that line out. Now they got the opportunity to test that, test the width on the edge there. Oh, jinking footwork all the way through the middle and one more to boot little faint drop of the shoulders liam jordan gets brought down breakdown work has been supreme from dame allen today and this guy's not being bad either bowden linking up with harry Ryder. he runs out of room time behind mark no time to pause in a late tackle there after the ball had gone but we're not fussed with that, as McMurtry has taken it on. Still, one score in this match. It's been great today, hasn't it, so far? The game's been really tight, really well contested so far. Here we go, McMurtry gets us back underway. Holland, who showed us those silky feet earlier, ships it on. And then the captain, the captain, the captain again, bullocking into the 22 and dancing inside and cruising to the try line under the sticks. What a moment from Luke Baden. And that's his second. His first was from a couple of metres out. That second one, 40 metre run. Absolutely outstanding work from Luke. Big pressure on young Liam Jordan's shoulders here. It's always a nerve wracking one from behind the uprights. And no nerve shown from Jordan. And let's have a look at this barnstormer from Bannon. Gets the big fend out. And it's all about work rate and want. Great work, there was no stopping him was there from that five yards out. God, there wasn't a lot on was there. Absolutely outstanding. Now, this kickoff becomes huge in terms of who scores next, who can retain the ball, and look to put pressure on the opposition. Well, they'll do it without Bannon because he's gone to take a justifiable breather after that burst. So the captain off the field and a kickoff error, giving possession to Dame Allens. No sweeper from the Hong Kong side, and they've identified that with a little chip through. Really good cover. ID, really good ID. Tanner Holland getting ragdolled around. Upside again, number 14. Well, the discipline for Dame Allen needs to improve. Boot to ball, advantage gone. Bit of a pursuit. Oh, and it's a wonderful pick up and turn. And then he hits the Jets. Will Wells with a wonder score from his own 22 might just steal this match. That's one for his highlight reel there for Will. Brilliant work back on the kick receipt. And then, as you say, turned on the afterburners and he was gone. God, the, the coolness of head and presence of mind to feel the Hong Kong Dragon footsteps thundering behind him. He collected, he turned, and then he was gone. No extras added, though. I think I just heard the referee say 90 seconds left, so without those extras, it's a one-score game. Can Hong Kong get back in it and keep the conversion, potentially? Slowed down and then gave it a bit of a weave as well. That in-out finish, just the wrong step, the wrong foot, the defender. 
then get somewhere near the post. Now this, this kick-off here, who wins this and controls the ball is huge. It would be remiss of me having you here as head coach of Loughborough University. It's not mention that you're going to be coming to the Rosslyn Park Uni Sevens on the 7th of June, which is a new competition added to the Rosslyn Park National Sevens menu. Release, Brad. Ten of the best universities in the country taking the game of sevens to the capital on a one day and night competition. Unlucky. Climaxing under the floodlights, you're going to be there. It's going to be super exciting. Um, the ability to play everyone in a single day and as you say, in an exciting venue at Roslyn Park. Most of our players will have played in this tournament as under 16s, under 18s and be able to carry that on into their university days is brilliant. And as you say, top 10 universities in the country playing there all on that one day will be a fantastic spectacle. Hopefully the sun will shine and it'll be a great day for all. Yeah, the continuation Crouch. of the National School Sevens journey, Five. the return to Roslyn. Set. That'll be great and it'll be the inaugural Set. event, I'm sure will be a huge success and we'll build on it in the future. I think I heard the referee say last play here, so Hong Kong side have got to throw caution to the wind. They throw caution into the wind, but they also throw the ball into the hands, bouncing to Ruben Moss. Ball squirts out, not forward. Too high, Red, too high. On your line. High tackle. I wonder, did Dave Allen know Don't that touch. the game's up? Don't All they touch. need to do is get it off the field. But they're going to finish with a flourish, are they? Denied. Centimetres from the line. Number 12. More Go infringements from the desperate Hong Kong China Dragons. And finally, finally, the defence is breached. An absolutely breathless encounter brought to a dramatic conclusion by Dame Allens. Wow. You're the antagonist. Back away. Brilliant from Dave Allen in terms of that finish and a really good performance from both sides. That Hong Kong side can certainly hold their heads up high, but Dave Allen's probably that extra little bit of physicality at the end that was really told. Wow, a thriller on RE1, and it's Dame Allen's school who triumph in a fabulous match against Hong Kong China Dragons. 26-14, the final at the burrowing Ollie Foster reaching for the line and sealing victory for the lads from the north. Now, well played to the northern guys from Dame Allen's, absolutely brilliant. Really good to see them after a successful 15 season, as you said, performing on this seventh stage as well. Right, Webby, you're going to be back later in the week with Loughborough, so we'll be uh, asking you to join us again. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure, always a pleasure. We'll be back very, very shortly with more action from RE1. Ipswich in the blue against Sandbach in the red and green hoops the next game here on RE1. For those of you joining us either from the east or the northwest, great to have you company for this one. It's the under 18s Vars. But some brilliant games, some international flavour. But now two English teams going head to head. All teams have had a real nightmare with the lineouts at the moment, and the referees have been super hot on it as well. Whoa. Not straight, you're in trouble. Bye. And with that in mind, we have our first Set. scrum of the day following 
our first line out and it is out from Ipswich first attack for them it's a loose pass a little loosen up but it does create some space around the outside and some <laughs> gas is covered and there's a foot out in touch so let's give you a few results from RE1 today in the National Sevens under 18 boys Vars Haleybury beat Boitsford in Group A to kick things off then Herodian beat Victoria 26-0 St Paul's against Elizabeth College in fact we've had a few nils today College Cigar also nilled as were Leighton Park School that was our first 50 pointer of the day and Kings Ely looked very strong in beating Latimer Queggs Wakefield beat Newcastle under Lyme we just saw Dame Allens defeat the Hong Kong Sports Institute. Take us to this Group I. The four teams in Group I, as well as Ipswich and Sandbatch. We've got Shiplake and Kings Grantham as well. Sandbatch already one victory over Shiplake College. 22-14, a tight game and a good victory. Chance now for Sandbatch from the tap penalty. James Verbicast wearing number 13, taking charge and a little shimmy and an offload good. It's off a hand, but it's gone backwards. And Spike Street, which to be honest, sounds like the name of a cartoon character. Oh, that is a lovely nudge and a gather from James Verbicast. Verbicast, oh, he needs to look forwards, not backwards, but the offload's good. Out of the back door. Well, he nearly ran himself into the ground there. James Verbicus could have scored the try of the day. Instead, it is fly hack forward, and these Sam Batchians chase back through Sam Bromley. 80 metres backwards, now 20 metres forwards. That's a lung burner for the big number eight, part of the Sail Sharks under 17s academy. They've got representation here, actually, a new relationship with Manchester Metropolitan University. And it's a good confident start by Sam Batch. Ipswich School. Defensively sound, though. And that is James Verbicas. Another Sail Sharks under, eight, uh, under 17 into touch. Ah, if there's one thing you can guarantee here at the Roslyn Park National School Sevens, it's that somebody is going to buy an oversized Ram rugby ball and I've just seen my first of the day. Here come Ipswich then, that is a big strong carry by Rowan Burke, he gets the fend and the offload away. The time for Sam Batch to organise themselves in defence. And Makers finds Burke again, it's all narrow on the right hand side for Ipswich School, nobody on the left, they might not need them because now they're into the 22. A little shimmy, a little go, and an ankle tap stops Harry Goxwell. An Ipswich patiently build. Roll 11. As close as they've been. Our oh, Ipswich. Oh, and then winning the collision and scoring the try. Danny Mayers for Ipswich School. Who needs space when you've got brute force? First try of the game for Ipswich after doing some good defending. Sam Batch have had the majority of the ball. But it's all about making it count now. Tough conversion. Henry Newham. And it is good. Ipswich 7, Sam Batch 0. One minute of the half remaining, says the referee. Oh, Ipswich have done really well to gather that, and now they can launch another assault on the Sandbatch 22. Again, so strong in the carry. This time, Dan North taking defenders with him. And that additional physicality, that additional size that Ipswich have got. 
paying dividends. Dan North. Excellent finish. There will be time to restart, says the referee. Another good conversion. Two good strikes from Henry Newham. Maximum extras added. Yeah, if you can claim the restart, makes a huge difference in the grand scheme of things. From then on, it was clinical, wasn't it? One pass, two pass. Dan North takes the pass of least, path of least resistance. Sandbach, after a bite start, find themselves two scores down. Good chase, good tackle. Henry Goxwell making it. Now Sandbach. Right edge to left edge and getting away. It is a long sprint. Still 25, 22, 20, 15 metres to go. Brilliant finish. Excellent try. All of his own doing. Hayden Jenkins. Phenomenally strong young man. World record holder in the deadlift for his age. And he has put that power into practice. Look how much work he has to do here. Gets the ball in his own 22. And just backs himself, explodes. And it was at this point here that the chase was given up. And Sandbach, just before half time, make a game of it. Conversion successful. And that halves the arrears. A quick break. It's Ipswich School 14, Sandbach School 7. So we swap in, Sandbach finishing strongly in that first half. Got a good few Cheshire under 18s players. Will Bobby, Jack Busby, and Will Burnham, who gets this second half underway, but he's kicked that one out on the floor. That is a free gift of territory and possession for Ipswich. Cigar Not the start the they needed, and they tap four. and they go, and it's Henry Newman e. who gets us restarted. That's a nice little Collie switch up there to, to keep the ball four. in play, and that creates the space. A missed and tackle, boy, a powerful fend, and Ben Nevison e. gets the first try of the second e. half for Ipswich. Well, here we go, Ipswich back on the front foot again, oh, but the offload. No good. And again, they're feeding the speed in this pint-sized powerhouse over on the flank for Sambach. Now searching for space in the middle. Looking for the turnover here, but can't quite make it count. Ipswich, but they do have a 21 points to seven lead. Three converted tries. Just the one in the second half. Sandbach looking to burst the line, and they do, and they are away. Will Bernard 
the Cheshire under 18. It's a second impressive try for this Sambach outfit. <whistles> and a very convertible one, too. This to make it a one score game. Very, very nicely done. This is a good contest. Good patience in the 22, just to wait. For that gap to appear. Then when it does appear, take full advantage. Sambach getting us back underway. A little bit too deep to be contestable. So they're inviting Ipswich on and then missing a tackle. And Ipswich could strike straight back. Big chase coming on. The sweepers there. The best they can hope for is to force the man wide. And Billy Reid strikes straight back for Ipswich. One missed tackle and you are in deep trouble. It is a two score game once more. It's the toughest conversion of the match though. And if it's missed, it certainly keeps things interesting. Decent strike. Decent result. Great kick. Henry Newman. Boy can strike a ball. And this man can finish a try. Billy Reid. Aidan Jenkins missed the tackle. And then a little check over the shoulder. Fell into it. Hip switch. Into the 22 again, oh, it's an excellent tackle. And there is that deadlifter again, Hayden Jenkins, punching above his weight. And the offload goes to ground. Still just over two minutes to go, but that penalty isn't going to help Sam Batch's cause. Zip switch, though. You pushed him into that, no. Box left. On the 22, looking for the try that would well and truly it's put this one to bed. Full diving catch. Another excellent tackle. This time it's Adam Cunningham. He is unorthodox but effective. Strong, quick young man. At Ipswich moving the ball so fluidly. Everyone comfortable catching, passing, attacking. But touchline never loses a tackle. Sambach need a good line out, but it's overthrown. It's a 50 50. And it comes back the way of the Cheshireman. And then immediately the Jackal, the turnover, the tap, the go, the try. And Caleb Cripps seals it for Ipswich. That makes it 33 14 with 30 seconds to go. That could and perhaps should be the last play. It's been. Perhaps a closer contest than the scoreline suggests here, but Ipswich good for the victory. And we will have time to restart. Billy Reid successful with the conversion. They've got two kicking options. Last play, lads. <laughs> Last play of the day. I say the day, I mean the match. There's so much more rugby to come today. Little nudge in behind, Sambach going for glory towards the end, but there is no glory to be had. And that knock-on will bring the curtain down on this one. Ipswich 
worthy winners. Five converted tries, five excellent tries as well. They look a strong team, as they so often are in the Vars competition. They have beaten Sandbach 35-14. We are underway, Christ College Brecon against Durham Cathedral School. And it is nil-nil. Sorry, Durham, you don't get that 14-point head start. Christ College Brecon in the green and gold. They host a fantastic sevens tournament of their own in the beautiful Beacons, South Wales or Mid Wales, depending on who you ask. And they are away here, a clean pair of heels shown by Reese Pearson, the first seven captain. And what a start. Thumbs up all round, mainly from the person stood next to me. Ellie, welcome. Thank you for having me. Is this your commentary debut? It is. OK, great um, news. So what did you make of that? Oh, it was a great bit of play. Broke the line. So, speed. so you've got an association with, with Christ College, is that correct? Yes, so I work for a company, Holroyd Howe, and we are a catering company. OK. Catering for schools, and, uh, yeah, Christ College is one of them. Lovely. Who else as, as part of the, uh, the Rosin Park National School 7s? Well, we've got also, I think we've got Stephen Perth, who are up next, I believe. Um, we've got Kings from Maxfield, Stowe. Oh, hang on, hold the fort because Durham are right back in this. What a phenomenal take up above the head. 90 seconds gone, two superb tries, and we have got a game on our hands. It's end to end stuff. Well, unfortunately, I don't get to tell you who scored that because Durham haven't filled in a team sheet and I forgot my crystal ball. And it's a shame because that is a superb try and that young man deserves naming. It is Christ College 7, Cathedral Durham 7. Two minutes gone. What a game. It's brilliant. And for my uh, commentary debut, you couldn't have picked a better one, really. Well, I'll expect the in-depth analysis as we take a look at this replay. Hearing at the right-hand side. So let's talk. Let's talk serious stuff then. So if you're doing, uh, if you're doing catering for these young men and women mm -hmm. in a tournament like this, I mean they take some feeding, right? It's all about fuel, all about energy. Um, so we've got our our marquee. Well, it's filled with uh, sports performance snacks, high carbohydrate, high protein. Um, we've got our hydration station as well. Yet you didn't bring any of them with you. For me right here, starving, putting in the graph, me and Joe Burns and 
no high protein. That is a rookie mistake on yes, my part. Yes, I'm it so is. sorry. So here come Darren then. Little switch inside. That is a lovely line. And from 7 0 down, they go 12 7 up. <laughs> and it looks like that early Christ College try has really woken the beast. I think Christ College might need extra feeding <laughs> next time round. So we have live commentary cam that I think we should switch to here. So if you look at this, uh, if you look at this camera here, we are live. And if I duck out the way like this, we can see the second camera <laughs> because Ellie has brought her own filming crew with her. So goodness knows, perhaps the latest Netflix or other streaming platform documentary <laughs> is being made about the relationship between the catering and the rugby. But we have got quite the game on our hands here. Wherever you're watching around the world, great to have you company. We're back underway. Cathedral Durham leading Christ College by 14 points to seven. Another dummy. This is a real physical encounter. Two good teams, actually. This under-18 Vars competition is very, very competitive. Just struggling at the moment to get out of their own 22, but they're... Uh, Sakal, release! Steadily improving school, Christ College. Many years ago, had a strong rugby program and a, a derby against Landovery College, the famous Welsh rugby school up the road. That was abandoned for many years, but Christ College started to take the rugby a bit more seriously. And as a result, that derby is back in the Welsh rugby calendar. Talk to me more about these snacks, then. So we've got um, we've got some granola bars, we've got oh, some yeah. banana bread. Really? Uh, we've got a chef making energy balls as we speak. Um, What's in an energy ball, please? <laughs> oh, Durham going for try number three. They're over for try number three. That one, blunt and brutal from short range. As we approach five minutes, Christ College ringing the changes because Cathedral Durham. 19 7 to the good pretty straightforward conversion to come as well yeah what's in an energy ball yeah, please back to the ball so we've got uh, some oats we've got dried fruit seeds a little bit of cocoa oh um yeah just to give that quick hit of energy sounds great where do i sign up <laughs> i'll bring them next time please I, again, do i'm so sorry no no don't apologize don't apologize i'll come see you afterwards yeah it is well what, what is the time lunch it is time really it is lunch time correct it is correct. A minute and a half of the first half remaining. Durham have got taken the lead. Yeah, they have. They have been very impressive since falling behind to that early try. Our halftime chat's going to be fascinating. I've got some questions for you. I can't wait to hear them. Not back by white. Oh, they turned it over again, Cathedral Durham, and they are looking very dangerous every time they're on the ball. Sharp attack at the right-hand side to now create some space on the left. Really good defensive read. Try and kill that ball. And not supporting the body weight, hands on the floor for Cathedral Durham. I mean, just before half-time, Christ College Brecon got one more attack oh. oh the offload just goes forward and will that take us through to half time little check of the referee's watch good kit actually so it's the first time we've got the ref mic at the national school sevens <laughs> here on pitch re1 and it's fascinating hearing the different approaches so this referee very measured very polite we've had a few that, that sound really angry oh really <laughs> It's a scrum! Adding fuel to the fire. Oh, Christ College have turned that over and won the penalty. So we will have time for one more attack before we find out more about the catering industry in rugby in this great tournament. OK. Go on. Lovely oh. straighten up and the offload as well. The tap tackle is missed. It's Reese Pearson in for his second try. He has bookended the first half with scores under the sticks. And now has the conversion to make it a seven-point game at half-time. Brilliant contest, Christ College 14, Cathedral Durham 21. 
And I want to get to the bottom of this now. So you're with Horroyd Howe, isn't it? Is, yes. the, is the company. And you said you've got a few schools. So you've got Christ College in Brecon, you've got King's in Macclesfield. That is a hell of a journey for lunchtime. So there must be quite a lot of you. There's thousands of us. What? Thousands. Not here, but they are working hard in the schools across okay. the country. So this this week for you then, it's more a, a sort of presence thing. Come yes. and say hello to, to all the people that know you, maybe meet some people that don't know you exactly. and go from there. It's just showcasing what we do. So obviously we've got food that's available for everyone. So all of the athletes can come down, have some of our snacks, but we also have a little VIP area. Do you? We well, do. OK, is there a difference in the cuisine available to those in the VIP area, to those who just that rock everyone up? Everyone is gets the same exceptional experience okay. in our marquee. All right. Um, and you're you're just uh, I, I'm going to point over there. That means absolutely nothing to you at home. But uh, so we're on pitch RE one. To our left is pitch RE two. And is yours? Ours is the one with the pink flags. Oh yeah. You can't miss it. No, you genuinely can't miss it. If you're here, you can't miss it. So if you do pop down uh, later in the week or later on today, it always amazes me. There's quite a few people who sort of live in. I don't know, Richmond or Kew mm. or literally down the road and they watch at home instead of coming down. We love having you company on the live stream, but we love having you down here as well. And you'd love to say hello to them too, I'd love to, you? yeah. And anyone who um, is partner of our, one of our schools, a parent, um, they are welcome to come to our VIP area, get a free coffee, <laughs> match tea experience. I love this VIP area. I can't <laughs> wait. I'm just, I'm just waiting to pop along and see like a velvet rope and a bouncer. Absolutely, check it's in the red carpet experience. Oh, very good. Right then, we've got a, a game of rugby here, and it's a good game of rugby too. Cathedral Durham in the green and white hoops, Rock! kicking off in the second half Ooh. and receiving the kickoff too. That is a massive momentum shifter, particularly with the Welshman scoring just before half time. The next try in this game. So important. And that is a really strong carry. No hands, no hands. Well, the counter up manages to slow the ball down. It comes back the way of the men from the north and they burst into the 22. Now look at the space at the left hand Ooh. side. Going down, going down. A little bit right, slippery out there. And I think this pitch is going to see a tremendous amount of rugby over the next week and some tremendous tries. That isn't one of them. Knocked on one way. Now feed the speed. Oh, it's a step inside. Now outside. Now the afterburners are on. And he just hits the brakes. Perhaps the smart thing to do. Keep going there, I would. Oh, would you? Yeah. Fair play. Well, oh, that's gone backwards. Ooh, that looks high. Penalty advantage coming. Thinking about the kick. The kick's charged down. Number 11. Number 11. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Number 11. I think we might see a yellow card here. Be very careful. No, final warning. If you're going that sort of height, I'll go upwards. It's got to come downwards. Do you understand? Oh, there's yeah. some yeah. upper six here who've uh, like found the bar. Saint I hope they're up a six. St. Patrick's Day was yesterday, lads. <laughs> Did you do anything for St. Patrick's Day? Um, no, I was setting up here. Oh, of course. Yeah. Talk to us through the setup then. Like, what have you, what have you had to do to prepare for the event? Because you're here for the week, right? We're here for the week. Um, so we've got smoothie bikes. Um, oh, all set up. I've seen that. Yeah. How long does it take your your average person to? Well, create a smoothie, basically. To be honest, these people aren't the average okay. people. <laughs> okay. Strength-wise, it takes them seconds. Really? Yeah. So what kind of stuff have they been chucking in? Uh, so we've got bananas, berries, you've got some kale, some Ooh. spinach, um, really packing the, the nutrients in there. So just to, just to clear up uh, for those of you wondering what that is, it is a, a blender attached to a bike. So as you pedal, the blades of the blender spin and you can create whatever it is you wish to create and what Christ College wish to create is a try and the chance to equalise the game. Picked up off the toes, it's touched down wide by Ollie Morgan and the Cardiff under 16 gets Christ College Brecon's third try. It's a tough conversion to come but it's a conversion to tie the game. Exciting stuff. Oh. This is a great game. Tell you what, with those kind of afterburners, 
he'd make himself a berry smoothie in no time. <laughs> Massive kick, decent strike. Great result, what a game, 21-21. Let's have another look at this try then. Very often, we don't see the kick work, but it's Reese Pearson, the captain. Oh. Creating that, he's been at the heart of everything, so he scored two. An assisted one. And this game very much in the balance. Slow ball for Cathedral Durham. They had three unanswered tries in the first half. They're staring down the barrel of two unanswered tries now. Still bags of time in this game. Both teams have got to be weary of these high tackles. It's that extra little bit of strength and ballast working for Cathedral Durham. Oh, that was high. Up around the neck. Just there. Seeing people walking past with their lunch that doesn't look like it comes from you. Is there like, is there catering wars? Are you like looking at other people's? A little, a little bit. Okay. See, uh, oh, look at this gas off! Oh, what a cover! By number 13, Reese Conker. Now, I am going to guess that Reese Conker is a brother or cousin of Owen Conker who has been playing the Wales under-20s in the under-26 nations. He missed the last couple of games with a concussion, but he was a Christ College boy, now playing at Ebu Vale. A second row, back row. And that's a bad error. So anyway, going back to, uh, going back to catering wars, who do you hate? Yes. Well, I've got eyes on the Yorkie pudding hog roast Have over you? there. Their uh, tough competition. Oh, the cross field <laughs> kick to create some space and turnover opportunity now. Composure required, and that is brilliantly done by the young man from Durham. And now there is space if you can get it there. The first oh. bend is good. Now the chase back, the offload, and the chance for Cathedral Durham. Oh, it's been knocked on. So, Yorkie hog roast then, is that something you tuck into or something that you turn your nose up as a, as a connoisseur? I, I mean, I would ha happily have on a Sunday, but straight after a rugby game or just before, um, I'm not sure it would sit too well. Fair point well made. So our dear friend and commentary colleague Joe Burns, he's a he's a big fan of the burritos. I actually so last year we were also oh, fans of burritos. Set. He is if you are what you eat, then he he's is wrapped in a tortilla by the end of the week. <laughs> Here's a snipe from Ollie Jones. Oh, Ollie Jones team. to give Christ College the lead for the second time. Brilliant work from the base of the scrum. Up the blind side he goes. 90 seconds to go, Christ College into the lead for the second time. First it was 7-0, now it's 26-21. And this conversion, absolutely massive. Just over a minute left on our clock, it is pretty tight in with the referee's watch, but just a reminder, it's not totally linked in. Oh, oh he's hit the beans on toast. <laughs> That is absolutely huge, because now a converted try can win it for Cathedral Durham. The drama continues, but look at this from the base. Ollie Jones. He's the Welsh Under-18 Mounted Games champion. What's involved in the Mounted Games? I'll let you decide. <laughs> Last chance to dance for Cathedral Durham in this epic game. We've had some great tries, but not many great contests here on RE1 so far. This has certainly been one of those. Oh. And if Durham do score, it's so important for Christ College to keep them wide and make the conversion as tough as possible. Into the final few seconds. Big clear out. And Christ College win the penalty. You're out of the game, you're out of the game. 
ball played on the floor by Cathedral Durham, and that should be the end of the game. Booted towards the river, and it's a comeback victory for Christ College Breck, and they have defeated Cathedral Durham in what has arguably been the game of the day on pitch RE1. The full-time score, 26-21. I'm so close. I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. We go again, Stephen Purse against Warminster. The action continues. In fact, it never stops. We're in Group P. Stephen Purse against Warminster. Stephen Purse having a tough opener against St Edward's Oxford. That finished 59-0. It's not going to get any easier here against Warminster, who are already ready to go. There is acres of space here on the right-hand side. It is fast, it is furious, it is five points. And under the poles they go. Just, uh, just stood to my right-hand side. He's got a smile on his face, which means he must have already had his lunch. Burnsy. Did you have a burrito? Yeah. I'm a seasoned campaigner, and I know better than anyone that you don't take it at this time of the day. Yeah, it you is stay... early, isn't it? Yeah. I'm a 2.30 man. That's you got to stagger the day when it comes to enjoying the food court. You've been on an adventure, though. Who have you seen? Where have you been? Just cruising around, seeing the great and the good here at the Howden Rossenpot National School Sevens. Jason Robinson yes. is here. He is at the Howden tent where I've got a cracking coffee. Yeah, I mean, it is great to have them on board. And of course, they're looking to build a legacy in rugby and a great barista really helps with that. So that he does with uh, an Italian women's rugby player as well on the tools there. So. It's a, a very, very rugby feel everywhere you go. I'm just going to bring the referee um, down in my ears because he can blow the whistle, can't he? Crikey, that is loud. Warminster looking for try number two. Oh, and they're not going to be looking for long. That is a lovely cruise around the outside. And in their first game of the tournament, they mean business. It's 12-0. What's your take on the behind the sticks conversions, Burnsy? How far away from the poles do you need to be before you switch sides? I think you're looking at a threshold of five metres either yeah. side of one of the poles. Otherwise, the angle is getting a little bit acute. Driven straight into the Edwin Doran tent. How long is that going to take to come back? That, that's often a bustling hub, isn't it? There's always something going on in there. 
I think they do free bacon sandwiches for teachers. I think that that's. I think that's, that, I think that's why. And obviously, riveting conversation as well. But I think the bacon sandwiches play a pretty big role. Yeah, we've done the full food tour. We just had Ellie from Holroyd Howe on, on co-commentary, and I found out all about energy balls. Uh, there's no shortage of energy balls out here right now on RE1. Stephen Purse struggling to get out of the 22. The two tries down. Tell you what, that is some aggressive defending as well from this Warminster side. Oh, the box kick clear has been charged down. It's been knocked backwards. They've had two tries up the right. Now they attack down the left. Stephen Purse over committing six defenders, super narrow, but there is footwork finding its way through all of them. Beautiful finish, fabulous balance, and that makes it 19 0. Now this uh, this particular week is always a geographical challenge as well. And I start to think about where I've visited, where I've been. I've never been to Warminster, Joe. Have you? I've never been to Warminster. Well, maybe we'll put it on the list. Let's take another look at this try. Look at this finish when it eventually finds its way into the hands. So much to do. Step, dummy, tucked under one hand, gets rid of two, three defenders, takes another over the line with him. And that is top draw. Oh, wow. The ball was knocked on, but the tackle in the air. Well, we might see. So blood injury, I think, from that contact in the air. Just timing off, no malice in that. You know, I have been to Warminster actually. I pass it. I used to pass it every time I drove to University at Exeter. Did on the you? A303. Yeah. Go on the 303. Stephen Purse. That's a nice offload. Out of the back door. Little inside ball could do it. Alas. Ball in touch. Do this plenty of times throughout the week, Joe. But uh, just gonna. Big up the ground staff here on pitch RE1 because towards the end of the week there will be no grass left on this pitch at all. Yet here we are, all the rugby, all the sport that's played here throughout the year, and it comes to this time of the year after a savage winter. And here we are with a beautiful, lush surface to play on. How good were those offloads? Yeah, really good. And a little nudge ahead. Is this going to sit up? Oh, you bet it is. Chop that one up. Ripping backdoor offloads. Then some fancy football for another score. It's four already for Warminster, and they're enjoying themselves out there. Four tries, three conversions. More conversions. And this team, look at the business. You were right, Joe. I think after uh, France in the Six Nations against Wales, everyone's getting a little taste for these reverse balls. A couple of reversey Percy's. Sat up really well for him as well. It was awkward and stumbling forward as well. Backwards. And Warminster really on the charge, aren't they? Really just looking to suffocate the attack and then pounce just like that. Well, it's going to be try number five. And as clinical as they've been in attack, their defensive pressure has been so impressive too. Keeping the line high, getting in those passing channels and then picking the pass off. And getting the fifth try. That should take us through to half time. Confirmed by the referee. There's nothing fucking there. There's nothing there. 
final act of the first half. It's an unsuccessful conversion, but a very successful first half for Warminster. They lead Stephen Purse by 33 points to nil. A short double blast on the referee's whistle and the second half is incoming. A tough seven minutes for Stephen Purse. But it's all about the next phase, the next go, the next opportunity, the next chance to get a small victory. As Warminster received that kickoff, picked up off the toes. Straight away, looking to find some space. And find space they do. This is a gallop into the Stephen Purse half, into the Stephen Purse 22 and under the Stephen Purse posts. <laughs> that didn't take long, did it? Good try. God, it's exhausting just scoring them when you've got to run them in from 60, 70 metres. the conversion under the crossbar. I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference to the overall score here. Well, it's great to hear you on COCOM's earlier, Joe, talking about the Roslyn Park University Sevens. As this great brand of Sevens continues to grow. Of course, Buck Super Rugby going from strength to strength. Every season, more players making their mark on the game domestically, internationally, professionally, semi-professionally. And now it is time to bring that from 15s to 7s under the lights as part of this iconic brand. Backwards. And already just casting my eye out, we've seen Hartbury here, Cardiff Meta here, Loughborough here. I think just about every team will make an appearance throughout the week. And there's a lovely little buzz building about that tournament on June the 7th. There is indeed 10 of the best in a one day and night competition. Just the boys this year, obviously a big ambition to have a women's competition as well in the years to come. But unfortunately the date clashing with the under 20s women's six nations. Another charge down, Stephen Purse trying to be a bit too cute. They need to try anything and everything really to get something from this game. Now Warminster working it out to the right hand side it's going to be another try another slick finish they have got pace on both edges and they're going to be knocking on 50 points we did have somewhat of a mercy killing earlier once 50 was hit the referee said enough's enough that is eight tries and eight impressive tries too Conversion to come. Unsuccessful, it remains 43-0. Well, there are a few X 
Bucks players who've really gone to, to kick on in the sevens game. So it'll be fascinating to see which ones really impress. Got a few ideas, but I've seen Max Clementson knocking about here as a coach, former Hartbury player who went on to play for England on the world tour for a season before, well, looking like he was having an absolutely terrible time in Australia. Goodness me. Yeah, and currently there's Austin Emmons of Bath University still studying at the moment, playing for GB on the HSBC World Sevens. And, well, in contention to go to an Olympics, and he's still studying at the University of Bath. So I think we talk about it quite a lot. The leap from school to the highest heights really isn't that big a leap sometimes. He would have been playing here only a couple of years ago one, and then Got a couple one, of good he's seasons matched. of Buck Super Rugby and he's playing against the best and I mean the Thank best you. in the entire world out on the sevens. Well that's it isn't it and on the fringes as well not not quite breaking through in the same way but Sam Kildan at Loughborough has been involved with the programme and I mean Exeter your old boys less so on the sevens but uh, in the 15s three current students playing in the Six Nations this year with uh, Ross Vincent, David Jenkins and Emmanuel Fay were both so. And if it wasn't for injuries, possibly more Six. as well. So tomorrow's stars taking the pitch here at the Howden, Rostin Park National Schools Sevens this week. And some of these boys from Warminster really putting on a show now. Another excellent try. <laughs> Stephen Purse. Having a tough time, and the referee saying that if they do hit the 50 points, this will be the end of the game. We're about to find out how much they really want to play. The kick's successful, the full time whistle goes, and Warminster defeats Stephen Purse by 50 points to nil.
Coventry College versus Bloxham next up on pitch RE1. The showpiece pitch here on day one of the Howden Rossland Park National Schools Sevens. If you're just joining us, where have you been? It has been brilliant. Bloxham in black. They've had a couple of stars okay, tackle, over release. the years. No hands up, thank you. But this is going to be a tough game against Coventry. That's a proper good contest today. So Bloxham with one win already in Group T against Calliwith College. They hit 40. So Coventry, first game of the day for them, and they'll know that if they do get a victory, and in fact they have had one already, and they were defeated 36 points to seven by Hayes, so need a win, really. Joe Burns joining us for this one. As you said, Joe, one defeat, not terminal, but if you lose your first two games, knowing that you've got one more and it's going to be the end of your day, it's a, it's a tough climb. Yeah, it's a real tough one. I think, Five. yeah, I'll use the word bounce back ability, but certainly, like, you see how tight these matches are and the fine, fine margins of which they're decided. You lose what you're first. If you can win the next ones, I'll leave this to you. Well, if you lose your first tackler, you've got the chance for glory. Oh, he started running in treacle, but he's going to have enough to make it. It is a long, long sprint. And when it opens up, it can look like a long, long road ahead of you, but that's the first chance of the game, the first try of the game. Great strength to get rid of the first tackle and the gas to finish it just. Yeah, and he's going to take a breather now. I don't blame him either. That is a tough old slog. What a finish, though. What a finish. Just given enough room and real good strength. Tackler went a little bit high. And once he was free, as he said, long way from home, but just about had that speed endurance to finish off the effort. Well, Smart to see him replace straight away, cycling the talents. Obviously, blocks him pretty comfortable with some of the other weapons that they have at their disposal. I'm sure that is not the last we're going to see of that young man. I think it's important here, uh, Joe, that we are honest with the viewers. Um, and we're thumbing through team sheets here. We've not had one for either Bloxham or Coventry. So if you can get a message to somebody to scribble one down and run it up here, then we'll shout out some boys. But in the meantime, Coventry win the penalty as we approach three minutes. It's a tap and a go and a drop. And that is... Uh... Oh, the referee has missed that one, he's admitted he's missed it, so Coventry have got away with one. And how fatal will that miss be for Bloxham? Still Coventry College ball, a clear knock on in midfield. Oh, and a big man being lifted by a much smaller man. Something nice and old school about Bloxham as well, no numbers on the jerseys. It is good fun until you've got to commentate on it. Halfway through the first half, and okay, that's the tackle. commentary into the Bloxham half. Any a depth on this attack as well, but none of it comes to anything as that's dummied and taken in. That's lovely delivery from the base. Big men seeking contact, and oh, just a little bit too keen with the offload. Loved that offload. He was he wasn't looking because he knew he had his man on his shoulder. It was instinctive stuff. Just a little bit behind him, but. The idea was there, he could see it developing in his mind and he sacrificed his ribs to open up his arms so that he could throw it. Love that. So ambitious, isn't it? Everyone just plays with reckless abandon. Good conditions as well. We have our glorious sunshine. It's a bit overcast now. For the time of year could be a lot worse. No real breeze. Meow. And here come Coventry College. <laughs> Somehow there's a big cat on the pitch. I'm sure you heard that. Another knock on. Yeah, I think to clear that up for our viewers, that, that was someone having a bit of fun with one of the pitch mics, one of the atmosphere mics. How, how many household cats do you think Ouch. you could beat in a fight? Five! 
I thought you were going to say, are at the, the school sevens. <laughs> and notice you avoided the question. Here can blocks him again. Oh, pirouetting and bullying out of tackles. This will be a sensational score. Oh, it had a little bit of everything. And blocks him have gone the length of the field twice. And he's even got the faith in the kicker to stay wide. So much to like about that try. Unless you play for Coventry College. Well, that's a lot of schoolboy rugby player in a jersey right there. And oh, we saw a lot of him. Saw the strength. Saw the determination. And then... Again, impressive speed endurance to finish the job that he started deep within his 22. Here he goes, one, two. And then absolute faith in his athleticism to go the distance. Cruised off like a 400 meter run around the back bend. And then easy street from the 22 home. There are two kinds of rugby players, aren't there? The kind who will break those tackles and think, yeah, I'm going to pin my ears back and go for it. Then those who break the tackle and think, oh, I've got 80 metres here. This just isn't happening. He enjoyed that. He enjoyed that 80 metres. Oh, oh and he what enjoyed a carry. That. Here we go. Coventry College looking for their first try. It's a big chase back and a great cover tackle. But signs of life here and a penalty for Coventry and the chance to get something just before half-time to make it a one-score game. Good step, but a good I'm, I'm cover tackle that, right round the bootstraps. Two metres short, it's slowed down a bit here. Blocks him, needing to defend, but it's so hard to defend from that kind of short range. And as we tick past seven minutes, we've got a game on our hands. Incredible carry out wide there, and you've got to tip your hat to blocks him, he got the chase back, but also repopulated their defense. They worked so hard to get all seven in the line. But as you said, that kind of range, first it was the straightening to keep that defense on, is to suck in a few black jerseys. And then from point blank, they'll wish that they were stronger in that clinch. No, no, thank you very much. And then a couple extras to add. As you said, Dave. Game on. Half time, the whistle goes, blocks some lead, but only by five points. It is 12 7. Bloxham School, 12-7 up against Coventry College. The men from the Midlands getting a meat pie just before half-time to really make this interesting. We've had three excellent scores. Well, that should give the Hoops plenty of confidence. They haven't dealt with that kickoff particularly well, but they've gotten away with it with the feather forward. But that kind of score on the brink of half time and also the nature of it with the physicality of the carry to take them into that five meter danger zone, that red zone. 
They should be buoyed by that, and that should that would have been Bye. everything they were talking about in the huddle. Harness that energy and bring it to Bloxham, because there's only seven to go, and there's five points between them. But just a reminder that they need a victory as well. They do not want to drop the first two games. Oh, that's a big physical contest over there on the flank, and there was only one winner. Yeah, the try scorer from the opening two minutes of the match back onto that right flank and showing us what he can do in defence. It's a real hungry tackle. Kept driving his leg. Gents, Mark is here. Yeah, great challenge. He's just making his way over to our side, and he is okay. thick with a few C's Pops. at the end, isn't he? Five. Yeah, sizable individual, Six. but Coventry showing that they've got the muscle as well out here. We'll reset that, gents. Reset it. Well, the scrum is a complex beast, and the referee's doing a great job to keep what control they have over it. Gents, hold that, hold that. But all the while, the clock continues oh. to tick. Still plenty of time Five. left. Blocks them with the ball, Set. with the lead, and with the opportunity to extend that lead now in the Coventry College half. Here he goes again, one try already, a goosey to get it going, and then gets swallowed up by the tacklers. A little bit chaotic, but it comes back in black. Patience required, both in attack here from Bloxham and defence from Coventry. There's space out there, it's a flung offload. Oh, it's just gone forward. Oh, I love that. I, I think it might have gone back. I mean, it was definitely real 50-50. And I think the style of the offload probably is one that's going to get whistled. But I love that they're trying to free up their hands and throw those, what some people are going to say speculators, but in sevens, it's about that point of difference. It's keeping it alive. It's not drawing yourself into the contact zone, but at the same time drawing in opposition defenders. Blocks are looking for the big push up the scrum, and again Coventry go up that blind side. Oh, oh, oh that was nearly, nearly magnificent, but it was a high tackle. Nice tempo about this from Coventry. They don't want to get isolated. Big clear out, but it's not there in time. Excellent work over the ball. What a bit of breakdown work, so precise there. Straight down on the ball, no question for the referee. Pretty deep there, Coventry. That 10 was more like a 12, so blocks up. Some space to attack. Always looking to get it to the edge, all quick hands were done there instead. It's a good defensive read, but another offload. And a lovely step to create the space. Look at this turn of pace. Offload's good. Blocks of looking for the third try for a two score lead. The bend is ferocious. And it's the first try of the second half. Blocks them lead 17 7. Well, he's walking back like he's got two TVs under his arms. The big man with a bit of post fend swagger and a hell of a finish. And Coventry were working so hard in defence, but look at this support work. He's the one who gave the pass and he's back onto it and then bullying his way through. There's the ferocity and there's the back of his jersey and a clean set of heels all the way to the line. Tell you what, Joe, they have got a fairly good bench press program at Boxham, <laughs> haven't they? Monday, chest day, Tuesday, chest day. Nineteen seven. Gone backwards. Boxham looking for two wins from two to set them on their way. Flat like that three. offload over the top and there. Is the keels, there is the afterburners, there is the cover tackle. But it can't stop. A score for Coventry College, it's game on again. Still two minutes to go. And despite Bloxham's dominance, they are far from home and hose. Decent contest and an important conversion coming up. Well, even the Bloxham bench presses are no match. 
the seven's deadliest weapon, raw pace down that left flank. And again, it was the offload from that rangy young man who looked to free up his arms. He sacrifices his ribs again, gets the offload away. It was a terrific last-ditch tackle around the bootstraps. But great awareness to know that he hadn't been held. He could get up, have another surge. Conversion didn't go over, which was a shame. However, still a one-score game, still there for Coventry. Well, they've gone deep with the restart, and they need to get the ball back. They've got about a minute. It's a good defensive read, but the first tackle isn't clean. Something that we've not really seen yet in the Vars that we'll certainly see in the cup competition are those proper high-hanging <laughs> savage restarts. If you can win that ball back, then you've got a chance, but instead... It's a high tackle, and that might be Coventry College's race run. Oh, no, that's that's a bad strike, but there's nobody deep. Interesting ploy, that. Blocks them back in their defence, saying to Coventry, come and have a go. Do you we think, think we'll shut you oh out. You think that was deliberate? Oh, my oh here we go. Oh, my eye. It's a really good carry. And the offload to match. And... Coventry College not giving up yet, blocks him over that ball again, told to leave it. A lot of blocks him, personnel embroiled in that ruck, if Coventry can get it wide. Oh, lovely off though, here we go. There's a two on one, they're going to go under the poles here. He saw contact, he's offloaded, it is unbelievable. It is unnecessary and that's why we love it. It's Bloxham 19, Coventry College 17, with the conversion to come to level it. That was unreal! How good! Oh, it's a draw! It's our first tie of the day. Coventry have come from two scores down in the first half. A score down in the second. And they've pinched a tie. It's blocks of 19, Coventry College 19. What a game! Here we go then, Fanny Shen High School against King's College Taunton. King's in the red and black, receiving the kickoff. Day one, absolutely flying by in the under 18s, Vars. Pitch RE1 and RE2 live, but of course, all of the action is on the showpiece pitch, and that's why you've joined us here. Fanny Shen defending. This is lovely offloading, though, by King's College Taunton. We have got a hand-scribbled team right sheet. Now. So I apologise 
in advance. I'll take some responsibility, but the rugby coach who scribbled it needs to as well. So Phoenician from the Welsh capital of Cardiff. They've not got a touch yet, and they're going to find themselves a score down because Kings Taunton have cut loose up the right-hand side. Less than a minute gone, and that is all it has taken for them to go under the sticks. They have got some power and some precision out there on the width. And Mudia Eribo, the England 110-metre hurdler, goes in for the game's opening try. Well, that one's bounced straight up to Fanisha. Trying to inject some tempo, going directly there from the base. Now it slows down. He was shaping like he was going to box kick there. I'm not. I'm not sure how I cope with that today, Joe. A box kick. I saw enough in the Premiership Cup final that I did on Friday, so <laughs> to last a lifetime. How yeah. good from King's Taunton! Oh. oh wow. Just in transition there, so quick to get it to the edge. Well, when you've got a national level hurdler on the right hand side, that's exactly what you want. Here's a little look at that first try where it actually went behind him, but he was so confident. <laughs> Are you going to say that or am I? If Charlie Galpin, if Charlie Galpin does something Five. in this game. Set. And Joe's got a bit of a revelation about his personal life. Here's Lanisha. Another chance to attack. Big physical difference. King's College much bigger in the middle of the park from these Welshmen. And as a result, they've managed to turn that ball over. And this time they find Erebo again. Oh, and he just two or three steps. He is up to full pace and then just chucks the parachute out of the back. Just controls his speed so well. Gets a second try, his second try, the second try. Oh my God. Another look at this, another good finish by him. Just in complete control. And a rebo. Oh okay. Makes it 12-0. Well, from one Kings to Kings Bruton. Shout out to the lads who've just saved my T-shirt ah, that's, uh, that's come off the scaffold. So wishing the Kings Bruton boys well in the competition. The two o'clock fixtures. Good boys. Good bench coats as well. Vital bit of stash, I'd say, in this uh, lot, lot of um, substitute jacket envy at the Howden Russell mm. Park National School Sevens. Go. Got my overriding memories Five. of when I played it. Back then it was the boiler suits, oh, the, yeah. the big baby suits. Yeah, with a double, sometimes a double zip at the front. Yeah, Wellington had those. Of course they did. Wellington had those. Good start this from King Staunton and Fanny Shen just struggling. Oh, not only struggling with the game, struggling with the referee too, costing themselves 10 metres for back chat. Oh, it's going to be a first half hat trick, isn't it? So strong, so physical, and Arebo. Three touches, three tries. He's not doing badly. He's got amazing awareness of where the defenders are as well because he bursts into life, speeds away initially, and then he takes his foot off the pedal, like conserves energy so impressively well, and just doesn't seem to have any concerns that anyone's going to catch him ultimate faith in the pace let's have a look here the pass comes in from tommy t-bone forward and there he goes away he knows he's got the strength to shirk off that last tackler and cruising home well that's something he'd have cultivated and, and learned in 110 meter hurdling isn't it because when you've got to go through rounds to try and get to the final They've just got a brilliant way of knowing exactly what they need to do to get there. And that is a very, very confident young athlete. You've gone a lot more detailed, a lot more advanced than me. He's just real quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Serious wheels. And he is causing Fanny Shen absolute Going nightmare backwards. as well. They've Way left up. that one behind. Again, backwards. <whistles> okay, went backwards. 
Penalty for offside. Back then. Back then. Tough that. Inside. Accidental. Bouncing off the foot and he was there picking it up. Not sure he would have seen. Nice little carry there and a dart coming in from Henry Earp. Well, they're going again down the middle this time. Sachima Chien. Oh, my goodness me. This boy. We've seen the pace. Then we have seen the power. Chien Ye. <whistles> Lovely singing voice. Lovely try scoring voice. Look at that, this King's College Taunton team doing the business here. We've not seen any of Tom Brown yet, who at under 18s is 6'4 and 110 kgs. It's about the same as you, isn't it? Height-wise, I mean. One of those statistics is, <laughs> is near. Chienye, straight through the middle, just on that short ball, and if you're a bit high with that tackle, it is curtains. Well, Tanishen. Got the ball, play up, oh, play up. an excellent turnover. Straight over the ball. Tommy T-Bone forward again. And now they're working it out to the edge. Every time they touch the ball, it is only a King's Taunton error that is going to stop them from scoring. But that one's gone backwards, says the referee. There are gaping great holes in the middle of the Thanishen defence. And Rudy Reisner gets his first strike. That'll take us through to half-time. Conversion's good, it's 33-0. And Kings Taunton are well on their way to victory. King's College Taunton looking the business here on pitch RE1. Let's see what they can add in the second half. Well, that's not going to go 10. In fact, it's going to go negative. That's like the kind of pitching wedge revolutions that Joe Burns creates when he attacks the greens at the Richmond just down the road. Yeah, just as well because I snapped my five iron last okay, time I played. So, in anger or because it was such a pure strike? No, leave it now. Complex ten. sport. <laughs> Here we go, King Saunton opening things up on the left edge, oh, and a big telescopic so fend comes out. And well, they're really enjoying themselves here on RE1. It is Ollie Edge on the edge, the Bristol Bear unsheathing his try scoring claws. And getting the first score of the second half. Ollie Edge, bit of nominative determinism. 
Well, you described it earlier, didn't you? Pace, it is seven's most deadliest weapon. And as soon as you'll pass the last <laughs> defender, it's curtains. Confidence as well, because he checked, he saw the last defender. We've seen a few of the players <laughs> get around and instead of just pinning the ears back and going for the line, just checking, have I beaten him? Have I beaten him? He certainly had beaten him. Oh, what a take. Play on. Play on, went backwards. Great chase. Thought there may have been a knock on in there. Referee says Oof. no, and he knows best. Now, Flanisha, we're getting to the point, Joe. We uh, we like to carry call on, these games on. straight down the middle. Good play is good play. However, I'll tell you right now, I am all in on a Flanisha try. Leave it. We've seen too oh, many well. eggs. Don't like seeing teams getting nilled. But Clinician getting a bit of time on the ball. And this is what they need. They've been starved of it so far. Nice to see Zach no, Lily White almost scamper away. Room down the short side. Here we go. Oh, it's a great cover tackle. Kings showing they can do it both sides of the ball, not just in attack, in defence. Oh, and that has been turned over off the leg, and Kings College Taunton away again. Little hack down the middle. Rudy Reisner, one try already, needs it to sit up for him. Rudy Reisner picks it up, dots it down. Fabulous individual score. Rudy Reisner. Of course, when you're this far ahead, gives you the confidence to play. Not the confidence to convert, though. How has that ended up back in his hands? Could have tried that a million times and he wouldn't have achieved that. But wow, I mean, so tough on Clinician there. Just the spoiling from King Staunton, ricocheting off a boot. But then that awareness from Rudy Reisner to spot the space. Lovely little dab on the outside of the boot to take it past the last defender. So I know you're big on the, the tactics of this great game. Oh, Flanisha need to be on it here. Need to switch on. They've got an advantage for a high tackle. But we've seen that, that kick there, really well executed by Rudy Reisner. So where are you with the with the seven up or the six up and a sweeper? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, I like a shallow sweeper. So that is when you have... You've, you've got six up, so if you ever hear the expression seven up, it means all seven are in the defensive line. Here you go, Dave. Another one for you to call in. Oh, he's away again. A oh, lovely little step inside. And you just predicted it so well, Joe. You know, as soon as they get the ball in that part of the pitch, they're going to apply the pressure to the try line. That time, it was Matt Sewell Cook who gets over for his first. And with okay. less than 11 minutes on the clock, that is the 50 points hit and a resounding victory for King's College Taunton. They defeated Phoenician 52 0.
episode, the 220 round of fixtures. An annual school of Birmingham uh, Abbey School, RE1. Different path for personal hockey boys grammar school, RE2. Victoria College versus AC School on RE3. The Herodian versus Rhinestone School on RE4. King Alfred's Academy versus Dollar Academy on RE5. It's called Different Man versus Amsterdam School on RE6. And Jeff versus Reading Blue Pope on RE7. Those matches you off at 2.20. Back into the action here on RE1, day one of the Howden Rossin Park National Schools sevens. And Emmanuel School, they've had a cracking 15 season, really developed as a unit over the last two years. Kick off, but they don't find the 10 meter line. So Milton Abbey School from down in Dorset, who are looking for their first win of their campaign here oh, oh, invites some real pace onto the ball oh, but spilt forward by you and Baird. 
Manuel will play. They'll play for their 22. Challenging pass. Not Freddie Holmes' finest. We come back for the initial advantage, which was that knock on. And referee calling for a nice stable scrum to kick off this final match of the pool in the under 18s Vars for these two. Emmanuel, two from two, matching score lines of 30 points to five. And they're doing it scrappy at the moment. Pass, pass is not going to hand, unfortunately. Lars Bayliss, their first team captain, who's excelled all season. Makes his way to the edge. Oh, that's a lovely show and go. Just using the men around him to open up the space. And Bayliss flings one. Collected. Tackle. Holding on on the floor, but again, that advantage there. You will have to... Excuse any mispronunciations of names on the Emmanuel front. Some challenging handwriting on this team sheet. But as always, these team sheets greatly appreciated. We want to be celebrating the boys and girls as best we can on our E1, on the biggest, the most prestigious pitch at the Alden Rosson Park National School Sevens. And Emmanuel looking to get themselves to the elimination round so they can put themselves in with a chance of more action here as the competition develops. Nice hands, finally purring a little bit for Emmanuel, tackle. but it's a fabulous cover tackle. High over the shoulder and then Emmanuel going off their feet. And Milton Abbey on their defensive metal here, tight losses in their matches so far. Tackle! First man! Stolen by Emmanuel. David Pilling. Oh, still going. The big number five. A talisman for this Emmanuel side. And leading from the front, right from the get-go here. First try of the match. Brilliant involvement, gets in there, makes the steal, the kick up. shrugs off one, then a second, then lurches forward, goes all the way. Brilliant take at pace from the kickoff, Lances. spilt forward, chance for Emmanuel, but no, the touchline comes into play. Scrum down, wide ball. Here's a ball. lot of pace, a lot of desire it's in this game ball. so far. Okay. You can see. Stay five, stay five, yellow. The Milton Abbey replacements and coaching Cuts. team there. Pitch five. side. Set. Wheeling their team on. But away it goes. From Emmanuel. Nice wraparound play in the middle. Opens up that 15 metre channel. Here on comes the, the pace, but, well, pace for pace. A good match out there. Extravagant dummy, not bought. But now to greener pastures, to more room, to the try scorer, to David Pilling, who shows a wonderful turn of pace. Scampers across and underneath the uprights. He bags a brace and Emmanuel are in command. Kickoff received by Milton Abbey, who go scything through, pierce that initial defensive line from Emmanuel. Tackle! Really good play before being swung to a halt. Out to the left hand side. Again, watchful defense. Freddie Holmes this time tracking down the player. In comes Tackle! Matt Brennan, the captain. Stay, 
He had Lamb's trials earlier this season. Long ball over the top and no one's at home. But there's an Emmanuel man right there to gobble up that loose pass. Speed home. And Kit Rutcher. Bags try number three. And Emmanuel right this moment. We're on a direct course in the elimination round. One more game to go for them. And victory sees them through to the second day. That's the ambition of everybody. Get through to day two. That's an achievement in itself. And then come the real big matches. Initial advancement from Milton Abbey was really good. But then just one loose pass punished by Emmanuel, who haven't got their kickoff drills entirely right in this match. So room for improvement on that front. Lovely little slip out the back door. And on comes Miles. Aiken head. You're offside, but the first penalty is for playing it on the floor, OK? Putting it back. Emmanuel have the penalty. They use it in swift and ruthless fashion. Archie Goss across for try number four. And Emmanuel racing away with it in this opening seven minutes. So White was offside, so big play advantage. But your players pushed it back on the floor. Which has stopped them having a fair chance, have it, okay? No, no, no. Sometimes it looks so, so easy. Sharp hands. A gas man on the edge. Stay behind, stay behind. And easy as you like. One more play available Vantage. on the referee's watch. No, Spill forward. Still we play. Eight minutes. Clocked up now. Stay five. Crouch! Fight! An elongated first half Set. is going to play into Emmanuel's hands. They've enjoyed Backwards. playing right to left as we look at them so far. Dance inside, Eddie Nor, Harry Fraser, I beg your pardon, linking up and well, a bit too much trickery. The ball, though, bounces backwards and then on the wraparound, Kit Rutcher's in for another. Uh, that's, that's time now, actually. Cracking effort to add the extras and a handsome lead for Emmanuel here at half time. They lead Milton Abbey 33 points to nil.
Emmanuel in command here on RE1. In the boys under 18 bars. The kickoff from the captain, Matt Brennan. Advantage. The Milton Lock Abbey School, who are just desperate for a bit of concerted time on the ball, that's but fine. First man, knock on kind right. of pilfering First that's down going down on at the breakdown is making it so hard to string the phases together. Let's march, let's go. Good afternoon, the fixtures at 2.40. Stay five, please. Close! Right! Set! Ball fed in. Ball retrieved, ball making its way at pace to the Emmanuel line. Wow, what an offload, what a take. And Ewan Baird in for a deserved score for Milton Abbey that breathes a bit of life into this game. I tell you what, that's a conversion attempt right there. Had the distance, not quite the direction. Well, let's take another look at this. Predatory stuff from the base. Nice Thank weave, you. freed Behind up the shot. hand. And for well, the last time I saw a pass like that was England France at the weekends. That slingshot offload inside. Brilliant play. From Milton Abbey, Emmanuel won't like that. Tackle roll! Demonstrate that with a really bruising carry from Harry Fraser. And his carry sets up their number 21. Wow! That is one of the best offloads you'll see all day. Alex Cook, the grateful recipient. But a bit of magic out the back door. From the number 21. Lovely show and go. Felt like he was losing the foot race. <laughs> he even turned away. Stay behind. Added Vava Voom on the offload. Yes, please. Oh, the spiral drop kick. Backwards! Restart. You don't see that very often. And it causes some real confusion for the Milton Abbey boys. And Emmanuel need no second invitation. Up to 47. Wait, wait. Got a player here, just wait. Been a pretty Face consummate time, performance from Emmanuel. That moment of magic from Milton Abbey just doing the unlocking, but another Martin. kick off that isn't well dealt okay, with. Knock on. You can't take Awkward bounce. Like okay. Knock on. Scrum down, yellow ball. But ultimately knocked on by Emmanuel. Yeah, your ball. Why knock on? Ten and a half no, minutes played. Right, there's not. 47-5, the margin. Right. Set! Yeah, ball was out. Out to the wing. Out to the hot-stepping, flight-footed number 11. Then hands, backs and forwards, linking up in unison. Fashioning Back room out wide, but the final pass evading the key man, the man he started it all for Emmanuel. Offside. David Pilling, but it's still there for Emmanuel. Great bravery as the fly hat came in. Then the wherewithal to free up the offload off the floor again. This time has to be surely Pilling shrugs off the defender. He's in for a hat trick and Emmanuel a romping to the elimination round. Lo. 
bars, we've got to call it there because it's 50 differential, okay? So take this kick and then that's it. No, okay. With 50 pass, 50 the game is called, and Emmanuel storm into that elimination round with an impressive performance here. Last act, bit of bravery, then the offload and the footwork to set up one last breakdown before the Emmanuel Talisman made it across the line and made it game over. Final score, Milton Abbey 5, Emmanuel 52. Next up on pitch RE1, it is Campion against Thomas Tallis. And Campion in all white, undefeated so far today. Have the ball in hand and they're flipping it with freedom to one another. Long ball, misses out one. Not a judge to have gone forward as it's controlled with the foot, but a little bit scrappy. Thomas Tallis are muscled across the touchline. Thomas Tallis, who I do have a team sheet for, but there are no numbers on the backs of the jerseys. So Isaac Hayward, Edward Berry, Michael Weeks, Harry Pratton, Sufjan Callow, Theo Camp, Lewis, Dolomore, Rory Caldwell, Roman Payne, Corey Luxford and Charlie McKinley will be all out there playing numberless rugby, the purest way that sevens can be. Crouch! The Thomas Tallis, the yet to taste victory, London Oratory and Fulham's boys school, proving too tough a task, but on the attack here and looking to challenge the tackles of Campion. Nice weaving run and then the hand freed up to sling an offload. Good aggression being offered by Campion and their number four and the head guard. Then he links up with his three. Great retention though from Talis. Love this style of sevens. No release, you're part of the tackle, you need to show daylight. No release. Let's go from there. That's 10, let's go. Thomas Talis. Fine, tackle release. Trying to punch through the hole between Lost winger and centre. Don't go in the side, don't go in the side. Come through the gate. They do well to fend off the counter-attacking ambitions of Campion. Tackle! You want to go through to the elimination round with three wins from three if they can, but at the moment they're up against it. 
the offloading play of Thomas Tallis. Tackle. Getting in behind the Campion defence, a pick and a go, and Tackle. just about repelled with a metre to go. Last press. And one more plunge through the gap. And Thomas Tallis score the opener in this against the fancy Campion. Kicking. Okay, let's go. Nice, Harry. Our first real sighting of Campion with the ball in hand because they lost it in their first possession. And look at that. Utterly ruthless, utterly electric. Down the left edge, Thomas Tallis had to work so hard to unlock that Campion defence. But they have responded in the blink of an eye and the flash of a pair of heels. Cannon off the crossbar for just about dribbling over. Conversion added. And we're seven apiece. Well, I'll take another look at this finish then. Absolute jets up the left hand side. Ten. Wait. But it's gone ten and straight away they're right back on it. It's stuck in the bread basket. And this is beautiful fluid offloading. And the chance for two tries in as many minutes it has to go. And it will go. It is back to back. Meat pies. Playing with such confidence. And Campion. The Essex boys take the lead. And they take the lead by 14 points to seven. Two converted tries to really sting Thomas Tallis. To Campion, victory here, but see them through as group leaders in Group H. Back off red, play. Oh, it's been turned over again. Campion, That's fine, lads. The ball's absolutely out. deadly on that restart. Tackle. But it is back with Thomas Tallis. Thomas Tallis themselves can put a bit of a fly in the ointment here, but they have yet to get a victory. Defeats to London Oratory, defeats to Fulham boys. So this is excellent strength and the offload's good. Here we go. Thomas Tallis tiptoeing into the 22 one way, then the other. And he's going to score. What a try. Magnificent. Roslyn Park National School Sevens at his very best. Sometimes the most unorthodox ones are the most fun. And that was a barrel of laughs. What a try. To Thomas Tallis. Clock strikes six minutes. Oh, that conversion will not bother the posts. Let's take another look at this try. That was the show and go there. Beauty. Even had a smile on his face as he made it. And the offload was good. So much work to be done. Beat the same defender once, twice, okay, three times. And then had the balance to whack it down in the corner. Chance for one more attack before the half. Oh, and here we go. Campion, clean pair of heels. No sweeper at home. They were all up chasing the restart. And just like that. They extend the lead going into half-time under the posts as well. So this is the chance to make it a two-score lead. And that should take us through 
So half time, and what a half it's been. Five tries in total. Three for Campion. Two for Thomas Tallis. And as the half time whistle goes, it is 21 12. Away we go then, second half, Campion kicking off to Thomas Tallis, who really need the next score. They don't want to slip three scores behind. That one missed conversion means it is a two-score game and another dummy through the gap. And a lovely little scoop. Oh, it's physical in the middle. Tackle now, away. Now, Thomas Tallis looking for the gap, finding the gap, but there's a sweeper for Campion. He makes a good tackle, but the offload matches it in quality. Looking Nothing to free gone. the hands. Nothing coming, lads. Not gone. And this shows the quality of this competition because Thomas Tallis yeah, are going toe to toe with an undefeated champion here. They're yet to get a victory. The first one was tight against London Oratory. London Oratory then fell 33 40 to champion over on pitch Bang. RE5. Set! Balls out! That's a nice step. Oh, and a nice fend as well. Wants an offload, finds an offload. And again, oh, it's been left behind. A try of the day, contender goes begging. Now it's time for defensive duty. It's gone red ball. And it'll be a Thomas Tallis put in. Yards, it's a scrum here, red ball. Okay, let's get going. All right, scrum down. A brief break in play. A chance for Thomas Tallis to launch. Set! They'll be launching. From inside their own 22, love that little flick between the legs. They are playing with a lot of freedom and a lot of fun at these Thomas Tallis boys. And if they can get another score, they might be in a good spot. This young man's a good playmaker, big physical carrier. He's found a few gaps, he's got good clean hands as well. Not rolling. And he earns the penalty. Campion not rolling away. Let's go. No need to go for touch. They carry that up. 
face. Big clear out coming and then looking for that soft shoulder down the middle, up over halfway. Tackle nose. These are good hard yards by the Thomas Tallis boys. Release! Another direct carry. Good field position now, but they're super narrow. There's no room on the either flank, so therefore they've gone to the toe. And this could cost them, because Campion going backwards to go forwards. There's dog-legged defence, and now there is some serious gas at the left-hand side. One man left to make the tackle, can't get near, and that'll win it for Campion. Still time on the clock, but that makes it a three-score game. Under the poles, conversion to come. All that hard graft from Thomas Tallis undone. With a quite brilliant finish. And it's a long way back now. Currently a two score game. We have had ties. But three scores now. It's a tough ask. Look at this great technique, great arm drive. Path of least resistance, tiptoeing up the touchline. And he Come is going to take a breather. Okay, let's go. And it's all about rescuing a bit of pride now for Thomas Tallis because they have been more than competitive Ooh, in this game. Rugby sevens is brutal and unforgiving. And if you switch off for a second, then the game can be over. Jack and Milo going to Glaze Noah. Yeah, it looks like it. Jack's going to Glaze Noah and Milo's going to pay the fix. Milo thinks he's hard to it. A couple of minutes to go. Crunch! Boom! And this impressive Campion School Essex team are going to go through top of Group H undefeated. Two knock ons, lads, we can't play on from it. First play, wait, he's gone right Why did you say And then Thomas Tallis into the last couple of minutes. Crouch! Play! Set! Balls out. Getting through the legs from the scrum. It's a risky Up strategy. Nudge. And now a lovely nudge in behind, oh but it's going to be Campion who win the foot race. And that's a really good leg drive on and the offload as well. It's gone backwards. It's ambitious. It's so much fun. Now, Campion. Go, Isaac! Advantage <laughs> over. Well, the advantage is over, but they'll still keep playing. A lovely little shimmy inside. Creates another hole, creates another try. Campion so clinical. And as we tick down to the full-time whistle, they have won the arm wrestle, and they're going to win the match. And they're going to win it by quite a handsome margin. How did only I hear that? 35 points to 12 into the final minute of the match. Still absolutely loads to come here on pitch RE1. The days do fly by though, don't they? Just wall to wall rugby. So next up, we've got Clare's Court against Dartford Grammar, then Sidcup versus the Portsmouth Grammar. Barton Peveril against Gordon School, and then Newcastle under Lyme against Seven Oaks School. Wait! But now we're into the dying embers of this one. And Thomas Tallis. Play on, clear out's good. Pick it up then. Play on. Wait, wait, Red, wait. Thomas Tallis offside. Oh. Campion get another one here. It would probably be a bit of an unfair reflection of what an excellent contest this has been, but instead it's Thomas Tallis who win the penalty. And can they finish with a flourish? They look tired out there, Thomas Tallis. They have been run around in this second half. Third game of the day as well. Decent fend, decent tackle too. Oh, that's a big bump from their outstanding player.
Well, there's a crossfield kick, but absolutely nobody chasing it. The idea was there, but they weren't on the same wavelength. And just like that, red jerseys parted like the Red Sea. <laughs> and Campion hit 40. They are a dangerous team. And they have shown that they can really put teams away in games where they're in a contest for quite some time. 33-19 against Fulham Boys, 40-33 against London Oratory, and now 42-12 against Thomas Tallis. A much better game, a much closer game than that scoreline suggests. It finishes Campion 42, Thomas Tallis 12. Well, it's three o'clock already. Where does the time go? It certainly flies when you're having fun. It is day one of the Howden Roston Park National Schools Sevens. Welcome to pitch RE1. The pitch in perpetual motion, one of many pitches in perpetual motion throughout the week. Next up, Clare's Court versus Dartford Grammar. A couple of games for Clare's Court so far. They've come unstuck against Ampleforth College and Collega Camoyth from Cymru. They managed three tries against Collega Camoyth, though. That was a good game, 36-21 it finished. As for Dartford Grammar School, well, they have won one, lost one. So to stand any chance here, they need a big victory because only the top teams going through. Ampleforth College. Well, they're going along quite nicely. A 34-7 win and a 34-5 win over Clears Court in Dartford. So they are overwhelming favourites. Colleague Akamoy also one win and one defeat, having lost to Dartford and beaten Clears Court. So neither of these teams really with a massive opportunity to get through. But with that in mind. Dartford Grammar take the field. Clare's Court are in the green and white hoops. Dartford Grammar in the claret and amber, maroon and gold, whatever Pantone you want to describe it as. Dark red and yellow, isn't it? Even the referees going through his stretches before this one. What was talking about the players? It's tough going for the refs, too. They're out there warming up, cooling down. Good conditions for it, but slightly heavy surfaces and therefore takes its toll on the legs. Final game for these two teams in Group L then. Oh, brilliant take straight from the kickoff and Dartford, the boys of Kent already on the front foot. That is the dream, isn't it? Straight into the bread basket. From the kickoff. And away we go. Oh, that's not a great pass, though. Straight into touch. It's 
30 seconds gone. And already, Clay's caught. Advantage. Oh, that's well taken. No one in the, no one in the channel. However, illegally taken, so... Huh. Referee, just reminding Clears Court where the free kick's to be taken from. That wasn't a great pass, but it was a great pickup. Now, back the other way they go. This is sharp feet. Oh, and a great fend. Here we go. The inside ball's a good one, and the try will stick. Clears Court going through the gears. Great special awareness, great running lines. And the conversion good too, Clears Court 7. Dartford Grammar School nil, and after that sharp start by Dartford, they find themselves under their own poles. That's a really good fend, still work to be done though. And the inside ball, top class. Oh, that's a high hanging restart, that is one. That Clears Court can take Advantage. under no duress whatsoever. So both teams Hello. have managed to claim a restart and a penalty. How about this for Clears Court? Got three tries against Collega Cumwood. They've got one already and another really good possession. They've gone to the boot early. Good, good old-fashioned grubber kick in behind. Well, it does do now though. It's mean that you've got to defend. Such good work over the ball. on RE2. Park School versus College on discipline, letting them down a little bit. Oh God, that's a short ball. Don't run onto that shoulder. Well turned over. Really good. on RE6. And the King's School Grantham versus Sandbatch School on RE7. Those matches to get underway around three o'clock. Quickly. Well, it's the third game for these teams, and the willingness to engage in the scrum just gets a little bit slower as the game goes on. Neither team massively in a rush. Set. That scramble for the ball comes back the way of the Dartford boys. Little out then in, then out again, wants an offload. But manages to wriggle free from the tackle. Then the ball disrupted, dislodged. Too many loose passes by the Dartford boys, but they've got some explosive runners, some exciting runners. And no part of the pitch is safe. This is lovely balance. Advantage knock on Hands on that from Clears Court, though, and there's another knock-on advantage. Advantage over! Oh, and there's just no offload available. All the time Either in the world now. Side. Clears Court need to be careful not to infringe here because they're applying a little bit of pressure, but pressure is relieved by speed. Excellent last-ditch tackle, Clears Court. Affecting the sweeper well, but then slipping off tackles. Come forward off white. And with a knock on advantage, Darford into the 22 they go. The advantage is over, but they're on the front foot. You're white, looking you're for the, the score. Hands to ground, leave it. They'll close the gap with the conversion to come. Clear score hanging on here, not hanging on for much longer though. White, leave it. Superb last ditch defence, but they were called off it. Referee says penalty. And Dartford now, with the width, queuing up to score it. It's a little wider than they might have wanted, but they are over for the first try. Conversion to come. Dartford Grammar 5, Clears Court 7. Excellent game, five minutes gone here on RE1. Here's the conversion then to level it. Seven. Oh, the strike drifts across the face. So Clears Court. 
maintain a lead, albeit a narrow one. Replay of the try. Better safe than sorry. Could have dummied that and got under the sticks, but more important to get the five on the board. A spiral. Restart. Nearly taken out one of the team members who was making her way past. Thankfully, it wasn't caught on camera. Into the last minute of the half then. This good contest, Claire's Court, after their first victory of the tournament. Here's this wraparound play. Although he can't keep up with the ball carrier who gets away. Racing for the corner round the last defender. Oh, the tackle, sensational. And he's up and looking for the turnover. But now the dart at the short side. Second try for Claire's Court. They extend the lead. And now just before half time. This conversion to make it a two-score game. What a contest. Players caught 12, Dartford 5. Never really in control of that strike. And the half-time whistle goes. Clears court. Got themselves a handy little lead here. 12 points to 5. Second half incoming, clears court. Dropping that one into the Dartford 22 with a seven point lead on RE1. Oh, how about this for an attack? How about this for an attack? Uh, one defender to beat. Really good tackle. So clears court going for this 6 1 defense with a deep sweeper, and that sweeper has made a lot of excellent tackles. Cynical offside by clears court. They might have a seven-point lead, but they're only going to have six men on the pitch. Because that is a yellow card, and the yellow card of one of their talisman as well. So a tough period, a player down coming up. A clears court. Oh, it's a lovely delayed pass. That is straight out of the top draw. Beautifully timed. That's the try. Seconds after clears court have gone down to 12. Uh, down to six. That's seven minus one, isn't it? It's 12. The number of points they'll have on the board if they kick this conversion, which they do. We are level, and that's massive for Dartford. But this pass, just after the yellow card. There. Oh, just delayed. A couple of strange noises you might hear because uh, the mic's to pick up the atmosphere around the ground. And next to some students who annoyingly aren't as funny as they think they are. But, you know, it's all part and parcel of the fun, isn't it? Time is on. Ball's life. 
Office Court 12, Dartford Grammar 12. Good contest for the ball. Referee says it's gone backwards and it's ended up in the hands of Dartford Grammar and Clears Court have switched off. They've coughed up the ball inside the 22. And Dartford Grammar whipping this ball out to the left. Two excellent passes to feed the speed. <coughs> Oh, offload's good, but Clears Court got themselves in the channel, but they played that ball on the floor. 11 offside. They need to be careful. They don't go even further down. Oh, you've got to make tackles like that. It's a lovely step, but there were three Clears Court defenders. No match for the one Dartford attacker. And they lead for the first time in the match. All happens very quickly, doesn't it? They'll be back up to seven now. Oh, that Red, kick's not making kick. the highlights real, is it? Thirty seconds. In Life. fact, they're not up to seven at all. It was a change they were making. Referees saying Doesn't that they are. Too many in front. Still down to six for another 30 seconds. I warned you. All offside at the kickoff, though. So Clears Court taking the direct route. But then the extra roll. Dartford now with some space out on the left-hand side. It's well covered, but you miss a tackle and you will get put away. Great finish. First the strength, then the explosion of speed. And that will probably see the end to this contest. Clears court brave for the first half, but the yellow card has put paid to them in this match. The conversion added, and he has booted that an absolute mile. So there will be slight delay in play, which means we'll have another chance to take a look at this magnificent finish. Just that step inside. Last defender overcommits. Yeah, there's not enough space. And we have found another ball. Excellent stuff. You good? I go asking for a picture, Aaron. Go on after me. Ball's alive. Oh my god, it's bent over. 12-24. <laughs> Clears court. Not really had a sniff in the second half. That's a lovely ball over the top. Oh, not that lovely, just forward. Intent was there. Good intent as well, but thwarted by the referee's eagle eyes. Quickly, David, David. Crouch! Still lots of great rugby to look forward to here on pitch RE1. Not that I'm wishing this Set. one away at all. Oh, oh that's been knocked on. Maybe one last chance, a converted try here. Good set. Gents, hold drive for the last contest up for the last couple of minutes. Crouch! Next up, Sidcock School against Portsmouth Grammar. Set! Absolutely crazy that only three games remaining after this. Sidcock School versus Portsmouth Grammar, Barton Peverill Crouch. College against Gordon's. Fine. We'll be hearing the Gordon's Set. Pipers again. <laughs> and then Newcastle and the Lime against Seven Oaks, the men of Kent. Over there, where I'm pointing. Thank you. 
another nicely delayed pass. Oh, the offload so close, so close to being excellent. Into the last minute we go. And now clears college. Oh, that looks like it's gone forward and it's got into touch. And that was probably the last remaining chance for Clears Court. Particularly now as Dartford Grammar continue into the 22. Oh, it's been turned over and then left behind and then fumbled. And it is a chaotic final few phases. Are we going to have time for the restart? Yes, says the referee. Mark's there, Jones. Crouch! Bye! Last Set. attack of the game, clears court. Got the short side and there's no defender there. Nice step inside, really nice step inside, but the commitment by Dartford to get back and make that tackle. Needs to be quick now, player still offside, that fumble won't help. And that's some great defensive right, energy and the clear out, absolutely monstrous. Good step inside, acceleration, oh, just ran out of ground. Leave it, leave it. But there's no defender there. For Dartford, Clears Court will go in. Will they have time to convert and restart? If so, we might have one of those good old fashioned grandstand finishes. Take the kick, chop, chop, get on with it. We do have time to restart. Here we go, Clears Court 19, Dartford yeah, 24. Our top, clock is ticking towards 15 minutes. Out of the game. That's why I keep calling you. And this last now, play. absolutely massive. Last play. We've not had a last play winner yet. Oh, this restart is huge. Needs to be high. It needs to be hanging. It needs to be in Clears Court hands. Oh, it's a bit deep, but here is the chase. They can let it bounce. Where's it going to bounce? This is huge. The offload. Clears Court are under the post and they're going to have a kick to win it. Remarkable scenes. They were down and out to 24 12. They were down to six men. And they have defeated Dartford Grammar School to end there. Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens with a victory that will live long in the memory. The final two plays, the final two tries, and a two point victory in the game of the day. Clears Court School 26, Dartford Grammar 24.
But how do you follow that absolute nerve shredder here on RE1? Claire's caught with a moment to savor on day one on RE1, no less. Well, the Vars continues to progress and we edge ever closer to the elimination round. But first, we got to settle things in Group N between Sitka and Portsmouth Grammar School. Portsmouth Grammar School playing in red and black hoops and in possession and in the hands of Ed Fraser. Big one for them as well, because victory means they are three from three and on the way. Early tackle if I just black. And, and they're in for a score. George Gregory, the man to get it done. Well, what a start. George Gregory, in he goes. With some beautiful handling here, Joe. Got a Portsmouth Grammar School team sheet here. That little dummy from George Gregory, absolutely sensational. Um, I think somebody has tried to write some stuff here for I some useful in information for commentators, and they've realised it's not useful at watch. all, and they've crossed it out. Well, I'd be inclined to disagree because Ed Fraser apparently is known as the enforcer. Well, Archie Ross is known as the lanky enforcer. <laughs> <laughs> Two different brands of enforcing. Yeah, I know which one I'd rather. Approach, bind, set. To Sidcott, there's chance That's for possession, but totally dominated in the scrub. Guys, weeding too much. Same ball. Talking Blue earlier, ball. Joe, about uh, we talk about the players and how hard it is. Tough going for the referees as well, isn't it? Blue ball again. Long, long five days for our referees who are here giving it beans for the entirety of the various Crouch. competitions and an amazing Bind. community amongst Set. them as well. I know they enjoy it as much as the players out there. Catch Big the squeeze black. coming on at the scrum from Portsmouth and they've turned this ball over. Another dummy in midfield, creates the space and that'll be another try. First phase from perhaps some unexpected ball as well. Rain Ney out there on the edge. His brother Jack is playing. There's a little bit of information. Uh, I'm sure both of them will be on camera. And we'll let you make the decision as to who you prefer visually. But Rain can certainly finish. Yeah, when you turn the ball over in your own scrum, you know you're going to be in trouble. That last pass was gorgeous. Perfectly timed, perfectly weighted and put into an area that Rain Ney had no choice but to accelerate onto. Didn't break stride. Love that last pass. They Joe Smitherton, great restart, and it's back in the PGS hands. Oh, the reach out and grab! And the fend! And the finish! Chop that one up and put it on no socials. No the ball. Oh, he's knocked it on! <laughs> oh, perfection, ruined. Unfortunately, that's going to be chopped up and put on socials for a different reason. He'd done all the hard work, he'd woven okay, the magic, the then he scampered yeah. through, and then he got too casual. Let's take a look. Crouch. Ah, oh, fuck me, Five. Daddy. Set. Well, apologies for, I think, an Atmos mic has gone rogue. <laughs> so apologies for that. I'm not sure who's got a hold of that. I can tell you exactly who it was because the thing with these young lads is they say things like that into microphones whilst we're in their school's tops. Shouldn't do that, boys. Good job we're not grasses, eh, Burnsy? Well, 15 nil. All, the, all detracting as well from another try for PGS and also unable to kind of deconstruct that moment of real brilliance and we couldn't see the grounding because of the camera angle and another player in the way but real uh, shame that that one's now. not going to stand 
They need to get it from that side. Someone should get the ball. Well, the delay in play here again because they've uh, taken the conversion. It's gone over the perform better tent. So someone's got to take the long way round. Lots going on in the perform better tent. They've got static bikes, they've got weights. They're next to Cardiff Met as well. They were doing a load of skills and strength testing for the prospective students. And it's the sort of thing that the young players really want to get involved in. Yeah, yeah, I can I can bench more than you, I can Just jump higher than you, I can cycle faster than you. All the while the coaches are like, don't do that, lads. We've got three games today. Just just calm yourselves. I think a day's high octane sevens would yep. be sufficient for me without <laughs> trying to hit a PB on the squat rack. PGS 15 nil to the good. That's not going to bounce 10 meters or carry 10 meters. And therefore, Sidcock can have a little bit of possession. They've had a tough opening five minutes to this one. It's a very good Portsmouth Grammar School team. Tackle off the ball, Black. And a no, very in the good side. Dominant Advantage collision. blue in the side, Black. But in at the side, so a penalty advantage here advantage for Yardiba. Sidcock. Well, the penalty advantage didn't last long, did it? About 15 metres sideways. Portsmouth Grammar School coming forward again through Henry Lankford, the playmaker, another lovely ball off the left hand to release Ray Ney, Ray Ney, oh, tackled by his own feet, but he wasn't held, so he can go again. And there is no stopping that young man, a one-handed take, a two-man overlap, not needed, under the post once more, this time it's Jack Ney. Both Ney brothers, go that side, go. the naysayers, four scores. And this Portsmouth side looked very, very good indeed. Twenty-two nil. Simple conversion. Here's the gas man, Rayne, just tumbling through and back to his feet. Then heads up, looking to put some width on, and up popped his brother Jack, and ports of grammar, making nay while the sun shines. Let's go, Black. Let's go, guys. Straight down the middle with the restart then. Last 30 seconds of the half. A challenging half off. for Sidcock, to say the least. Offloading well out of the tackle, though. It's a little bit narrow. Offload to ground and then a speculative toe. Fine, Tens offside, backwards. but got away with it. You then plays feet, it on the floor. The ground, you can't play the ball. Love that offer of a dummy kick there. Just that sort of variety of skills, especially when PGS are pressing so much. Love that handling from Henry Langford. They've uh, mastered that outstretched hand and he goes again and gets it away once, then twice. This glorious, glamorous offloading off. from Portsmouth Grammar School. You've lost blue. These I'm young men have got hands black. like shovels. Oh, and that is threaded in behind. The finish is one thing, the assist. We're completely done. different <laughs> and the try will stand look at that five scores <laughs> Couple been converted to half time and Portsmouth Grammar heading for three wins out of three in group N 27-0 
second half. Sidcut under the pump because this Portsmouth Grammar School team Stay on. Stay running on. it from everywhere, thoroughly enjoying themselves too, even just passing it out of the back for fun. Decent pressure. However, pressure leads to missed tackles. Missed tackles lead to opportunities like this. Big gaps, confident finishes. More tries. That's six already. Just 30 seconds of the second half gone, and Portsmouth Grammar extend the lead. Yeah, Jake Wood there, just spotting the gap, and he used that word confident, and it really did look like that. As soon as the gap was there, didn't hesitate, stretched his legs. And again, PGS doing really well to keep the ball alive, keep it away from contact and that breakdown area, finding the bit of wit. And he had the extra man outside because Henry Collins was holding his wit. It meant the defender had a choice to make. He drifted wide and then Jake Wood cantered home. Right, Sidcup receiving that kickoff. Really winding up for that pass, but talked a lot about the attack of Portsmouth Grammar School. They look pretty organised in defence as well, don't they? Oh, that one's off the head. Knock on now, advantage black. Advantage over. I like this referee. Doesn't deal in advantages, saying get on with it. Although, when Portsmouth Grammar School get on with it, this is often the result. Try time once again. And this could end up being a pretty early mercy killing for Sidcut. And the games are hit 50. They've called them a day. Portsmouth, they hit 42 against Cedars. Cathedral School, Llandaff, that was a bit more of a contest, but still a 20-point victory in Portsmouth Grammar School. Absolutely cruising to the top of Group N. No extras added, but Monty Rothwell finishing off a sweeping mood. Their ability to reorganise themselves in transition, you see that back line, back pedalling, working hard to get behind the ball so that all six options are available for the person in command of the pill. Jack Nay scampered back, Monty Rothwell scampered back, and then he streamed forward for the finish. Really nice sevens from PGS, feasting off the errors of their opposition. But those errors, as you said, they've come off immense pressure defensively from PGS. So they are seven at PGS, no sign of a sweeper, which if you do get breached could be a problem, but there is no sign 14. of them getting breached so far. Ten minutes so gone. Guys. Still a lot of time left here. And there they are, challenging, probing in behind Sidcott, but PGS there, but then advantage. fumbling. And advantage. Yeah. Advantage there. That was knocked on scrum. Knock on spotted, so some territory for Sidcott. Well, you spotted it there, D. Rog. No sweeper at home, so absolutely the right call, especially like when you're on your own 10 metre line because you can put a Come big boomer breath. up and back your pace, Come back your breath. gas men to go charging after it. You've got loads of the field to work with. We never finished Cross. the chat earlier about why you're Five. a fan of the shallow sweep. Six. Yeah, so I like a shallow sweeper, so you have six up and you have a sweeper, but they're shallow in behind that six and they just surf behind. See, there's, well, it's not going to get picked up by the shallow What's sweeper the there. There was sort of like a hint of one corner flagging behind the back line and Monty well, going sort of slaloming through, but it means if there's a low chop tackle, the sweeper can then dive in. He's a breakdown threat. That's the uh, that's the threat of the shallow sweeper. But also, you've also got a bit more depth in case a kick goes over the top. Yeah, I like it. I wonder if we'll see more of that as the week progresses. This is more lovely, confident carry. And this is so much fun to watch and so difficult for Sidcott School to defend. It's another brilliant score. George Gregory had a fabulous one in the first half. He has... Run a muck in the second. Showing it one way, showing the other, hypnotizing Sidcut defenders with the ball. Well, little did we know, Portsmouth is on the Fijian archipelago. <laughs> One handed manipulation. 
moving the defenders from side to side. Check this out. This is not out of the training manual. This is not what the teachers say to do. One hand, high risk, but high reward in terms of moving the opposition around, the dexterity and control. That's a great restart as well. Oh, it's gone forward. Good night, Rogers. That's rock, John. Everyone's watching. Everyone's watching. Correct, referee. Everyone is watching all around the world, and it's great to have you company. Still more great rugby to come here. Time coming up to 20 to 4 local time. Next up, Barton Peverill okay. College against Gordon School. Bind. Set. There's one here. Tackle release. Last chance for Sidcock to get backwards. something, anything from this game. One more score. Tackle, move tackle and on. It'll no be hands. mercy. It'll be 50 up. Advantage for size black. Well, black are offside. Offside. There is one. All of you off. Yeah, you're fine. Have you, and by extension, we just been rejected by Great Britain Seven's Tom Mitchell? Penalty. Yeah, tried to get Olympic silver medalist Tom Mitchell to come play, up and join us for co-commentary, but he's too big time now. Too big time. Oh, that's intercepted. And it will be 50. A hard-earned 50. That one of the simpler scores. But huge credit to this Portsmouth Grammar School team. They have put Sidcut to the sword, but they have given us bags of entertainment to hit the half-century. Nine tries, the clock hits 14. This will take us up to 55. And we'll draw an end on this game. It's three wins from three for PGS. Top of the tree for them. The full-time score, Sidcut nil. Portsmouth Grammar, 55. The action continues to come thick and fast in the under-18s Vars, and this one is between Gordon School, who piped the first match onto the pitch with their marching band earlier this morning, up against Barton Perryvale College. Barton Perryvale College, 1-1, one, one, lost one. Same goes for Gordon, so there's a lot riding on this one. Never left it, as far never as Group it. S is concerned. And Bart Perryvale are on the ball and really showing a lovely turn of pace and a glide through the gap. Off they go. An early score to open proceedings. Fine, fine work. Down that right flank. Winner of Group D, St. Peter's York. They'll play on RE2. Winner of Group E, Dollar Academy. Play the Bart Perryvale. What a lovely three. score, Tom Allen the winner of, group G, of the Trojans, the winner of skating Allen. through. On RE4. 
the winners of Group I, Kings Grantham, will play the winners of Group J, Newhall, on RE5, and the winners of Group K, Bishop Wordsworth, will play the winners of Group L, Amplehall, on RE6. Uh, those first elimination games at 4.20. The restart into the hands of Gordons, who feed a lot of talent to Harlequin through their academy system. So you can expect very, very decent players out there competing. Gordons, smart hands, great pace onto the ball. And look at the athleticism, the way that he drove to the line. But a really good tackle coming in on Freddie Kay. Noah Slay, tricky customer, takes Gordon to the 10. <laughs> counter up. Got a roll. No roll from the tackler. So Gordon's tap and go. Back. Slips through the grasp of the hands. It's really Back. well recovered. And then the pass, but again, not held. Tommy Aston puts boot to ball and Tom Allen, the try scorer, is dancing around Tottenham in not good. a lot of space with a lot of black jerseys around him. Ah, oh, Gordons, they find a way. The backdoor boogie sets free. Big Harvey Cloak. <laughs> and Gordons have a try to level things up underneath the sticks. It was. The narrowest of losses against Dauncey's for Gordon to open up the day. 15-12, they went down. It means that Dauncey's, who defeated Barton Perryvale, 35-24. They're in command of their own destiny as they go up against Colf School elsewhere. So really for both these sides, mantra is go hard, win these, win this game and hope. Hope for a favour from Colf. Oh no, hoping for a favour when he got pace like that. Wriggling free. Reese Davies from the kickoff from the 22 into the corner. <laughs> a try to savour for Reese Davies and Barton Perryvale College. Thirty seconds. Well, they like it down that right edge, don't they? Like a bullet train on one rail. Show, go, gone. The Barton Perryville flyer. This team from Hampshire containing a number of Trojan players who won Back off the Hampshire Cup in 2023. And look at those feet. Good tackle, low chop needed to happen. And then that's a little bit more elusive. This is the glide of Tom Allen that we saw in the opening score. Hesitated about where he wanted to go, but he finds Davis who then the head, play on. finds the head of Gabe Mullins. Another lad in the Hampshire squad. Gordon's in coffin corner, looking to crowbar Not their held. way out. Up and down, not held. Tom Harper goes again. Not held! Again, not held in the tackle. You're high. And the high tackle comes. Sam Mason looks lively. Looks like he wants to drive the tempo. One-handed carry from Freddie Kay. He uses that one hand to pop it up off the floor. And the nitro healed Tom Prosser. Leaves the Barton Perryville boys for dust. <laughs> what a turn of pace. What a try to re-establish the lead and stretch it that little bit more with another conversion from underneath the uprights. Barton Perryville, 10, Gordon's 14. Look at this for a burst. 
Wow. Into the hands of Evan Jeremiah. Oh, searing pace on offer from Ben Bryant. And off go Barton Perivel. Back in the hands of Jeremiah. Love this composure, the one-handed stuff, moving the defence around from Price Jones. And then the snappy hands and then the snappy heels of Ollie Burrell. <laughs> Into the corner, this Barton Perryville side. They know where the try line is. Really exploring the extremities of RE1. Exclusively scoring with wit. And another try, a third one. And the lead changes hands again. <laughs> Fabulous conversion attempt, sails wide. But we got ourselves a one-point game. Barton Perryville College, 15. Gordon's 14. Cracky match we got on our hands here on RE1 is the sun breaks free through the slightly leaden afternoon clouds for the first time since this morning. It's been a dry day, started sunny. Play Gordon's on! Need the sun to shine on their sevens here. They trail by a point. They decide to play the kickoff. It doesn't go the 10, perfectly legal, means it's game on. And they're going to the edge this time. That's where Bart and Perryville have proven themselves to be so deadly. That's real power out there. Great carry, but the Not one handed carry comes with risks. And Harvey Cloak no advantage. sees it slip from his grasp. Hand Knock. up in acknowledgement. Scrum here, blue ball. Seen a lot of this. A lot of this one handed play. Obviously, big Fijian fans. And who couldn't be? But does mean that the ball can become dislodged with greater ease. Crouch. Bind. <coughs> Gents, that call was bind, not set, OK? So don't come together and push. Wait for the call. Crouch. Bind. Set. It's out. Off go Barton Perryville. They spot a bit of room and They've got real pace, haven't they? And it's set free. 
Zach Sinclair, under immense pressure, does well to loosen it up to one of his teammates. Oh, and then the high tackle comes in just when they had been where they wanted them. Tom Cross are the one to get caught round the net. So an escape for Gordons, but still they've got a fair way to go if they're to fully escape. And handling like that will do very nicely when it comes to unlocking the gate and the horse bolting. Brilliant tackle, low around the hips. The offload coming, but it misses the support man. Chance for Bob Perival. One tackle. Five. Yeah, you're right. Mate, head straight into his head. Okay, I know you were dipping. Still dangerous though. Off you go. Yellow card. Sure. Yellow card given to Zach Sinclair. Hold but on, an hold awkward on. coming together. Yeah, yeah. The referee was right on it. Acknowledge the mitigation. A yellow card. In rugby sevens, two minutes. That time will be served from now. Great opportunity for Barton Perryville. Gordon's now forced to play with six up, no sweeper, but they managed to scamper back. And they'll have their chance to attack. Lovely weaving skating run. One more step, but a good hit round the hips. Gordon's using their physicality, backing their strength. Oh, just going off his feet on that jackal what do you mean, attempt. Good? You just lost it forward. Scrum here, black Ben ball. Bryant, I had a clear Knock. demonstration that he wasn't involved in the tackle. Pounced on the ball, then he lost his feet and knocked it on. So, a little bit unlucky. Marks over there. For the number three. The precision uh, over and name of the game in sevens. Uh, three and a half. Especially when you lead by the most slender Crouch. of margins. One point. Find. Set. Hold. Gordon's driven off. And Barton Perivelt will look to strike in transition. Ball's loose. They lose that momentum. Oh, thunderous hit in from behind and then pouncing on the ball. It's out. Ball out, the yellow card ticking away, and Gordon sensing an opportunity to strike. Lovely slip out of the tackle. One more to the edge. This is better from Gordon's. You have the ball in Tom Harper's hands. He's now in at half back, throwing away. He's got what a penalty. Run out there. 15 seconds 17, left on the roll. yellow card. Wait, it's there. Back onto the field comes there, Evan Jeremiah. Added some real pace, some real danger when he came on, but he's defending now with Gordon's with six. He's not held. Trailing by a point, not held in the tackle. So he goes again. Off to the left. Cloak. Tackled again. Appleton. Oh, the tackle's falling off, and then the ball is to the crucial moment. Barton Perryville have possession. They advantage still got over. this one advantage. Beautiful slip backwards. And then the stop. Then the restart. Then first gear into even, second, even, even. into the kick. And the ball bouncing free. Exhausted bodies and minds out there. They need to play to the whistle. But the touchline will beat them all. Card can come back. And a lung busting Card passage come comes back. to a close. Still no points in this second half, and only two minutes left to go. That's your mark. Blue, I need a hooker. I need a hooker in the channel. Gordon's back to the full complement and in the hands of the man who's just had two minutes on the touchline, Zach Sinclair forces an offload back inside. 
A real scramble on the floor, but Sinclair's there. Gets caught round the net. Just as Still he breaks high. free, the whistle goes. Anxious times for both these sides. 60 seconds left. Barton Perryville. The team in command on the scoreboard. Gone back. Timing off on the switch, but gone back to the mercy. He's released. Of That's Gordon's. Fine. Oh, they're flirting with the touchline. They go to the boot. There's only one man chasing. Barton Perryville. Go route one into the challenge. Really fractured field here at the moment. Again, the kick. Again, the chase. This time a little bit more room. But the touchline on once advantage. again the winner. But a knock on. Knock Over on now. In the effort to keep it in play. And off goes Gordon's. This could be the moment. This could be the game. Runs over the last man. Then the cover comes across. Matador's one tackle. Transfers it to Cloak. Out the back door. Into the arms of Mitchell Newell. <laughs> A try that's covered every blade of grass and been through every set of hands of both sides in the process. But it's Gordon's and it's Mitchell Newell who's won this game at the death. Yeah? Yeah. A gutting conclusion for Barton Perryville College, who played their part in a hugely entertaining match there. But it is Gordon's. They're the victors. And it's because of this man right here, Mitchell Newell, almost did it all alone. He needed a bit of help. Up popped Harvey Cloak. And that little one-two was enough to unlock that stubborn Barton Perryville defence one last time. Steal the match for Gordon's. Relentless action on pitch RE1 at the Howden Rossen Park National School Sevens 2024. It is now the turn of Seven Oaks in the red and white hoops against Newcastle under Lime in black and red, who we saw miss out in a very tight and very entertaining game earlier here on RE1 to Queggs Wakefield. And I can tell you that this is a very, very tight group indeed. Seven Oaks have gone well. Seven Oaks, in fact, are undefeated. But they squeaked past Queggs Wakefield 
And you wouldn't bet against Newcastle underline backing themselves to come away with a victory that could make things really, really interesting here in Group V. <laughs> Penalty awarded to Seven Oaks. Just rummaging around for some team sheets, which have been misplaced slightly. But Seven Oaks are on the ball and they're taking their eye off that very ball. Just a momentary lapse in the midfield. A tense match this. We love these ones. These are the ones, the must wins. Seven Oaks, they know, get a W here. They've got some elimination action to come. Crouch. Newcastle need the Bye. W to keep the dream alive. Set. Nice feet from the Geordie lads. Backwards. That's not Geordie. No, sorry, not Geordie. Release. Good it's work. a long day, long day from the Newcastle underlime lads. Mixing my lines and my times. But here they come, Newcastle boys. Firing their way up to the 22. Bit of whip being offered, but bit of whip not being used because there's an avenue just tight and narrow. Great doggedness to get up and go for more. Black jerseys queuing up on the right hand side. Seven Oaks boys racing across to try and resource the threat. And they almost do, in fact, they do. They cinch together away. and envelop that final man. It's really tetchy as well at the breakdown. Oh, Shoot. there's a reach. But he's short. Does so well to then reel it back in. Whip, whip. Instead, they go back inside. Then they bring the pace and then three jerseys swamp him. Still, they can't find a way across. Newcastle on the line, surely they have to score now. It's epic defence from Seven Oaks. Seven. Seven Oaks for this set deserve to defend their line, but eventually the pressure tells and a crack forms and Newcastle Underlime are in for the opener. Well, it had to happen, didn't it, for Newcastle Underlime? If you keep your heads, if you keep your discipline, you're going to score it. But heroic defending from Seven Oaks. I mean, that tackle there, absolutely remarkable. And then this one, if it went, they were in, but they want to score close to the post. They want to get the seven pointer. Eventually, it was a good pass and the straighten up and the final defender. It was so narrow. Heroic defense by Seven Oaks. However, they still find themselves 7 0 down, but they will want to build off that, build off that massive effort. And now, halfway through the first half, it's their turn to get their hands on the ball until Newcastle underline are over it, turning it over, and they can go again. Uh, Newcastle underline pirouetting quite brutally <laughs> out of these seven eight challenges, and the whistle goes oh. immediately. Seven eight, get set, get ready, stay alive. Stay Fairly stay an stay awkward coming together, no malice, but. Safety first as ever. And it being a head knock means quite rightly they'll be sent to the touchline and a new man will come on in black and red. I'm not going to get into permutations because my maths yeah, isn't, we haven't got the abacus, have we? isn't a stellar standard to Time decipher that. And also the fact that it's dependent on Quegg's result against St. Cecilia's Church of England Five. School. Set. But feasibly, three teams could end on two wins here. Newcastle under Lyme at the moment searching for that second win. And at the moment, in control, leading 7 0. Oh, that pop was enterprising, but forward.
Well, that juggle just Onside. opened up the organs, didn't it? Wears a heavy shoulder to the midriff at Newcastle Art. But then they get too close to the touchline. They run out of room to line out to 7 8. Attacking wise, they've not resourced pick particularly well, but defensively, despite the fact they're behind in this game, Seven Oaks have been impressive. And that is a lovely pick up to open the door from the line out. Fresh green pastures ahead, but a herd of rugby players chasing him down. Oh, what awareness, what dexterity. A lightness of touch again shown off the floor. There are so many men, there's so much room. Oh, why? He straightens, he has to finish because he's taken it on himself, which he does. Well, if it's possible to eat some words, I'm about to, because less than a minute ago, I said Seven Oaks haven't done anything to resource their attack. That was absolutely brilliant from the pickup off the bootstraps from the loose line on all the way through to the awareness to slow down, find the offload, and eventually dot down after splitting the two defenders. Is One of the happening? tries of the day from Seven Oaks, unfortunately. The conversion misses, so they're still behind. But this spidey senses, known where his teammates are, and again, just floating that one over the top of the would-be defender. And as you pointed out, Joe, he had to score, because if you commit when you've got a man outside, you have to make it count, and Seven Oaks did. Five points to seven. And with under a minute to go until half-time, that dogged defending has meant that they can get themselves back into the game. Newcastle underline with 30 seconds and a bit of change on the clock here on RE1. They don't need to be forcing passes like that on their own 22 in the dying embers of this half. And they might get punished here by Seven Oaks. They keep it alive, they keep it from the touchline. Great pick up, allowed the ball to bounce. The knock-on advantage has been served. So Seven Oaks, last roll of the attacking dice of the half. They keep the ball alive. They start skating to the sides. Then a dummy, then an explosion off the heels, and then the score to take the lead right on the half-time hooter. Take from behind. Well, the building blocks are put in place at the start of the half, but the two opportunities they've had in the last minute or so of this first half turn this game on its head. The patience there by Seven Oaks, absolutely exceptional. Really, really impressive. Didn't panic on the 22. They knew they had the clock on their side. They knew it was the last play of the half. And getting second touches in phase play is absolutely massive. Not letting the ball die, not taking the tackle, not forming the ruck and then Eventually, defenders get tired, they lose their shape. And when the gaps appear, it's just up to Seven Oaks to exploit them, which they have twice at the end of the first half to lead Newcastle under line by seven points to 12. You two come in.
Well, Newcastle under line. Perseverance got them the lead. Now they need a little bit of ball, a little bit of territory, and they're chasing the game for the first time, and they're about to be chasing it even more. What a start to this second half. A moment of individual brilliance and a finish to match as Seven Oaks is three tries in three minutes either side of half time to take complete control of this game. 17 7, conversion to come. Good afternoon. Oh, and that was magnificent. It is an unforgiving game. Nineteen seven. Boys versus Watch this straight from the kickoff. If there's a soft shoulder, oh yeah, the defender just lost his footing. on RE6. Uh, those elimination matches getting underway at 4.20. Well, now Newcastle and the line really chasing the game, really needing something. They've got a penalty advantage, which quickly becomes the long arm of the law. Advantage. Another advantage for not being ten. So Seven Oaks discipline, costing them a touch. Advantage over. Oh, it's a good fend and a good cover tackle. Doing very well to stay Inside. in field. The Newcastle under line man. Seven Oaks drifting in defence. Newcastle under line surveying the options. There's no gap up the middle. Counter good. Oh, Newcastle under line finding opportunity. No Seven Oaks again, really organised in defence. This has been a hallmark of their performance here on pitch RE1. Newcastle under line looking for gaps that aren't there, but then they are with a shimmy and a shake, but no offload. That one whipped across, the missed pass creates a two on two. And another skip away, another cover tackle. Oh, it's millimetre stuff, but now it will be Newcastle under line in for their second try, and a quality try at that. Important conversion in coming too. Anywhere in line with the 15, okay. They could really do with this to make it a five-point game. Oh, it's just, just wide. Another look at the try. Yeah, this was the main carry, wasn't it? Slipping off the tackle. This creates the space in behind Seven Oaks then. When they've had time to set, they've made massive one-on-one -on -one tackles. Good afternoon. Confirmation of the second round of under-18 bars elimination matches scheduled at 4.14. The winners of Group M. Bryce College will play the winners. 12-19, that, that one's gone backwards, says the referee. Uh, the winners of Group O. And Seven Oaks the can launch their assault on the line, looking and for the, the fourth try. That's a good ball, and the wraparound. Now it's a three-on-one, and they're not going to need the two outside, because, oh, the ankle tap, superb! And Newcastle on the line, just the about, hands. hang on! <laughs> Well, the referee is going to give a penalty. He's going to show a yellow card as well. Newcastle under line. They're going to be down to six. Hands on the floor first, killing the ball. Yep, whenever you are. And Seven Oaks. Oh, well, they'll go in unopposed. That wasn't how it was supposed to end. The Newcastle under line. They're down to six players. They're down 24 12 with the conversion to come. Versus Seaford College. Uh, that's the under 16 girls late final. RE1 at 440. Conversion Rins unsuccessful. Versus Seaford College. But 11 and a half minutes gone, and Seven Oaks. Well, I think a big difference between the two teams is that Seven Oaks set and they make a tackle there. The organisational difference between the two teams in that similar situation. 
quite stark. Four tries to two. Seven Oaks ring the changes. Two minutes to go. That's a lovely nudge. No quick, no quick. <laughs> Referee did say they couldn't take it quickly. This is a call, please, for the team in the girls under-16 tournament uh, who left their bags at the ASA control quarter cabin. Uh, could you return to collect those, please? Uh, no, and that's in behind. Who left their bags Gathered at the up the by the red and white. Uh, please, could you return leave to collect those, with all for the offload, too. Approaching the final minute, Newcastle and the Lime looking tired, defending tired. Seven Oaks freely offloading. <laughs> and putting this one to bed. A vociferous group of supporting parents away to our left. Thoroughly enjoyed that one. Surely puts it beyond any doubt now. Newcastle and the Lime coming to the end of their yellow card period. seconds that's the same time for the bin as well final few seconds of this one then Newcastle underline 12, 7 Oaks, 31. Newcastle under line deservedly took the lead, but since then it has largely belonged to the men in red and white. Release. They played some great stuff. It was all built on great defence, but now a big gap up the middle. And Newcastle under line will get the last score and will end on a high. And that is full time. A try fest. Eight in total. Five of them to Seven Oaks School. They defeated Newcastle under line. 31 points to 19. We're still going here Off at the Hampton Russell Park National School Sevens. Coming towards the end of what has been a brilliant under 18s Vars, and perhaps Jess Dubai are about to score the individual try of the day. That is absolutely brilliant. 30 seconds gone. 
There's a handling error from Bedford. It coughs up the ball in the most innocuous of positions, but there are no innocuous positions when there are these kind of deadly finishers around. A tough conversion uh, if from over on the left touchline, but tries like that deserve the extra two. Oh, and this has got a chance. Not only has it got a chance, it has snuck inside. 7-0. And Jess Dubai. Well, look at this, you switch off for a second, a slight error. You get handed off and then it's a foot race to the corner, a long race as well. There's only ever going to be one winner. Uh, Jess, seven, Bedford, Bays. Modern, uh, nil. Oh, and that's been knocked on. There's a big challenge, uh, travelling contingent from Jess as well, over on the far side, banging the boards, making a racket. And those uh, extra supporters, well, they can make a big difference. Find, set. So Bedford. Steady. Coughed the ball up twice. And Jess in a very, very favourable position, looking for try number two. Dummy in the switch inside. A little dummy. And the offload's a good one. Well, that have been ripped, but it's come back in to Jess' hands. Bedford Modern really struggling. And that ball drifts a bit forward, a bit wayward. Play on. And out. Oh, not quite out on the far side because Bedford Modern have gone quickly here. Two and a half minutes gone. Oh, suggestion of a high tackle. Referee happy enough to play on. And now Bedford with their first attacking ball of the day. Happy enough to take that one into contact, but it's been coughed up. And it's been coughed up, and Jess back into the 22. The offloading game, good. Need to be aware of that touchline over on the far Hold side. Out, well turned over. It's been a good response from Bedford for falling behind, but yet to make any inroads. In the Jess half. Oh, that was close. Could be about to get a bit closer. Good step on the Jess sweeper. And that was almost happening in slow motion as they scoped each other out. Oh, but it's been left behind. And now Bedford. Well, oh, look like they could be in trouble. No, no, no. No turnover. It's a three on two here, but they put it on the toe. The school from Dubai with no one really giving chase. now and it's a good chase in the end Bedford find themselves back inside their own 22 this is a, a lung busting period of play and they very often end in tries it's whoever's got the most lungs here as opposed to the most legs there's the inside pass now they back the pace last ditch tackle the ball's gone forward and the defense will be rewarded with a put in at the scrum that is a big moment in the first half and it remains Bedford nil, just seven. Lads, fuck it. Probably a pretty good Crouch, bind, set. Is there another try in this first half? And if so, who's it going to go to? Jess opting to drop it on the toe again. They have got some quick boys and they're favourites for the foot race, but the scramble now, Hands away. ends up black and red. <laughs> well, this is being played at a tremendous pace. And there are a few tired tackles, or attempts at tackles at least, as. Bedford go in search of their first try of the match, and does it come here? That's oh, another excellent try saving tackle. But are we just delaying the inevitable? There's the step inside, the offload's good, and now 
Can they put some width on it? Oh, they stopped when they needed to go there, Bedford. But eventually, the last pass is the good one. Draws in two defenders, delivers the killer blow, and it's Bedford Modern 5, Jess Dubai 7. Oh, this is a good game. This is an exhausting game. Still a minute of this first half to go. This is the kick to level the scores. Oh, it's unsuccessful. Not quite. Just under a minute. Still time in the half. Yeah, at that point, I thought it might have been done, but... He's targeting that last defender, that last defender's inside shoulder to create the space for the winger to go in and oppose. Well, that's a bit messy. In and out of the scrum nice and quickly. A bit of balance to bamboozle the defender. And now Jess with the switch inside, then back outside again. Oh. It's loose, but it's gone backwards. And now it's Jess who are inviting the pressure on themselves when it was Bedford Modern at the start of this first period. Oh, that's another good step. Hands away, Black! Now, Jess Dubai. This will be the last attack of the half. Well, who's going to end up with the ball? Somebody's clung on to that for ages, and Bedford Modern have wrestled their way back into this half. And this is going to be a yellow card for Jess, not 10. Playing the ball carrier, it's a cynical foul. And they're going to end this half and start the next one with six. Will Bedford be able to go in at half time with a lead? This is a big moment in this game. The charge down the middle, the offload is good. So's the try. On the replay, the dive won't be nearly as cool as he thought it was, but they all count for five points. And Bedford Modern have come from 7 0 down to lead 10 7 with the conversion to come. Yep completely changing this game on its head because Jess Dubai were largely in charge of the first three minutes but now could find themselves five points down do find themselves five points down as the referee's whistle goes for half time Yeah. 
afternoon from RE Control, the 440 round of fixtures. On pitch RE1 is the under-16 girls plate final. Uh, Grin Kelenov versus Seacrest College. And then in the boys under 18s Vars, first elimination round. On RE2, Price College versus Portsmouth Grammar School. On RE3, Worth versus St Edward's School. And on RE4, Peter Simmons versus Grammar School at Leeds. Uh, those matches do to get under Away we go then, 12-7. Another brilliant contest in coming. And Jess Dubai kind of run out of steam a little bit. Certainly got the quality to continue off. Bedford Modern. Looking for try number three. Oh, that's a lovely dummy to try and create some space. And they have had some top-class players and coaches going through Bedford Modern in the past, but more on that later, because this is a pump of the legs, a pump of the arms, and it might be a pump of the fist in celebration of a great try. Oh, Bedford Modern. Inside the first minute of the second half, getting another wonderful individual try. And they have been punished, have Jess, in this yellow card period. Chris Heapy with a couple of tries. A big hello to one of those great coaches they've had in the past, Rocky Clark. Watching on somewhere beautiful, probably Bedford, but take another look at this. Step in one way, step in the other, and just the strength to get rid of that last tackler. That is a serious score, and that is 19 unanswered points. Or was that sits up? Oh, wow. Advantage to Jess as they're pushed out into touch. Tinley with that third try. Full disclosure, because, you know, we like to be honest with you here on the live stream. We're here all week. We're going to be friends. Bye. Did say a big hello Set. to Rocky Clark then. She used to coach a lot of these Bedford modern boys. And as a result, they haven't given me a team sheet, but she's given me live text updates. So greatly appreciated, Rocky. I'm sure a lot of you who follow the school's game will have heard her commentary with James Roberts as they go in again. Oh, Bedford Modern just taking advantage of the Jess Dubai mistakes and that early optimism from the team that have travelled so far to be here is being extinguished by these boys of Bedford. Time flies when you're having fun, and these Bedford boys are certainly having fun. They've had a good day at it today. This, of course, the elimination round of 64. So Bedford with victories over Ascola Preseli from West Wales, then Haleybury, then Boitsford Sevens Academy. That 22-12 was their best performance of the day. They have racked up the meat pies, though, that's for sure. As for Jemira English Speaking School, they beat Grey Court 10-7, Solihull 17-15, so 2-1 score games before walloping Reading Blue Coat 43-10. But it takes a lot to get to day two. And it's looking more and more like the end of the road for Jumeirah English speaking school. Jess, they need something to happen, and they need it to happen now. 26 7, 26 unanswered points for Bedford Modern. And a little hitch kick. Jess, desperate for something from the referee, they're not getting it. They're just keeping the ball alive, a bed for modern at every opportunity. Is it five? Is it six? Both men having a brilliant game here. And 
31 points to seven. This has turned into a very impressive performance from the boys in black and red. Perhaps their most complete performance. Out of the way, the conversion, please. Of the entire day so far. Although maybe in a closer game, they might need to work on their conversions. So many powerful runners and complete trust in their teammates as well. They know if they offload into an area, then it's going to get there. Hang on, Rocky's telling me she coached them today. I mean, where are you then? Where are you watching from, Rock? EP's had a great game. Yes, let's go, let's go, let's go! Knock on, played offside. Back ten. It's kind of got back to Bedford, surely. Well, that's knocked on. Once, then twice. And in this game, two wrongs don't make a right. Coming towards the last minute. Set. Thirteen minutes gone. Bedford dominating this round of 64. And they just cannot stop scoring. A race to the corner. Six tries to one. Complete dominance in the end. <laughs> Full time. Bedford Modern are into the last 32 of the under 18s of ours. And despite that scoreline, they worked really hard for that. It was a great start from Jamira English speaking school, but Bedford Modern turned the screw, scored some great tries. And they remain on course for day two. The full time score Bedford Modern 36, Jamira English speaking school 7.
first piece of silverware up for grabs in the 2024 Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens is the girls and the 16 plate. This constantly evolving, constantly growing competition. And the plate final is going to be contested between Seaford College taking a knee, taking a moment to unite themselves before aiming to stand on the top step. They are up against Bryn Kellanog, who were doing it for Wales. So Seaford College lost to Haverford West, 17-7, then beat Hayfield School and beat Kingsdale Foundation and beat Blundells. They have been in some close games. As for Bryn Kellanog, We have just got us underway. Two similar kits as Brinkelanog intercept that ball and go into the 22. Seaford falling off tackles, but then ushering Brinkelanog towards the touchline. Seaford offside. Brinkelanog closing in on the game's opening score. It's a double movement, it won't count. So Brinkelanog, they also. Lost again to Jamaira English speaking school. However, then they beat the Barbarians. And they beat them with brilliant carries like that. What a finish! Over in reverse. Dotting it down like Ardi Sarveya in the Japanese league. First blood bring Kilanok. Who have been defensively very stingy since going into the plate competition. So they beat the Barbarians 20-0, they beat, beat Cardinal Newman 22-0. And then beat Robert Clack 38-12. And then Holyrood Academy 33-7. So bring Kalanog, the form team. So Brinkel and Og from Pontypridd, a rugby hotbed for many years. For Seaford, first real chance to attack on, oh, that's been popped up again, and Brinkel and Og looking for try number two in this under 16s plate final. What a strong carry, what a last ditch tackle, but the try will stand. Oh, it's so good. Sweeping forward, taking defenders with it. And just about having the go-go gadget arms to get over. We haven't got that problem, have we? A skull bring Kalanog. Two tries scored out wide, neither converted. Let's have another look at this finish. The offload was good and attacking the ball at pace with momentum, getting that fend in. And then once you've won that collision, a little bit of a pull on the jersey. Isn't going to stop that runaway train. Seaford nil, Brinkel and Og 10. Seaford, that's off a foot, so they can play on. Just looking to move this ball, but they need to straighten up at some point because if it's lateral, then that'll happen. They'll find themselves under duress. And they're going to be under duress as well. From this Brinkel and Og scrum, they are physically a lot bigger, Brinkel and Og. Put in from Seaford College, it's all a little bit too polite, and they've been driven off the ball by Brinkel and Og, who are going in for try number three. It is dotted down, they are disappearing out of sight. 
they have already got one hand on the plate trophy in the Sunday 16 girls competition. And they are good for this lead as well. They have been clinical, brilliant. And they lead Seaford College by 15 points to nil. Well, better strike. It's hit the beans on toast and it's dropped. Great kick. And a reward for the persistence. 17 0. Less than five minutes gone. Seaford College into the final. Being out muscled. There they are, driven off their own ball in the scrum. And Brinkelanog not in the mood to take their foot off the gas. Now Seaford College with the chance, dropping it on the toe, but just running out of room. Nobody put the barriers up on the bowling alley. Okay. Blue, Drifts out for a line out. Black, stay there. Keep the gap, okay? Okay, couple of steps, couple of steps, please. Good afternoon, the five o'clock round of six on RA1, we have the under-16 girls competition cup final. That's Ivy Bridge Community College playing in Millfield School. Brink and have gone to the front. They've realised how and where they're winning this game. And it's by being direct, by being physical and really stressing the Seaford College defence. It's been well ripped though. Great show of character by Seaford and now a lovely step. And here we go. It's a race to the line. The final is flailing and Seaford College have got some points on the board oh they needed that just before half time <laughs> oh, what a score what an individual effort now a bit of urgency they need to make this kick and get this ball back they're wasting valuable time here Seaford College In fact, it's taken them nearly a minute to kick this conversion. But it's worth it because there are points on the board. However, they might have had the chance to restart if they'd hurried. As it stands, it is a 10-point game. Four tries in the Sunday 16, a plate final. Seaford College 7, a score, Bryn Kilanog 17. Second half, away we go, Brinkelanog, perhaps stung by that Seaford try just before half-time to make a contest of this. Drop it on the toe immediately, and that might be a little risk 
because Seaford have shown that they're dangerous when they can run at the broken field, and now they can. Oh, trying to take the long way round and stood up and ushered into touch. Good defence by Britton Kilonog. And when you take that wide route, you really need to have courage in your convictions, and it did seem to be there for Seaford. We'll restart with a line-out. The next score, so important in this under-16s girls' plate final. Still the under-16s cup final to come after this, the first silverware. There is a ball, yes. Three in the line out. There's the lift. Up it goes. And Vrinkilanog can go again. Opting for the kick. Not sure what the thinking is there, but Seaford very narrow. It's a good offload in contact. A lot of these players have not been playing rugby particularly long. The way they've been coachable and shown the aptitude for the skills, really impressive. Like that offload in the tackle, excellent. A little bit of indecision about whose ball it is. And eventually it does go forward. But the intent to play, admirable. Particularly for Seaford, who found themselves 17 0 down. A scoreless two minutes, some tired bodies at the end of a gruelling day. In terms of the format, well, everyone had a, a playoff to begin with to decide whether they went into the cup or the plate. Both of these teams lost that playoff, so they've got into the plate and now bring Helenog. Oh, what? Five minutes away from lifting a trophy. A crunching tackle right on the hip. A brutal collision. And it's left the would-be tackle prone. Well, it's a long day's rugby for a lot of these players. Easy enough for the boys, of course. They've only played three games today. Before Brinkel and Argan Seaford College, there will be some battered and bruised bodies. It's the sixth game of the day for these players. Seaford College were lucky enough to have a walkover. It's only the fifth game for them, and they've been in some real arm wrestles too. So they lost to Halford West 17 points to seven. Then they beat Hayfield 10 0. Then they beat Kingsdale 17 12. Then they won 17 14. So that's two games decided by 10, and then two games decided by single figures. Can they get within single figures here as they look for a way around the outside? Here we go. Oh, she's away again. Needs to back herself. Keep the hammer down and score the try to bring Seaford back into this plate final. Absolutely astonishing. A try worthy of a final. A try worthy of this contest, and what a contest it is now. 10 minutes gone, Seaford 12, Brinkelenog 17. Two unanswered scores for Seaford. And maybe, just maybe, it's on. An important two-pointer. Well, Brinkelenog were home and hosed all of a sudden. They look a little leggy. Picked up this ball in line with his sticks on the 22, all the way out to the edge. And just here, check over the shoulder. One, two, three, four, and then she believed. And going in front of the post protector as well. You don't see that very often. I like it. I respect it. That's a good pickup though, and Brinkelenog need to find some of that first half energy. That's a good start. Brilliant chop tackle. Seaford so narrow. They know the risk of Brinkelenog through the middle, and there is that risk. Oh, the scooping offload. This is a lively final. Oh, and here we go. Seaford College. They couldn't, could they? Oh, they just might! 
They just might! Brilliant tackle! Last ditch defending, forcing the offload. These two teams running on fumes. And it is creating the most dramatic plate final. Well, Bryn okay, Killanog with the three point lead. Seaford College looking Let's go. like they have got slightly more energy. It didn't go five. Oh, but then Bryn Killanog have coughed up possession. And can Seaford find something from here? If they go from right to left, they could walk it in. Instead, it's been knocked on. Blue two, knock on. Oh, all they had to do was look left, Seaford College. Is there one last twist? <laughs> one fairy tale ending for either of these teams. At 17 yes. 0, this looked like it was petering yes. out into a one sided affair, but huge character show yes. by Seaford College. Two great tries scored by Seaford College. And now Bryn Killanog, one minute away, one Play moment on. of magic away, but it's been turned over. Yes. That looked a shade forward, referee says no, and Seaford playing with reckless abandon. They just want to get this ball into space and back the pace. Excellent tackle, but more free hands and another tired no, knock back. on. 30 seconds to go, and now Brim Kalanov breached the Seaford defence. And that's the try, or is it? Oh, it's dotted down. The heroic effort. Falls centimetres short, and Bryn Kilanog go beyond the score to break Seaford Hearts. But what a final, what an epic. And with the conversion to come, the under-16s plate is heading to Pontypridd. First elimination round of the bars, Dorsey's versus Hayes. And on RE3, Kings Taunton versus Seven O. The full time whistle goes. And the first trophy of the Howden Rossland Park National School Sevens is going to Askol Bryn Kilanog. 17 0 up, pegged back to 14 17, and then a try right at the death. Makes the scoreline slightly flattering. That was a brilliant game. Huge character shown by Seaford College. Another decided by less than 10 points. They have been in the arm wrestle this entire tournament and they'll leave with the silver medals. Bryn Kalanog, the champions, they've won it 22-14.
It's under 16 at girls' final time. We are coming off the back of an epic plate final. Ruskol Vrinkelanog left with the spoils, but now in the glorious evening sunshine here at the Howden Roslin Park National School Sevens, we have Ivy Bridge Community College in shot against Millfield. Millfield in the red and green hoops. <laughs> Ivy Bridge Community College were tipped by our learned colleague Jack Zorab to do a little bit today and lo and behold they find themselves in the final 14 minutes from glory. What an incredible plate final to tee us up for this and Ivy Bridge Community College in the final last year runners up to Kingsbridge 15 points to 10 it went right down to the wire and I'm looking forward so oh, what might be something spectacular. Here we go. And the offload as well. Ivy Bridge straight into the 22. It was an awesome chase from Alice Fleming, but then it's been knocked on and it's back with Millfield. Oh, oh my goodness me. Alice Oldman has emptied the Millfield ball carrier. And Ivy Bridge do not want the shadows of last season cast over them. Well. If you're looking at it from a coaching perspective, the head's on the wrong side, but monstered across the touchline. What a start for Alice Fleming. First of all, pinching the kickoff, and then getting that shoulder to the millfield rib cage. So, it's either line out or scrum. What do you want? Scrum? Scrum option. Well, Ivy Bridge have had a great start. One thing I think they need to do is work out how far 10 metres is, because it's certainly not the gap between the 22 and the 10 metre line, which is what they backed off to then. They are revved up for this one, Joe. Good back foot discipline. That's what it's called, Dave. Five. How amazing, how incredible Set. to see the famous Millfield colours as well in a final being donned by their girls. And the support from the boys banging the boards over there as well as they're trying to attack from pretty much their own try line here, Millfield. Great defensive pressure from Ivy Bridge. And they forced the knock on. 13, 13, don't throw the ball away anymore. Thank you. Great buzz over there on the far side. You got the Millfield boys and the Ivy Bridge boys all looking to beat the living daylights off the advertising hoardings, just raising a bit of energy, a bit of noise on this absolutely glorious end of day one. The clouds are broken, the sun is shining. It is picture perfect. Two minutes gone, best chance of the game then for Ivy Bridge. Options both ways, two to the left of the scrum, one to the right. They go to the right and Alice Oldman backs herself. Offload is good, finish is better and Ellie Campbell is in for the game's opening score. Well, there's a crispness to the way that Ivy Bridge have started this game. The perfect kickoff routine and the handling precise there just gave enough room, enough time to apply the finish. Challenging conversion, but always drawing first blood in a final is a big moment. Credit to Millfield, they really turned the screw in the scrum. Not sure if the plan was to go up that short side. Good first up defence, but even with bodies there, the awareness. Open the cap flap, get the ball away. Ellie Campbell on hand. So Millfield now need to respond. That's a good pick up on the bouncing ball. We've not looked left yet. Nice line that there as the defence came up, just spotted a little dog leg. And now some pace out wide again, it's Alice Fleming in that yellow scrum cap. Certainly eye-catching, but now Millfield need to get this to the left, it needs to go. Instead, it's... Oh, well, that was intercepted, but they were always offside, and the high tackle. 
And Millfield let off the hook there somewhat. Just need to take off the blinkers and get this ball out to the left-hand side because that's where the space has been. It was a good turn of pace and then knocked on again. And they're masters of their own downfall at the moment, Millfield. Four minutes gone, still Millfield nil. Ivy Bridge 5. Real burst of pace there. Love that intent in spotting a gap and just taking off. And were it not for, well, just a handful of jersey, really. She was gone, wasn't she? No sweeper in there. So you breach this seven-up defensive line from Ivy Bridge, and you're pretty home and hosed. That's out. Perfect. Another good scrum, but good pressure coming from it by Millfield. And a crash ball line and an offload. And now Alice Fleming stepping away. Offloading to the try scorer Ellie Campbell. Campbell up to the 22. Oh, out of the back door. What an offload! And searing through goes Izzy Bird. Well, she has finished it, but Ivy Bridge College playing some absolutely wonderful rugby. Just a couple of offloads. Five minutes gone and cast your eyes upon this. They look laser focused every time they get their hands on the ball. Watch out for 15. Bodies wrapped around her, chicken wings it free to Izzy Firth. He's only got eyes on one prize, a final try here in the under 16s cup. And a score doubling one too. 90 seconds until half time, 90 seconds for Millfield to get something. It's been turned over again. They are like rabid dogs around this ball. Ivy Bridge, hungry for more. Oh, it's a missed tackle. It's a lovely bit of footwork. And it's going to be a third try. Alice Oldman. And to the poles, Millfield chasing shadows. And something drastic is going to have to change in this second half, or Ivy Bridge going to be lifting this trophy. Unsuccessful conversion, 17-0. Well, for me, it's all about the passing. It's all about that shift out to the edges, out to where the space is and out where defence is so difficult one-on-one. -on -one. Just that delay and then the chase through from the defender. Great awareness and a bang off the right. Then she was free. Great gas off the mark, Alice Oldman. Oh, they picked up the kickoff again and a fourth try before half time, and surely it'd be curtains. That's good, that's good. Battle of strength. <laughs> and Alice Fleming just toppling over. She went to lay hands on that ball. Millfield with a sense of urgency. Now a couple more will do it. Oh, brilliant defending. Oldman. Closes the gap. Oh, again, here we go. There's the turn of pace. Got to back herself from here. Chased down by Fleming. She has been everywhere in the first half, Alice Fleming. And the turnover good. Wow. How tough was that chase back? And it wasn't just Fleming. It was the cavalry arriving as well at that breakdown. She did so well to try and manoeuvre the ball away from the Ivy Bridge hands and then the help arrived, but it was too Red. late by that stage. Lung-busting work. Well, how about this from Ivy Bridge then? Time is up, but instead of killing it and going into the half... Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Every now and then something happens and you really doubt yourself. But instead of going in for the half, they've gone for touch. They want one more attack. They just love playing. That hasn't gone five. So instead, it'll be a millfield penalty and maybe an opportunity for them to get something before half time. This would make it interesting. Millfield first for eight into the 22, maybe. Oh, another good shot. Every time something good happens for Ivy Bridge, Alice Fleming seems to be at the forefront of it. Now on the Millfield player, 
has lost their footing. There's a deliberate knock on here, and Ivy Bridge will be ending the first half and starting the second with six on the pitch. Alice Oldman, a try scorer, given her marching orders for the time being. And it's head in hand stuff for Millfield because they had the penalty there, they didn't tap it properly. So they will be scoreless at half time. Ivy Bridge Community College 17, Millfield 0. Millfield nil, Ivy Bridge 17. The boys in the buckets hats basking in the sunshine and Millfield with a little Tommy toe poke to get this second half underway. Chasing back there is Ellie Campbell. And it's up to Millfield now to show a little bit of that fighting spirit. A little bit of that opportunity to turn the ball over, which they have. Didn't see any of that in the first half. And they are recharged yeah, 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 and re-energised yeah, yeah. in the second. Pulled off the ball. Oh, the referee has got in the way of that one. Let's go, Millfield need to go here. Bit of tempo. And they have done. And they have done. Here go, Millfield. Oh, it's a try. But not for a lack of effort from Alice Fleming. Such an important try by Millfield. They are on the board. They are in the game. Ivy Bridge still down to six. There's Millfield five, Ivy Bridge 17. Unsuccessful with the conversion. And the one question I have to ask is, where do I get a jersey with three Fleming on the back? Well, here's the tempo that I was calling for. The tap took it to the line. Let the hands do the work. Bit of a numbers mismatch, but watch out for the right, torpedo. The what a finish to get hit that hard and then have the balance and the poise to reach and score. Huge credit. Wow, Alice Fleming. There was a big, big grimace on her face when she got up after scoring that because she'd been walloped on the ribs. Oh, the crowd say forward. The referee says no. And Ellie Campbell is going to strike straight back for Ivy Bridge College. The Millfield hope didn't last too long. And despite the pressure of the chase, the ball's grounded. And once again, the lead is up to 17 with a simple conversion to come. Conversion good, and the lead extends. I don't think you'll see a better time pass than this all week along the sevens. Arms around the back of the defender and spun just in front of Ellie Campbell. She didn't break stride and she didn't miss a stride all the way to the try line. That's a good restart as well. It's gone forward <laughs> off a blue hand. 
this is something that only really Ivy Bridge have been able to do in this girls under 16 competition. Those contestable restarts. We saw them gather the first one right at the start of the game and that set the tone for that half. Couldn't quite gather that, but certainly makes the opposition think and a little bit of fear runs through them every time the game has to be restarted. Keep the space on the bind, don't engage until the set. Now, oh, Ellie Campbell, Five, ill field have got set. one defender defending the short side, which means there's bags of room on the open side. They go up the short side. Oh, one on one, a shimmy, a shake, a step, and this is unbelievable rugby. Oh, the cover tackle, the try saving tackle, and then the knock on forced and Millfield hang in there. But that footwork from is he Firth lighting up Roslyn Park. Breaks here, oh, goes to Izzy well, Ferg. Oh my goodness. Come to me, come to me. Sends it to the shops. <laughs> and then goes snaking all the way through. Ouch. Lovely pop off the floor before eventually it's shelled forward. And the touchline was alive with that side step. Now Millfield. Ivy Bridge, they take no prisoners in their defending, do they? Monstrous hit. Oh, now the ball spilled, the ball coughed up. The advantage doesn't last long, but it might not need to because it's Alice Fleming again. An MVP performance. And bang the boards you, mate, because you are watching the under-16 girls champions. Millfield 5, Ivy Bridge College 29. It was a nice step. He thought there might be half a break, but just the loss of control. And then just returning with such purpose, Fleming pops up on the shoulder. If she doesn't end up as a sevens in 15, she's got all the instincts, all the grit, and so much desire to do things both sides of the ball. The collective in intake of breath every time the ball goes yeah, near not her. Then another knock on my blue. Play the first one. Knock on my red. It's your knock on first. So it's scrum blue. Here's the mark. Well, Millfield running out of time. Ivy Bridge waiting to empty the bench. So everybody gets a taste of this final. Yeah. This has been a hard earned trophy, a sixth Scouts. game of the day. Fine, keep space. Set. No, no, it went out through the tunnel first and then went back in. We're a pink scrum. Scrum blue. Keep the space. Keep a little bit more space, thank you. Crouch. Five. Set. Fed by Ivy Bridge this time. Into the last Five. minute. It's scruffy, scrappy ball. Five. Little knock on spotted. And as the clock ticks towards 14 minutes, what a way to draw the curtain down on the first day of the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. Two under 16 girls finals. First one won by the Welsh team, Bryn Kalanog. The second, the cup final, will be won by Ivy Bridge College. And it'll certainly taste sweet, especially after the disappointment of last season. I don't think anybody will dispute who the champions are, who the deserved champions are. This has been a magnificent performance throughout the day and in the final. And is there a last play, a last moment of glory, another beautifully timed pass, 
another venture into the 22, another fabulous tackle. It has not been lack of effort that's cost Millfield today plenty for them to be proud of in the final. And a 50-50 ball. And maybe one last chance, Ebony Voigt around the outside, Ebony Voigt for the corner. And with the last play in the final, Ebony Voigt scores for Ivy Bridge. And they will be going all the way back to Taunton with a championship trophy. Yep, just on this side of, this side of the line, yep. Well, denied last year in the under-16s final against Kingsbridge. They've come here with huge purpose and wow, what a final performance. Say their very best for when it mattered most. You said it right there, an MVP performance from the yellowhead guarded Alice Fleming and Ivy Bridge. Champions. Well, incredible day one here at the Howard and Rossin Park National School Sevens has culminated in a crown for Ivy Bridge Community College. A tremendous final performance. They learnt the lessons of a painful runners-up finish against Kingsbridge last year. They learnt lessons, they've grown. And these under-16s have come back even stronger. Credit to Millfield, he played their part in a hugely entertaining bout, but really, those girls in blue, as worthy as can be, of hoisting the first cup of one of the best rugby weekends on the planet. Well, that draws the curtain down on the first day, Joe. If you're watching at home, don't go anywhere because we do have the presentations for the first couple of trophies, the girls under 16 plate and the girls under 16 cup, two excellent finals. Perhaps the cup final, not as competitive as we'd have liked it to have been in terms of a score. However, the one before that, Brinkelanog, absolutely exceptional. So the sun going down, Angus will be ready shortly. He'll be sorting out the presentations, awarding the cups and a brilliant day. It's not quite done and dusted. We've got the live stream, uh, the live review show as well uh, coming up, so do stick with us. Absolutely no idea what we're going to talk about because there's an awful lot of games. And as you can see, the crowd's beginning to form around the award boards and this the moment. This is the culmination of a real hard day's rugby. It's been wall to wall under 18's files action here on RE1 today. And that is set to be concluded. Tomorrow, when the teams return for day two, But we are treated to two fine finals from the girls in, in the under-16 competition. The most unbelievably tense plate final. And then the cup featuring those girls there. Millfield runners up magnanimously given a guard of honour by their boys team. One of the most recognisable and revered jerseys on the school sevens scene in the men's category, in the boys' category in years gone by, now doing the business up at the top of the girls' game at under 16 level.
So day one, almost done and dusted for the celebrations. Bar the cup presentation. You see right down there and the right tournament director, Andy Higgins, just liaising with D-Rodge, who's raced on down. And this is a moment that'll last long in the memory of all these girls. And it'll be boys and girls throughout the week. So, without further ado, we're going to throw you down to Angus Savage, who is down for the presentations. Thank you very much, Bernsey. What a day. What an incredible day here at the Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens. We're just waiting for the presentations to get underway. Dave Rogers has hot footed it from his commentary position down to chat to all the boys. And the girls, Jason Robinson is ready to talk to him, as well as Limitless's own Chris Roberts, who uh, will be presenting the Player of the Tournament award to Alice Fleming when the kind comes. And then we will be moving into our live review show of the day's action. And what a day it's been. We're going to be hearing all about what's been going on across the fields. But for now, it's all about celebrating these young women who have participated in these two fantastic finals. The under 16 girls plate, which we'll be showing you a little bit later on. We recorded that one earlier because that brilliant final performance from Ivy Bridge Community College was going on. So now Dave here, just waiting to bring Millfield, the runners up out to us. And then Ivy Bridge Community College. Big round of applause coming out for everyone that's been involved. A hearty round of congratulations for Millfield School. Just fell short in that final, but what a fantastic performance it was through the day to get them to this point. Millfield. earning their recognition quite rightly after a fantastic day's play. Close but no cigar, I suppose. But the school will have many, many more chances this week. It would be a surprise if the Somerset School didn't go home with some sort of silverware by the end of this week. Alice Fleming of Ivy Bridge Community College receiving the Limitless Player of the Tournament award from Chris Roberts. And I must say, what wonderful kit it is, the Limitless. Bedeck us all out in. My gilet has proved very popular today. Producer Richard Jackson has uh, finally bought into the concept of cold arms, warm body. As Jason Robinson comes out on stage to present Ivy Bridge Community College with the cup. Jason Robinson, who we'll be hearing from actually in our uh, wrap up of the day's action. As Dave Rogers ramps up to welcome Ivy Bridge Community College. 
just the second ever under 16 girls champions. Rightly stepping up to receive their award. And receiving it from a legend of the game. That's Chris Roberts just walked past. I'm going to grab a quick word with him because he's going to tell me all about how proud is, a moment is it when you get to hand out that Limitless Player of the Tournament award. Um, it, it, it's great to be up there, but actually all it does is, um, you know, handing over a, a shirt. It, it, it's a proud moment, I think, to, to share with the person that's won it. You know, I think it's it's uh, you know a long day of competition. Uh, the the under 16 girls competition was excellent, and, and Alice, who won it, was was absolutely outstanding throughout the tournament in that final. Uh, and it's great to be able to share share a moment, really. Certainly is, certainly is, and you're here all week, aren't you? I'm here all week. Gonna get a commentary stint from you? Um, if you ask nicely enough. Pretty please. Yes. Oh, there we go. That was a tough sell, hey, from Chris Roberts. Chris, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. We are gonna go. And begin the live show any second now. There's a few celebrations still ongoing up there on the stage. There is going to be a little award of a bottle of Forsyth champagne to the coach of Ivy Bridge Community College. But I'm going to make my way down now to go and chat to some of the team about the happenings of today. I can already see a few of my colleagues alongside. I must say, Joe Burns today has turned up with a very fetching pair of Wellington boots. Wellington boots and shorts. As the final bits and pieces get done. So I'm gonna hop along here to chat with the guys. But first of all, I think we're gonna have a little look at the way the day began when Gordon School piped us onto the field for what was a truly memorable and exciting and intense start to the day's action here at the Howden Rossen Park National School Sevens. Start to the day that was Gordon School piping us onto the field. They weren't even playing. Hey, they still want to entertain us. Now I'm going to talk to um, Jack Zorab and Wilf Kemsey about what's been going on on RE2 today because we saw some fantastic action. You guys have been um, seeing a lot of under 18 VARs action. Uh, anyone stood out for you? Yeah, it's just been uh, under 18 VARs action on, on RE2 today. There's been plenty of plenty of teams that have dominated. There's been plenty of teams that have gone through looking comfortable, three wins from three, and then cruising their elimination match. Um, but some of the teams have, have had it much tougher than that. I mean, the teams that have stood out for us, we were just having a conversation with them about it. Um, the team we saw first on today, Bedford Modern School, looked uh, their that typical stylish, organised and physical selves. So I think they'll, they'll certainly be a team to watch out for. St Peter's York, 2018 runners-up. Um, they looked quite good actually just coming through the last uh, the last match for themselves. You've just come fresh from a Dauncey's encounter where they've gone through as well. So so they're obviously looking looking quite organised. And the restart work, what stood out is the teams that have had good restarts have, have been, been the team that have dominated. Um, Sides that have maybe gone under the radar a bit. Um, for me, it was um, the 
side from Grantham. Um, King's, King's Grantham. Sco King's School Grantham. Yeah, so they had three matches in a row, which were all quite tough, all, all, almost one score matches. They came through that and then came through their elimination round with a walkover. But to get three tough matches under your belt at the, at the pool stages, so many schools ha didn't have that at all. So they were really tried and tested three times over and then still had the goods to, to get through that. So I was quite impressed with that. Um, and Wilf, the schools that you would have picked out would have been slightly different. We covered different schools today. Who was, who was there for you? Yeah, no, uh, the grammar school at Leeds, when they had to be their team sheet, I was certain they'd made some kind of error because they had nine Yorkshire Academy players down, including their number 10, who was the fly half of the North, was uh, the description. I'll be playing for the North of England. Um, fly half of the North. I of love the that. North. <laughs> yeah, they're just, just the North. And they, they were very impressive uh, standout and um, stacked with Academy players, which isn't always the case in the Vars. Um, we saw with a side like Dauncey as well. I thought they were at risk of going under the radar. And then they took on Hayes School, who were affiliated with uh, the Ealing Trail Finders, full of academy graduates. And they were beaten 43-5. It was an absolute whitewash until they scored right at the last play, which was a seriously surprising endeavor. So they can't be going under the radar anymore. And Christ College Brecon, who have played a lot of sevens coming to this tournament. They were at C for tens, had their own sevens tournament, the Southwest Sevens, Collegiate. They're a really experienced setup. And they said their goal was to get through today too. And they did in style by putting 33 unanswered points on Portsmouth Grammar. And they were certain they would have been playing Cathedral School Clandaff, but uh, they were playing CCB, who did a serious job on them. So they're a very experienced and a big name to be going into day two. They certainly are. Well, listen, it's been an amazing day on RE2. We're going to have a little look in a minute about what's been going on, because this tournament is vast. There's so much more than just these live pitches. Um, but before we do go and do that, just a quick one from you guys. Jack, you first predictions who's coming out on top in the vase tomorrow yeah i look uh the school we haven't spoken about yet as well um st edward school oxford teddy's Ooh, yeah. looked sensational today. do you know what they gave a team sheet in a week ago i want them to win <laughs> yeah that's organization <laughs> that's what that gets our vote uh so they they look good as well um i mean you don't you don't make calls like this there's still 26 teams in the competition well we're down to hang on we're down how are we down to now 56 we started with we then went down to half that to 26 to 26 just about um i don't think you can make a call from there if you can you're you're, you're mad wilf you're mad <laughs> <laughs> the oldest one of the oldest schools in in the country they love to talk about how they're significantly older than the united states of america for example it's st peter's york who are so much history in the competition so much history everywhere but they have so much history in Roslyn park and i think that kind of stands for something when you're coming into day two. But in reality, it could be literally anything that happens. They could lose the first game of tomorrow or they could go all the way. And I think it's all down to who gets the best night's sleep. That is how tight things are. Listen, guys, thank you so much for today. We're going to bring in our RE1 superstars in a second. But first of all, we're going to check out what's been happening over on Asda today uh, with a quick, uh, quick intro from what's been happening over there. It's been wonderful over on Asda. The Roston Park National School 7 stretches far and wide. We have the Asda pitches, which we're coming to from you at the moment. Also, Merton, Wimbledon pitches. It is miles and miles of pitches, a sea of pitches, if you will. As we've already heard, 11 tournaments, 14,000 players. They've all got to go somewhere, and they all stretch far and wide out here on these Asda pitches where there's a real hub around there's people all behind where we're taking these uh, these shots from all getting ready there's about eight or nine pitches in fact as i look on my screen we've got 10 pitches out here in these playing fields that is the expanse that we're looking at and there is so much to talk about about what's been going on over here this is where the meat of the tournament happens yes we see the finals on re1 and re2 but what else do we see we see out on these far-reaching pitches all of those moments where teams get to those finals. This is where the groups are decided, where those nitty gritty games on the tighter pitches, the muddy pitches, where you've really got to fight and battle. They all happen out in these reaches. And that's why we've come down here, just to get a flavor of what it's about. And we'll be talking to some of the players that have been uh, in action up here a little later on in this review of the day's action as well. The Howden Ross and Park National School Sevens. It's vast and it's all live on Next Gen 15.
Well, I'm joined now by the RE1 commentary team, Dave Rogers and Joe Burns in his lovely fetching wellies. It's uh, it's been that kind of a day, hasn't it? Where it's been, we've had all sorts of seasons. We've had sunshine, we've had we've had wet weather, we've had boggy conditions. It's been a bit of everything. Well, we've all come dressed like farmers, but we could have done shorts and flip flops to be honest. You're halfway there, Burnsy, but it's been absolutely fantastic. I mean, oh, come on. Before you get going, I thought the Wolf Kelmsley looked. <laughs> well, we both thought he looked like he was dressed for fishing. Yeah. Keen angler, Wolf Kelmsley lending his voice to RE2 today. He's the kind of person who makes his own flies, isn't he? He's got a little collection of small feathers that he attaches. <laughs> Um, but we're still here on the RE1 pitch and given the fact that it's had all of these games, it's come under so much stress, so much duress, we've had so much rain, it's looking in really good nick and we needed that on day one because if it gets carved up in day number one, it can be a bit of a rough week. But yeah, the old girl's looking pretty good. It certainly is. I'm almost feeling bad being on it in case we, we scuff it up. But the, these have got to, no tread left on them these days. It's absolutely fine. Um, listen, you guys have been on RE1 all day. There's been some absolutely incredible rugby. We're going to talk about those girls' finals mm. in, a, in a few moments' time. But just a few thoughts on that under-18s vast competition that sort of dominated the day's play. Um, some incredibly high-level stuff. But, Bernsey, it felt like it's, it's really tight. There are so many sides that, could, that look as though they're in contention. Yeah, I mean, this turf has seen a lot of tries, that's for sure. It's seen a lot of very good tries as well, a few for the highlights reel. Yeah, there were some really interesting groups. I think the one that stuck out was Quegs in Newcastle under Lyme, who uh, were in there with Seven Oaks. Seven Oaks went through undefeated. But I'll be watching those matches. I feel like Newcastle under Lyme will be, they'll be sat on the bus or sat watching this thinking, you know, we could have won those ones and they could have been going through to the elimination. So really, really tight margins. We had a blocks and buster. Yes. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Buster, uh, with their 19 all draw against Coventry. I mean, Coventry, they just hung in there, dug deep. They fended off the breeze blocks of blocks and they were big, big boys, like good style to the way that they played as well but they got a magnificent draw at the end. Mm. Um, I, um, unlike Wilf, I'm not even going to pretend to, to remember everything that happened today. We've seen so much rugby, but there were... Uh, That's why I'm the senior commentator on the on RE1. And... Not, well, yeah, just, I thought, <laughs> I, I was going to say, no, you're just older, but you're not even older, are not you? Even older. Um, the, the one that stuck out for me was Clears Court versus Dartford Grammar, and there was nothing on the game. It was a three o'clock kickoff. Both were out. But two tries by Clare's Court in the last minute to take it 26-24. And we talk about memories, don't we? Some teams know they're going to come here. If they make the second day, it's a miracle. Some teams come here, and if they don't make the second day, it is devastating and a complete waste of time. But for some, it'll be moments like that. It'll be memories like that that'll stick with them in the glorious sunshine here on this great pitch in front of the, the global audience. I can't wait to have a look at exactly the number of countries who've tuned in. But to get those tries, to hang in there, to, to be with your mates and to have a moment like that a 26 24 to go in under the post then slot the droppy to take it it was that was my favorite moment of today and that's what these things are all about i mean we're going to hear from jason robinson very shortly about how expansive sevens is there is moments of joy that sometimes you don't necessarily get in the 15s game although he does stress that uh, it was quite exciting to see that with the england team at the weekend but um those are the moments that this is all about isn't it it's about being able to create those memories that last a lifetime you know one of the things we've been saying um in some of our previews to to this week is that for a lot of players 99.9 percent .9 this is it this is the everest of your rugby career go out and make the memories and we have seen some of that well sorry sorry joe was, uh, we are lucky enough we are all lucky enough to, to see a lot of rugby at a lot of levels and i've spent quite a bit of time what way is wales is it that way it's that way or the other way, yeah, for sure. Spent a lot of time in Wales this year and, and speaking to a lot of professional rugby players about Roslyn Park Sevens. And we're seeing more and more Welsh teams, but quite a lot of, of pros who've gone on to play in the URC or, or even play for Wales in the Six Nations. They regret their school not coming here. And initially it surprised me because I thought, oh God, these guys have achieved so much in the game. But they still look back on the, the halcyon days of playing youth rugby or playing schools rugby. And this is one of the things that, that everyone wants to tick off. And some people, whether they go to school in Dubai or Australia or South Africa, they get to do it here or Hong Kong or Sweden or Scotland or Wales or, or, or Ireland or any of the other nationalities we've got. But yeah, it is all about making those memories. And for some, like Ivy Bridge and Brinke Lennar gets the memory of lifting the trophy. Oh, I wish you'd done that present you say that so much better than me. <laughs> well, how, did that, how did you go about it? Bryn Kellenock? Ah, oh, close enough. Oh, thank Bryn, you very much. <laughs> Bryn means hill. 
Oh, well, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Um, but yes, it, it is it is all about that. So whether you're playing in in the in the prep all the way up to the 18s, it's uh, it's going to be full of, of memories. And just talking to the players about the opportunity is fantastic. Certainly is. Well, we're going to hear from Jason Robinson about a few of those memories that can be created. Especially if you come from Rugby League, the sevens, I think, is a great introduction because it's a simple game, it's fast. And I think that's why we liked it because we, we couldn't kick a ball and we knew in the sevens, listen, you don't have to kick. Get the ball, create some space and, uh, and score some tries. And we absolutely loved it. And I just, it's just a shame, really, because we've seen the tournament over the years at international level just grow year upon year and it's probably looking back i wish there was something like that when i was uh, when i was playing because i always played 15s like a sevens player and that's for me that's what that's what will bring i think the next generation in the younger audience is if we play you know if we use the ball if we play if we play with some width if we can see people with great speed, great footwork, because it's an entertainment, we've got to entertain people. It's not just about scrums and lineouts and kicking the ball. And uh, we saw that the weekend with uh, with England. Keep the ball in hand, you can create a lot of problems, and uh, it's actually great to watch. Well, who can say it better than the man Jason Robinson? One of the greatest to ever do it, but extolling the virtues of having fun with the game, and that's what it's all about, isn't it, Burnsy? Chucking the ball around, having a laugh with the game. It's supposed to be fun. Yeah, I, I would like to see Billy Wiz play a little <laughs> bit more sevens, if we're being honest. But we'll settle for the World Cup that he that he won England, shall we? Um, yeah, it is about that freedom. I mean, we talk about. Uh, the nuts and bolts that it gives players to take into 15s. You see sevens crossovers and those skills and how transferable they are. But it is about joy. It's about freedom. It's about breaking the rules, you know. We saw Portsmouth Grammar School, oh. who I said at the time, I didn't realise that they were an island in the archipelago of Fiji <laughs> because <laughs> it was like one-handed loaf of bread stuff little bit careless when dotting the ball down over the line at one stage but that kind of freedom you don't really get to play that much in 15s anymore and yeah there's a joy to it and you see the way that it captures the imagination of those on the touchline there's a certain um kind of, of rugby supporter who says oh you know the game's gone and the, the core skills of all these players aren't what they used to be and they just put it up the jumper and go forward and anyone who thinks that i i beg you to come and watch this where we've got teenagers boys and girls who've got the full skill set they can pass off both hands and they can tackle and they can jackal and they can offload and they can play heads up rugby and they can take advantage of opportunities we've seen tries score today from more than 100 meters corner to corner in goal to in goal we've seen massive collisions we've seen players make heroes of themselves I mean Alice Fleming in that girls final for Ivy Bridge half woman half missile <laughs> she's ridiculous yes. Alice from big shout out for Alice Fleming and her performance in that final yeah she she didn't give up on anything she scored tries I mean Millfield scored over in in that corner behind us but it wasn't for lack of her effort because she nearly took out half a dozen of the try scorers ribs and, and we're just we're just seeing that all the time and every year particularly in the girls competition the the, the skills they're so coachable and it goes through the roof and then it, in the boys they they never they never cease to, to impress me more and more every year it's it's a joy to watch and the skill sets there and it and it is just nice to know that despite all the naysayers despite all the critics there are the skills on show and they're being given the license to play and if they have as much fun playing it as as we have watching it and calling it then i think it's in a good spot it's in a very good spot and and there's a real element of joy that I find in it and, and actually the, the girls bring that through more than anyone I find and we had a really great opportunity to speak to some of the, the Prince Henry's Grammar School girls up on the Asda pitches you know the, it, it's almost the forgotten land up there sometimes and yet you go up there and it's a sea an absolute sea of sevens going on uh, across both the boys and the girls competition they're having so much fun and um, they would had Danny Kerr in, on, in at school and uh, listen to what Danny Kerr had to say to, to those girls it's been just the most incredible experience from them. We're on the Asda pitches here Danny at the Howard and Rossin Park National School Sevens. There's so much going on. It is vast and it is wide. And we've come here because we want to get to know what's happening up here. I've got Prince Henry's Grammar School uh, girls with me, the under 16s. Tell me about your day so far, how it's been, what we've got coming up. Uh, well, we woke up and then we got. <laughs> 
<laughs> we got in the van and we managed, we were a bit late, we got here, we didn't have any time to warm up, managed to get out there, did pretty well. 32 nil. We won our first match and then we managed to crash the van, so it's unable to move. We've done our warm up and now we're ready for our third game. You've managed to crash the van already. Well, yeah, that's not, not crash. Not, not crash. It's, it's, it's not moving. It's stuck in mud. Um, we're going to have to all pull it out at the end of this, which is not great. And yesterday she managed to crash into a wall. It's stuck she in the mud. <laughs> well, crash cars, crash vans, stuck vans aside. Yeah. yeah. Prince Henry's Grammar School, of course, former school of Danny Kerr, yeah. England's 100 cap man. And I hear he came to see you all. Tell me about that. It was really good. He came and did like a little talk about... The 29th of February he came and he gave us a chat about opening how to... Yeah opening, the yeah, opening the 3G pitch that I got. And um, he was telling us about how to balance work life and school life and rugby life and we all just got it from him. And now we're all here to do our school. And to pay attention to school. Yeah. Am I right in thinking as well that there was a little ceremony because he, he knew he was going to win his 100th cap, is that right? Yeah. yeah. There was. There was, yeah. 100 cap man from your school. That is very, very cool. More importantly, they tell me, are you having fun here at the Ross Park National yeah, School Centre? That's what it's all about. Yeah. That's, what, that's what we're all here to see. Who is the next game? Uh, oh, I'm not Saint sure Joseph's. We know. I'm, I'm Saint, Saint Joseph's. Yeah. Oh, a big one. A bit of a north-south rivalry that one. Cool one. Yeah. Could be. We've got the attitude. We're gonna win. We're gonna win. Up the north. Up the, mentality. Up the north. <laughs> Up the north. Well, yes. I'm pretty sure that's what Danny Kerr would say. Up the north, isn't it? Yeah. Girls, the best of luck for the rest of the day. But obviously, this is going out at the end of the day. So here's what I want to hear from you. I want to hear. Tell me what is the best thing about the Rosslyn Park National School Sevens, the Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens. I think it's like the, the, the amount of teams are there, like yeah. everyone's gathered together and everyone's like here to play the same thing. Like up in the north, we don't get like all the games because there's not a lot of teams for girls. So it's like mm -hmm. the fact that there's so many teams here all wanting to win. It's like it's just like the attitude and uh, the energy is like just amazing and the passion. And and it's a really yeah. strong competition. Like, sometimes we'll play teams that haven't fully formed, but here, all the teams are formed. They're all good, strong tacklers, and we're all showing them what we are. Yeah. Showing them what we are. Girls Rugby is on the rise, and Girls Rugby at the Howden Ross and Park National School Sevens is very much on the rise. And Prince Henry's Grammar School, you're flying. Enjoy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Prince Henry's Grammar School girls are showing just how much they are up for being here. And that girls' competition today, we saw the finals live here on RE1. Just spectacular performances. I mean, we've, we've almost been devoid of the girls' competition on these show pitches. And then we get those two brilliant performances in the end. And that plate final, first of all, um, well, you know, the, you know it better than me, Bryn Kellenog against uh, Seaford College. A fanta fantastic game. One of the games of the day, and it didn't look that way after the first couple of minutes because uh, Bryn Kellenog just flew out of the blocks and they led 17-0. Felt like every time they touched the ball, they were physically dominant. They were winning the collisions and they were finding ways to score. And they weren't being made to work that hard for those tries either. And it looked like it was going to be a tough one for Seaford. They got themselves to the final. Of course, the format with the plate, meaning they lost the first game into the plate, which sometimes is benefit to teams isn't it they want to be in that competition and they'd earned the right to be there they they'd been in some pretty close games couple of 10 point wins couple of two point wins couple of three point wins um and it looked like they were down and out anyway whatever whatever was on the halftime oranges worked because they were a different team in the second half they were more rugged more dogged and then as as Brinkalana got tired they got narrower they showed they had gas and ability and again that thing we talked about just the joy to play the freedom to explore the space and they scored two spectacular tries one at the left edge one at the right edge and all of a sudden it's 17 14 and we thought oh wow game on um brinkle and looked absolutely knackered but then a couple couple of errors a couple of knock-ons and, and then just behind us right at the death and um, they got the try to to give them an eight point lead and it was 22 14 in the end but a, a much better contest than an eight point scoreline gives us brinkle and Og, Worthy winners, and, and I'm pleased that a trophy's going back to Wales, but I'm also pleased that Seaford College, I mean, a, a great rugby school that have given us so much talent in the men's game over the years is now giving us some great women to celebrate too. Um, they're, they're a team that's going places, but that was, that was one of the games of the day for me, Joe. Yeah, man. 
Seaford were oh. like a handful of jersey away from yes. a game-winning break. I, a couple of times they got on the edge and you thought they were gone. And you're right, a couple of handling errors, like a couple of little feathers forward. Kind of was their undoing. How good was that girl with four on her back? Oh, she is a baller. Yeah. Like every time, like in D, but also when she flew up the edge, one to watch. Like love seeing like these little gems unearthed in each team. Don't have her name, unfortunately, because we didn't have a team sheet. But if you watch the game back, number four, Seaford College, one to watch for the future. And that's a point, actually. Get those team Get sheets in. Team sheets we want to celebrate you. We want to celebrate you. That's what this is all about. It's about a celebration of what everyone's up to. So let's get those team sheets in. And just on those handling errors as well, sixth game of the day for these players as well. The bodies are going to be tired just to dig in and get that far is amazing. But maybe second or third day when, uh, so, sorry, second or third game when they're not quite as fatigued, then they pick those up and they go. But, but testament to the conditioning and, and the fitness to get through six games. That is a heck of an effort certainly is and we're going to see the pictures of them lifting that uh, that plate in a few moments time but but we'll, we'll have a little look at the cup as well because that was some performance from Ivy Bridge Burnsy in that final what a what a fantastic performance yeah, Fleming final <laughs> <laughs> um, wow she's scary uh, in a good way in a good way Alice um, and she was awesome the whole team was awesome and I think that they obviously had well they, they would have had a few players who were in the final last year that they lost to Kingsbridge by just five points so I'm sure that that would have been burning in their furnaces to take into this one Millfield amazing to see that famous jersey or oh, there's a slight variation on the boys one isn't it um out for the final there's no green was there no, no that so the blue will the blue's the first team isn't it they had the blue yeah. stripes so yeah, in so the they're, 18s they're, they're we'll see it amazing to see them though in a final and i think they came up against a tough ivy bridge outfit who were in the final last year they were also in the final the year before when it wasn't the under 16s when it was under 15s category yeah. did they win it I feel like I they, they won it. Them. I feel they won it. But so really tough. But yeah, Ivy Bridge looked supercharged. Like every time they got it, they ran with purpose. And they knew what they wanted, didn't they? Oh, it certainly did. And also, it's, it, look, it's only a little thing. And, and all teams go into these competitions on equal footing. And, and Ivy Bridge have got a, a great pedigree, get into finals. But, you know, so much is made of Millfields and Harrows and Sedbers and all these schools that we talk about. But to see a state school leave with the number one prize in, a, in an under-16s competition, that's, that's good news. That's, that's good news for the game and, and great news for them as well because winning is amazing and losing is painful. And as you said, that would have been the, the coal in their furnace. And, and who knows how long they can go on for winning championships. Now, they've got a big target in their back and you can guarantee that Millfield will want to fire a pretty accurate dart at that come next season. You certainly can. I suspect through the week we're going to be talking about Millfield a little bit more anyway. I think they're not the sort of side to go away without a little bit of silverware. And looking ahead to some silverware, obviously tomorrow we've got three competitions going on. We've got the conclusion of the boys under 18 Vars. We've got the under 14 Boys Cup and the under 14 Girls Cup. And the under 14 Girls Cup, like the under 16s today, a one day competition. So we've got some silverware up for grabs on two fronts tomorrow. Um, looking at the Vars, you guys have seen plenty of here on RE1. I've seen a bit from around the grounds. It's not getting one from me. I'm get, well, I'm just going to push you towards who might we want to have a little look at. Who's impressed you? Dave, I'd love to know your opinion. Um, the, the Portsmouth Fijians were good fun, weren't they? Yeah, they were, they were pretty good, Portsmouth. I'm trying to think of some... I mean, obviously, Seven Oaks have gone through undefeated. Like we, we don't get to see everyone. Yeah. That's the thing. So there are going to be some teams who've been doing damage on the pitches around the you know, we kind of got no real feel on, but if the quality on RE1 is to go by, it looks pretty open and it looks like there could be some real crunch clashes come the knockouts. And that, my friend, is how you don't give an answer to a question. Conditioning's going to be massive though, isn't it? Because we're down to the last 32 now, aren't we? So 32, 16, 8, 4 and a final. You need to win another five games, which when you've already got four in the legs, we talked about six in a day, but nine over two is an unbelievable test for these young players. So I also, I also haven't seen all the elimination results. Did St Paul's get through? 
Oh, I don't know that one yet. I don't know yeah, that one they yet. Look pretty, they look pretty good, pretty sharp yeah. early. If they haven't got three commiserations, guys. But <laughs> if, not, if, if not, if not, then, yeah. Do I'm, you know told, what you're I'm told they did. I'm told they did. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you who's worth a little look at, just because I went there, is uh, is Uppingham. They've been very impressive. They got to the plate final in the uh, the 15 aside Schools Cup uh, earlier in last week, and uh, they've got themselves through to tomorrow. First time in a long time, certainly better than they did in my day. So I'm going to give them a bit of a shout out. Did you never make day two? No, Dave, I didn't make day, day two. I, I barely made day one, if I'm honest. Uh, the only word my son knows is the word up. So he's going to be delighted if Uppingham <laughs> go all the way. A big shout out to Buster. Yeah. Um, well, listen, guys, we're going to we're going to have a little play of the uh, the presentations for those under 18, uh, under 16, I should say, plate champions, uh, Bryn Kellenall. But thank you so much for joining me for this little wrap up of the day. Thanks for your work and commentary today. What a fantastic job. Can't wait for the rest of the week. What a pleasure. Yeah. Four more days. Bring it on. <sighs> We'll hear now, we'll just have a little look at the uh, the presentations in that uh, under 16 plate competition. Nice well okay, done. everybody. The Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens day one is drawing to a close. It has been an amazing day's play and we have our first set of people to come up for some presentations. It's been the under 16 girls cup today and in the plate competition, we had a cracking competition in the final. It's Bryn Kellenog Comprehensive that just got there ahead of Seaford College who are going to come up for their moment in the sun. The runners up today in the under 16 girls plate, Seaford College. Congratulations, Seaford College. A wonderful day's play. Played their part in what has been a fantastic competition. And we'll be back with you in a few moments' time to uh, celebrate the winners. And so, the Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens Under 16 Girls Champions of the Plate. It's Bryn Kellenog Comprehensive School. Well done, girls. And Jason Robinson will present the trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, Bryn Kellenog Comprehensive. Congratulations, girls. Fantastic performance. Well done, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats. We'll be back with you for the cup final shortly. Bryn Kellenog there, the under 16 plate Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens champions. Well done to them. Congrats also to Seaford College. And then, of course, congratulations to the cup winners who we saw live here getting their presentation. Ivy Bridge Community College beating a fantastic Millfield side in that final. And we come back again tomorrow for even more. The conclusion of the under 18 Vars in the boys and then both the boys and the girls under 14s competitions will be live here. Join us at 9.45 tomorrow morning when we will have our live preview show and then it is into the action on RE1 and RE2 live all day here from the Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens. Till then, rest up, get ready, four more big days to come.